Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto gains a new power unknown to the ninja world, Naruto the Grim King. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Kanoha Forest of Death. The sky was dark. The rain from the heavens fell with great force. A young man at the age of 14 with blonde spiky hair with red tips, blue eyes and whisker-like marks on his face, ran through the rain as tears streamed down his face. He knew this forest like the back of his hand due to living in the forest for years, until here is in Saratobi the Sandame Hokage gave him an apartment to live in. However, young Naruto still had a place to stay in the forest, since the villagers of Konoha would attack him even in his home. Now some of you must be asking why. Why is this young man running through a place called the Forest of Death with tears in his eyes? The answer. He just found out a horrible truth. A truth that is breaking his very soul. And that truth is his family is alive and well. And they lived a pain-free life without him. Let's look back an hour ago to see what happened. Flashback Hokage Tower. I wonder what Jiji wants with me? Well I better make this quick. I need to get back home to Haku-chan. Said Naruto. It has been three days since he and his team returned from the wave mission. During the mission Naruto and Ko met and fought Zabuza Mamachi the Demon of the Mist and his apprentice adoptive daughter Hakuyuki. After defeating the two of them and killing Gato, Zabuza went back to Kiri to help end the war while well, he asked Naruto to look after Haku when he saw that the two of them grew close to each other. Of course, the civilian council and Sasuke made a stink when she came to Konoha and tried to place her into a breeding program, but thankfully Hiruzen and Makoto stopped that dead. Now Haku stays with Naruto in his apartment. He tried to convince her to sleep on his bed while he slept on the couch, but she did not budge. In the end the two share the bed together. Naruto walked up the tower to the very top. He then knocked on the door. Enter. Said Hiruzen. Naruto then opened the door and in the room with Hiruzen stands two adults, three teenagers and two children. The male adult has spiky blonde hair and blue eyes and wears a trench coat with a jonin vest. This is the Yandame Hokage Minato Namikas. The female adult has long red hair with purple eyes and wears a jonin combat uniform with a jonin vest as well. This is Kashima Yuzumaki. The teenagers are around Naruto's age with two girls and one boy. One of the girls has spiky red hair that reaches her shoulders and purple eyes. This is Naruko Yuzumaki Namikas. The other girl has blonde hair that reaches her lower back with blue eyes. This is Natsumi Yuzumaki Namikas. The boy however looks just like Naruto, except he has spiky red hair with blonde tips and purple eyes. This is Menma Yuzumaki Namikas. The two children are both girls around the age of seven. They both have red hair while one girl has blue eyes the other has purple eyes. They are Akemi and Akane Yuzumaki Namikas. On all of the children's cheeks are whisker-like marks. Naruto is surprised to see other people in the room, but also to see the Yandame alive and well. Oh yes Naruto knew of the Yandame, he was Naruto's hero growing up in the village. So, to see him alive and well was a great thing. Too bad it will turn into a nightmare soon. Hey Jiji. You called me? Asked Naruto. Hiruzen for the first time looked very uncomfortable in seeing Naruto this night. Not because he hated Naruto, no. He saw Naruto as a grandson, but he knew that after tonight he was most likely going to lose all respect and love from the blonde teen. Yes, Naruto. I called you here for a very important reason. Said Hiruzen. So, what's up? Asked Naruto. Well you see Naruto these people are here to see you. Said Hiruzen as anxiety builds even higher in him. Naruto then looks at the group and sees that they are smiling at him. Naruto is even more confused now. Why would these people want to see me thought Naruto. It is good to see you again Naruto. You have grown a lot since we last saw you. Said Minato. Oh, you have grown into a handsome young man. I just bet you have to beat off all of the girls that want to be with you. Gushed Kashina. Naruto is even more confused. Why is the Yandame and this woman talking to him like they know him? Minato, Kashina stop. I told you that there are some things to discuss before you can talk with Naruto. Yelled Hiruzen. What do you mean Hiruzen? Asked Minato. Yes, speak plainly. I have not seen my son in years and I want to make up for lost time. Yelled Kishina. Naruto is frozen at that. Did this woman just say that he is her son? But that is impossible, has Jiji told him many times that his parents were dead and gone. So, why is this woman saying that she was his mother? Kishina. Enough. I said that I need to explain a few things to not only Naruto, but to you both as well. Said Hiruzen. Naruto then looks at Hiruzen with a shocked expression on his face. He knew. His Jiji knew about these people and he lied to him for years. Naruto's anger was raising while his heart began to plummet into a very dark place. What do you mean old man? Asked Menma. Can't we say hello to our brother? 
with the other teenagers and children nodding their heads. Naruto then snapped his head towards the teenagers and children in the room with wide eyes. The boy said brother. That means that these children are his siblings. He has siblings and he never knew. Naruto then noticed that the older siblings had an energy that he knew all too well. The Kyubi. Naruto sensed that the teenagers had some Kyubi chakra in their bodies. Naruto then realized something his siblings are like him. They too are Jinchurikis. But unlike him, Naruto's siblings did not have to go through the horror and pain that he went through. Naruto suffered while his siblings grew up with smiles on their faces. Naruto had to sleep with an eye open every night while they got to sleep in peace. Naruto felt nothing but scorn and hatred while his siblings got the love of their parents. Naruto began to hyperventilate. He couldn't believe this. All this time his family had been alive and he was left in the village with no one to love him. His parents abandoned him. He couldn't take it. He needed to leave before he could explode. Naruto's family noticed that Naruto was hyperventilating. His parents went over to him. Naruto. Are you alright? Asked Minato. Sachi. Are you okay? Asked Kishina. No. 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 No 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 Yelled Naruto as he got out of his parents' hold and ran out the door. Naruto. Yelled Minato. Sachi. Where are you going? Yelled Kishina. Sai, I told you both to not talk to Naruto until I could explain to him what was going on. But did you listen to me? No. And now Naruto is confused and hurt by all of this. Said Hiruzen. What do you mean Hiruzen? What is there to explain? Asked Minato. Minato, Kishina Naruto never knew about you. Said Hiruzen. What? Yelled out both parents. The children are confused by this. Their big brother never knew about them. What do you mean by that? Yelled an angry Kishina. I mean that I was going to tell him when he was old enough to protect himself from your enemies. But I want to know how you are alive. The last time I saw you both were your dead bodies after the Kyubi attack. Said Hiruzen. Both Minato and Kishina are now very confused by this. What do you mean by that Hiruzen? Did Jiraiya not tell you about what happened with the seal on my children? Asked Minato. What do you mean? What happened with the seal? Asked Hiruzen. I put the soul of the Kyubi into Naruto, while I put three tails worth of power into Naruko, Natsumi and Menma. But when the sealing was done the energy tried to leave them and go back to the Kyubi inside of Naruto. But the problem was that it was killing them in the process. Said Minato. I see. Well Jiraiya never told me this. I had seen your bodies next to Naruto. After that Jiraiya left the village and had not returned since. Said Hiruzen. Minato's and Kishina's eyes widen at that. What do you mean? Jiraiya told us that he and Tsunade were raising Naruto in the village for us, since we had to leave to save all of my children. The only way to stop the Kyubi's chakra from killing them was to wait for the Kyubi to regrow its nine tails in Naruto and for the energy in the others to stabilize. It was the hardest day of my life to leave Naruto here. Said Kishina. Kishina, Jiraiya has not set foot in the village since you both died. And Tsunade has not been here since before you became pregnant. No one raised Naruto. I tried to help him, but the Blasted Council stopped me every time. They even stopped the other clans from adopting him as well. Said Hiruzen. What? But we sent letters to Naruto almost every month. Yelled Kishina. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow at that. You did. But Naruto never received a letter, not even once. Both parents are now shocked and scared. Hiruzen. What was Naruto's life like in this village without us? Asked Kishina with a shaky voice with both fear and anger in it. Hiruzen sighed and began to explain. After a half hour both parents had tears of extreme sadness and rage falling down their faces. Their children are also crying at what happened to their brother. Both parents now understand why Naruto acted the way he did. He thinks they abandoned him when in reality both sides have been lied to and now a family is on the brink of destruction. Flashback end. So, now Naruto runs through the forest of death to his hidden home. The one place he could find peace in all of this madness he finds himself in. After an hour of running and dodging the hostile wildlife, Naruto made it to his hidden home. It wasn't much, just a treehouse and one of the largest trees in the forest, but it worked for Naruto. It was so deep in the forest that no civilian would come here, and the only jonin that would come out this far was the crazy snake lady that made this forest her personal training ground. Naruto then made his way into his treehouse. He then went over to his bed that was in the house and laid on it. He let out more tears than all of the beatings he got over the years. The pain he got for those beatings was nothing at what he was feeling at this time. Why? Why did they leave me? What did I do wrong? Did I somehow make Kami mad or something? Or maybe I was an evil person in a past life. I don't get it. What did I do to deserve this? Yelled out Naruto. As Naruto sat in his treehouse, his is unaware of three beings around him. These beings mean Naruto no harm, for one wishes she could have done more for her champion. So, we are in agreement. Asked one of the beings with a male voice. 
Yes, Naruto needs all the help he can get. Plus, I want Naruto to have a better life than this. And the first step is to help him reconnect with his family. Said a second voice but it sounded female. I agree brother. My children have done enough damage to our homeworld. It is time for them to do some good in this world. Plus, I want to see what the boy will do to that pervert when he gets his hands on him. Said a third voice that sounded like a male. Very well then. Let us talk with young Naruto. Said the first voice. Naruto was still in his treehouse with tears falling down his face. He could feel his heart getting more painful as the minutes go by. Just as Naruto was about to collapse from exhaustion, a bright light surrounded him. And in a flash, Naruto was gone from his treehouse. Unknown place. When Naruto opened his eyes, he noticed that he was in a purple void. With black skies and lightning sparking in the horizon. The landscape had purple crystals that had energy flowing out of them. Great. The worst day of my life just won't end will it? Naruto asked himself. Not to worry young man. Your day will change for the better. Said a voice from behind Naruto. Naruto spins around and sees three people. Two men and one woman. The two men look like twin brothers. One had blonde hair and blue eyes with a monocle on his right eye. He wears a white and gold suit and had an air of kindness, but a strict look in his eyes. The other brother had black hair and red eyes with a monocle on his left eye. Like his brother he too wears a suit that is black and purple, with a bit of red on the cuffs for a bit of flair. This brother has an air of madness around him, but also a sense of loyalty in him. The woman had to be the most beautiful woman he had even seen. The woman had long blonde hair that reached her butt, crystal blue eyes that you could get lost in. She wore a dress that hugged her godly figure well to the point that her breasts looked like they were about to break out of it. She has 16 golden white wings on her back, J cup breasts, a plump butt and wide hips. To put in plain words, she is every straight man's perfect wet dream. Who are you? Yelled Naruto. Easy kid. We mean you no harm. Said the man in black. Yes, calm down Naruto. You are safe here. Said the man in white. Naruto eases a little bit but is still on guard. He then notices that the woman looks at him with sadness in her eyes. Okay, can someone explain where I am and why I am here? Asked Naruto. We can do that. Said the man in black. But I think our lady friend needs to say something to you. Naruto then looks at the woman with a raised eyebrow. The woman that goes over to Naruto and pulls him into a tight hug. Naruto is shocked and blushing like mad at the hug and the fact that the woman's breasts are near his head. He then feels something wet on his shoulder. He then sees that the woman is crying. I am so sorry Naruto. I never meant for this to happen to you. She said. What do you mean? Who are you? Asked Naruto. Allow me to explain. You may call me Light. The man to my right is my young brother Dark. The woman who is crying on your shoulder is Kami. Said Light. Naruto is shocked by that. The woman who is hugging him and crying on him is Kami. The most powerful being in the world. Um, why are you crying Kami-sama? Asked Naruto. I am crying because of my mistake done to you. Said Kami. What do you mean? Asked Naruto. Kami lets go of Naruto and composes herself. She then looks Naruto right in the eyes. Years ago, I sent down a prophecy to about a person I have chosen to be my champion. It was my hope that those that knew of my prophecy would do the right thing, but one person perverted it for his own ends. Said Kami. And so, your life took a turn for the absolute worst. You had to endure what no one but the worst of mankind deserves. The life you have lived was not the one you were meant to live. Said Dark. So, because of a single person who tried to control what he should not have tried to control, I had to deal with hell after hell. Why me? What did I ever do to this person? Yelled Naruto. Nothing. You have done nothing to this person. You were just chosen for simplicity in his hope to control the prophecy. Know this, your parents did not have a hand in this. They thought that you were having a good life in Konoha. Said Light. If they cared about me then why didn't they tell me that they were alive, they didn't even write me a single letter to tell me that they loved me. Yelled Naruto. That is not true Naruto. They did send you letters. It's just the man they trusted did not give you them. He took them, read them and made response letters in your name, just to hide the fact that he was not watching over you. He would then destroy the letters to get rid of the evidence. But I did save a few letters for you. Here you deserve them. Said Kami. Kami then handed Naruto four letters. Naruto read each one slowly. As he did more tears came down his face. In the letters they state that his parents love him with all their hearts and that they would see him in years or months depending on the letter in question. The final letter is the most recent one in which it states that they would be in Konoha in a month's time. They do love me. They really do love me. Cried out Naruto. The godly beings look on in sadness as they watch Naruto. Naruto has one of the brightest souls to ever be born and one man almost broke him and the bright light in him. Naruto then looks up at Kami. Thank you, Kami-sama. For bringing these letters to me. It means a lot. 
He says with a smile. Ami smiles at Naruto. You're welcome Naruto. But there is one more thing to discuss while you are here. What is it? Asked Naruto. As you know, someone has perverted the prophecy. When he did that, he broke an ancient law. Said Light. And what law is that? Asked Naruto. Simple kid. That is to never interfere with a prophecy or try to control one. To do so would make the prophecy null and void. Answered Dark. Naruto nods his head at that. No human has any right to interfere with what is beyond their reach. But this person did, and it made his life hell for 14 years. So, what happens now? Is the prophecy dead or am I no longer needed for whatever I was needed to do? Asked Naruto. Not quite. You see, you still have an important role in this world. The difference is that we can interfere with your life a little bit. Said Light. What do you mean by that? Asked Naruto. This world needs someone to help it. And due to someone interfering with the prophecy we can give you a bit of help. Said Dark. To put it simply, we are giving you gifts to help you with your life. Said Kami. What kind of gifts? Asked Naruto with a smile on his face. He didn't get too many gifts in his life, so any gift to Naruto is a good thing. Yes, gifts, but before we give you them, we need to explain a few things to you. Said Light. Naruto nods his head and sits down on the ground. Now first thing first. Me and my brother are not gods of this world. Said Light. But wait. You two are not gods of this world. Then where are you two from? Asked Naruto. My brother and I are from a world called Remnant. Long ago my brother and I were at each other's throat. We each tried to outdo each other. In the end we destroyed each creation the other made. One of my creations are known as the Grim. Beasts of great power and destruction. They helped to destroy much of our homeworld. Said Dark. Wow. And I thought Itachi had problems with Sasuke. Said Naruto. Sasuke found out about all of this when Itachi stopped the Rouge members of the Ichiha clan from starting a coup in a bid to control the village and then all of Fire Country. The only Rouge member of the coup to survive was Fugaku, and that was by sheer dumb luck, and that's it. Even now Fugaku is an S-rank Nukunin of Konoha. The good news is that only the Rouge members of the clan were killed and no innocent members were killed in the fight. Since then Makoto has taken over the clan and put it on the right track of peace and redemption. Yes, well that is true, we must get back on track. Now then, the reason I bring this up is this, I want you to be the summoner of the Grim. Said Dark. Really but I thought that they are beasts of destruction. How can I control them? Asked Naruto. Oh, that is easy kid. I created the Mianza Go. I can easily make it so that anyone who signs the contract can control all of the Grim. Said Dark. And while my brother gives you that gift, I also have a gift for you as well. Said Light. My gift for you is twofold. The first is the use of magic in all of its shape and form. The second gift is the ability to make dust. Naruto raises an eyebrow at that. Well the magic gift sounds cool, but what would I do with making dust? Asked Naruto. Tuckle, not the kind of dust you're thinking of. No, the dust I am talking about is this kind of dust. Said Light. He then snaps his fingers, and a crystal appears in his hand. This is dust. A powerful element from Remnant. On Remnant the humans use this power to fight against the forces of the Grimm and each other. Each dust comes in either crystal or a powder form. I hope you use this gift wisely. Light then gives Naruto the crystal. Naruto then looks at it with wonder in his eyes. This is so cool. I can feel the power flowing in this crystal. The power is beautiful, it feels chaotic and balanced at the same time. The gods nod their heads at that. Now for my gifts for you Naruto. I have three gifts for you. Said Kami. Kami then walks over to Naruto and places her hand on his head. She then begins to glow, and then Naruto glows as well. After a moment, Kami stops glowing while Naruto continues to glow. After another moment Naruto stopped glowing, but he felt different, like a weight was lifted off his shoulders. Then Naruto felt two arms wrap around his body and felt two large soft mounds of flesh on his back. Then someone new speaks from behind him. I am glad. I can finally hold you in person Naruto-kun. Said the voice. Naruto knows that voice. She had been with him for years now. Naruto turns around to see who had spoken. The woman looked around his age. She had long reddish orange hair that reached her butt. She had beautiful red slitted eyes that held a lot of love in them. The woman had a red kimono on with flames on it. She also has a necklace around her neck with the kanji seal on it. She has a figure that any woman would want. An hergless figure with e-cup breasts, long legs, wide hips and a plump butt. The most distinguished features on her are the fox ears on her head, the whisker-like marks on her cheeks, and the nine fluffy red fox tails with white tips on the ends of them coming out of her back. Harami? Asked Naruto. The fox girl nods her head. Yes, it is me Naruto. Naruto hugs Karami in a tight hug. Which she returns fully. Naruto met Karami years ago when he was nine. 
When he first met her, she had no idea who C was. Turns out the Sharingan used on Karami affected her mind, and she lost her memories. Naruto spoke with her as much as he could. As the years went by, she remembered more of her past, but she still didn't remember of the night when she was sealed into Naruto. She didn't even remember when she was sealed away the first time. The two of them grew very close as the years went by. The gods then coughed to get the two teens' attention. The two blushed brightly when they remembered that they were not alone. Now Karami. While it is nice for you to see Naruto in the flesh, we still need to discuss what I have done for Naruto. Said Kami. The two nod their heads. They then sit back down on the ground next to each other. Now then, Naruto as you have seen I have released Karami. But she is still connected to you. As you can see on her neck by the necklace. Said Kami. Naruto and Karami look at the necklace on her neck. There they see the symbol for seal on it. Why can't you release her from the seal? Unfortunately, since the seal was done by my brother, I cannot change too much of it, but I was able to modify it to let Karami out of the seal. Said Kami with a smile. I don't care about that. I am just glad that I get to be out of the seal and be with the one I have come to love. Said Karami. She then pulls Naruto into another hug which he returns. So, cute. Now then, Naruto. Said Kami. Naruto then looks back at Kami when she says his name. Your first gift is of course having Karami with you at all times. Even though she is out of the seal you will still have access to her chakra. The second gift from me is also twofold in which I have given you two bloodlines. Those bloodlines are dead bone pulse and crystal release. I believe those bloodlines will help you with the gifts given to you by light and dark. Thank you Lady Kami. Said Naruto. You're welcome Naruto. Now my last gift is to awaken your semblance. Said Kami. Naruto is confused by that as is Kurami. What is a semblance? He asked. A semblance is the power of your very soul. Each person is different and very few have the same semblance. When you awaken your semblance, you will get stronger than before due to your aura awakening as well. But even we do not know what your semblance will be. You and you alone must figure it out. But we know that you will. Said Light with Dark nodding his head. Naruto had stars in his eyes at that. This is all so cool. So, how do you awaken my semblance? Allow me Lady Kami. Said Light. Kami nods her head, and Light walks over to Naruto. Now Naruto stays still for just a moment. Naruto nods his head while Light places his hand on Naruto's forehead. For it is in passing that we achieve immortality. Through this, we become a paragon of virtue and glory to rise above all. Infinite in distance and unbound by death, I release your soul, and by my shoulder, protect thee. Naruto then glowed once again as his aura, and his semblance was awakened. He then floated off the ground for a moment as he then softly landed back on the ground. Whoa, that feels awesome. Said Naruto with excitement. Hirami and the gods giggled or laughed at Naruto's excitement. Now Naruto. Before we send you back, we also leave you with some knowledge on how to use these abilities, but it is up to you to figure out how to use these abilities to their fullest. Also, should you choose to, you can awaken other people's aura and semblances. Said Dark as he left the void. Good luck Naruto. Live a good long life. You only have the one and should live it to the fullest. Said Light as he too left the void. I am sorry for what happened to you Naruto. I truly did not want that for the beginning of your life. Said Kami. It's okay, Lady Kami. You had no hand in my suffering. Thank you for the gifts. Said Naruto. Kami smiles at Naruto. She then pulls Naruto into a kiss. This shocked not only Naruto, but also irritates Kurami. After the kiss Naruto has a blush on his face that only Hinata could rival. You're welcome Naruto-kun. And Kurami, you shouldn't be jealous, since Naruto will need to take multiple wives in the future. So, you will have to share. Said Kami with a small smirk on her face. Hump. It doesn't mean I have to like it. Said Kurami. Naruto is totally confused by this. What are you both talking about? You will find out in time Naruto-kun. I will see you again Naruto-kun and until then, stay safe. And with that Kami snaps her fingers and Naruto along with Karami disappear in a flash of light. Kami remains in the void for a moment. She then turns to see two other presences in the void. One wears a black cloak that covers most of his body. Has long white hair and has the air of death around him. This is the god of death, Shinigami. The second wears a black and red kimono that barely covers her impressive figure. She has black hair that reaches her lower back and purple eyes. This is the goddess of darkness, Yami. What are you two doing here? Asked Kami. You know the rules Kami. We are not allowed to interfere in mortal affairs. Said Shinigami. I know that brother. But I also know of one loophole in the laws. Said Kami. And what pray tell is this loophole? Asked Yami. Simple Yami-chan. Should someone interfere in a god's domain, then said god or goddess in question is allowed to interfere as he or she sees fit. So long as the interference does not harm another god or goddess. 
said Kami. I see. But was it wise to ask for help from gods beyond our realm? Asked Shinigami. It is fine Shinigami-kun. Besides Naruto needs all the help he can get for what is to come in the future. Said Kami. Biggle, plus it does make Naruto much cooler than before. And I can smell a very peculiar scent on our dear sister. Laughed out Yami. Kami glares at her younger sister as a blush appears on her face. While Shinigami just sighs at the scene. If that is all then Kami. I will take my leave. Said Shinigami. Wait. Said Kami. Shinigami stops in his tracks and turns to look at his sister. I need a favor from you Shinigami-kun. Shinigami raises an eyebrow at that. It had been some time since his older sister asked him for anything. What do you need? He asked. When the super pervert dies, I want his soul. Said Kami in a dark tone that sent shivers up her sibling's spines. The last time she was that mad, a whole continent sank into the ocean. Very well sister. Just so that you are aware, he is not meant to die for a while. Said Shinigami. I am a patient woman. I can wait. Said Kami. She then left the void leaving her siblings there. Ouch, I do not pity the super pervert right now. Said Yami. Neither do I sister, neither do I said Shinigami. You know, I am going to keep an eye on young Naruto. Said Yami. Oh? And why would you do that? Asked Shinigami. For my own reasons of course. Yami said with a grin on her face. She then left the void leaving only her brother. Sigh, why did I have to get sisters like them? Shinigami asked no one in particular. He then left the void as well. The no have forest of death seconds after Naruto left. Naruto opens his eyes and sees that he is in his treehouse. Was that all a dream? Asked Naruto. It was no dream Naruto-kun. Said Karami. Naruto turns around and sees Karami sitting behind him with a smile on her face. Naruto then hugs her. It wasn't a dream. Thank goodness. Said Naruto. It's okay Naruto-kun. I am here and I am not going anywhere. Said Karami. The two stay there for a few minutes just enjoying each other's embrace. So, what do we do now? Asked Naruto. Well I think we should go home and check up on Haku. It has been about an hour and she is probably worried by now. Said Karami. Okay. But what about you? Asked Naruto. Simple, we tell her the truth. Said Karami. Really? Asked Naruto. Of course. Said Karami with a smile. I mean you did tell her about you being a Jinchuriki days ago, so telling her that I am the Kyubi no Kitsune will not be too much of a problem. Okay. Um, Karami. What do I do about my family? Asked Naruto. Karami frowns at the question. I believe you should talk to them tomorrow. You have had a lot put on you for one day. As much as I don't like Minato for sealing me away years ago, I know that I was not in my right mind. But when you go to them tomorrow keep an open mind. Remember what the letters and Kami have told you. You're right, again. Said Naruto with a smirk on his face. Well Karami puffed out her chest and made her breasts jiggle a bit. Okay, let's go home. Oh, can you change your appearance so that no one tries anything to stupid? Karami nods her head at that. She then changes into a normal fox. She then jumps onto Naruto's shoulder and wraps herself around his neck. Naruto then left the forest. The rain had increased as Naruto entered the village. As Naruto walked down an empty street, he sensed a small number of weak chakra signatures following him. Naruto looks back to see around 12 villagers with blunt weapons in hand. Well, well. We found the demon walking around late at night. What are you doing demon? Looking for innocent people to kill. Asked a lead civilian. Why can't you idiots leave me alone? All I am doing is going home. Said Naruto as Karami is snarling at the idiots. We will never stop until you're dead demon. And when we are done with you, we will pay a visit to you demon whore you got in your place. Said another idiot with a lust-filled smirk on his face. Naruto is now seeing red at that comment. You will not touch her. Oh? What are you going to do? Touch any of us and the council will have you executed in a flash. Said the lead civilian with a grin as the rest of the group laugh at that. Naruto snarls at that, but then gains a wicked smirk on his face. You're right. I cannot touch you. But my friends can. Karami then grins a fox grin and laughs when she figures out what Naruto is going to do. Oh? And who are these friends of yours huh? Some demon traitors. Well bring them on. We will kill them, and you can watch as they die for you, and when they're dead you will join them. Yelled the lead idiot. Naruto, then smirks. Very well then. Naruto then uses his new magic powers to summon a few grim. Four beolds to be exact. The civilians backed up in absolute fear. That fear caused the beolds to notice them. Meet my grim summons. These fine specimens are called beolds. And right now, they are hungry. The civilians are now terrified as the giant wolves stalked closer to them. Boys, sick em. The beolds howled into the night sky and pounced on the civilians. 
The 12 idiots stood no chance at survival, as the beowulves ripped and teared the idiots apart piece by piece. Due to the heavy rain no one not even the Anbu heard the cries of pain, nor the begging of mercy from the fools who tried to harm Naruto. When the beowulves were done, they went over to their new master and bowed to him. Nice job you guys. And thank you for helping me. Said Naruto as Kurami yipped at the wolves as well. The beowulves then howled and then disappeared in a poof of smoke. Naruto and Kurami then went back to walking to Naruto's apartment, this time without interruptions. It was on this night that a new power was born. A powerful force born of two worlds. A world of ninjas and a world of bloody evolution. On this night a king is born. The Grim King. Naruto's apartment. The rain was still coming down in buckets. Naruto and Kurami had just reached his apartment while Naruto was in a deep thought. The power behind the Grim is impressive. But I need to be careful with it. I do wonder what I am going to do with my family. I know that others I trusted knew of them, but were probably ordered not to tell me. I will hear them out first before I make my decision about them. Thought Naruto. Naruto then looked at his apartment to see more graffiti on it. Demon. Monster. Murderer. And those were just written a few hours ago since some of the paint was washed off. Naruto and Kurami growled at it. Hey, this place may be a shithole but it was still his home. Naruto then had an idea. Using his magic, he summoned some more grim. Ten Nevermores and ten Ravagers. The Nevermores look like ravens with black as night feathers and the normal skull-like masks on their faces. The Ravagers look like bats with bones pieces on their bodies and red wings. The Nevermores are the size of normal birds, while the Ravagers are the same size. All Grim come in different sizes like the Nevermores, ranging from normal-sized birds to being bigger than a house. I need you guys to stay outside and keep watch. I am tired of sleeping with an eye open at night. Kill any who have ill intent. Said Naruto. The Nevermores call in agreement while the Ravagers screech in agreement as well. The Grim then fly up to the roof of the building with the Nevermores perched on the sides, while the Ravagers latched onto the sides of the building upside down like normal bats. Naruto smiled and went into his home. As he walks down the halls, he sees more graffiti on the walls. They had been here ever since he moved in. He makes his way over to his apartment and unlocks the door. He opens the door to find a room that is completely different to the halls. Naruto takes great pride in maintaining his home, but due to the landlord letting people into his home it is not easy. Naruto-sama. Said a female voice. Naruto and Karami turns to see a girl around the age of 15 in a pink sleepwear with black eyes, long black hair and D-cup breasts. She has a beautiful smile on her face. This is Hakuyuki, Zabuza's adoptive daughter. Hey, Haku-chan. Sorry I took so long. It was a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Said Naruto. It's okay Naruto-sama. I was just worried that you might have gotten hurt in the storm. Said Haku. I am fine Haku-chan. Just a little wet is all. Said Naruto. So, what did the Hokage want with you? Asked Haku. Naruto goes silent at that. Haku is surprised at this as Naruto has always been a cheerful person. But the answer doesn't come from Naruto but the fox around his neck. Naruto-kun found out some things that were hidden from him for years now. And found out that someone has been trying to make his life miserable. Said the fox. Haku blinks at the fox a few times before she turns to Naruto. Did that fox just talk? She asked. Naruto and Karami laugh at the question. I have a lot to explain Haku-chan. For the next two hours Naruto and Karami explain everything that happened. From Naruto finding out that his family is alive and well. To Naruto's emotional breakdown and to the reveal from three gods that someone had been manipulating a lot of people just to make Naruto isolated and alone. And to Naruto gaining some amazing gifts from the three gods. Haku had her pride swell a bit when she heard the Kami is a woman, but she kept that to herself for now. Right now, Haku is hugging Naruto with all her might to show that she is there for him no matter what. I am so sorry Naruto-sama. This should never have happened to anyone let alone you. Said Haku. It's okay Haku-chan. It is not your fault. Said Naruto. Hirami, now in her human form, looks on at the scene and smiles. She then lets out a yawn since it is now past midnight. As much as this scene is cute. I think it is time for bed. So, let's all get some sleep. Said Karami. She then takes off her clothes and starts to take off Naruto's clothes as well. Hirami. What are you doing? Asked a flustered Naruto while Haku was blushing up a storm. Helping you get ready for bed, duh. I have been waiting to feel your warmth as I sleep for years and I will not wait another day. Said Karami. Knowing that the fox girl cannot be dissuaded, Naruto sighs and gets ready for bed. Haku also gets ready and the three sleep in Naruto's bed. It was a little tight, but the three finally fell asleep. However, the night was not over as a few idiots would try, and I do mean try to hurt Naruto this night. Outside Naruto's apartment. 
The group of 15 villagers are walking in the rain towards Naruto's apartment to kill him in his sleep. Their anger and hatred permeate their bodies. On any other night this would not be noticed, but tonight their anger and hatred were smelled by the grim that guard their master's home. Okay. Tonight, the demon dies. We will have vengeance for our families and those killed by the fox years ago. Said idiot one. Come on then. My husband and son were killed years ago, and I want revenge now. Said female idiot one. The group nods their heads and begin to move closer to the apartment. But as they get closer, they begin to see red dots in the darkness. The red dots unnerve them as more and more dots light up in the pouring rain. The first idiot moves to the door but is stopped by a sharp feather to the head. He falls down to the ground as the group screams in fear. This fear awakens the rest of the grim and they attack. The Nevermores plucked out the eyes of a few villagers, while the Ravagers ripped the throats out of a few people as well. After a few minutes all of the idiots were dead on the ground as the rain swept the blood into the sewers. The bodies remain in the road for the people to see in the morning. And what a day it will be. The next day. This was not how the Yuzumaki Namaka's family thought the reunion of their son was going to go. It was supposed to be a happy moment full of hugs and laughs. But what they got was pain and anger. The anger was not pointed at their son, no. It is pointed at the people who hurt their son in ways that no one deserved. After the family went to the Namaka's compound Minato and Kishina went through all of the letters they thought were from their son and found out that most correspond with a day in which Naruto was hurt in some way. It pained them to no end that the village that they worked so hard for had gone and spit on their legacy. The next morning Minato and Kishina went to a council meeting to find out what the hell happened while they were gone and why no one wanted to help their son. When the meeting started Minato was punched in the head by Makoto and then kissed by her when he got off the ground. And then punched again. Turns out Makoto had married Minato in secret with Kishina in on the whole thing. When she heard that Minato and Kishina had died she was heartbroken. Mikoto had on hundreds of occasions tried to adopt Naruto, but Fugaku would stop her at every time. After Fugaku was declared a missing nin she tried again, but this time was stopped by the elders and the civilians, and was warned that if she continued to try and adopt or help Naruto in any way, then her clan would be punished to the point that every male member would be killed, and the women would be used as breeding machines for a more loyal Ichiha clan. And so, with a heavy heart Mikoto had to stop, at least openly. In the shadows she and the Ichiha clan helped Naruto as much as they could. Mikoto even told Itachi that Naruto is his brother, but told him to not say anything to him until the time was right. Itachi helped Naruto as much as he could with the help from his friend Shishui and Minato's old students Abito and Rin when they could. The civilians had a stranglehold on Naruto and tried used every trick in the book to make sure he suffered for years. The meeting went on for hours as the civilians tried and failed mind you to make Minato and Kishina see their way and why Naruto had to suffer the way he did. Minato and Kishina's answer to their words. Minato and Kishina killed three members of the civilian council each. Minato blew up two members with a Rasengan and cut off another's head with his kunai. Kishina strangled the three she killed with her chains and her bare hands. The two remaining civilians tried to have them arrested, but no one listened to them. Now I have sent word to the daimyo. He should be here in a week or so. After that we will see what he has to say in all of this. Said Hiruzen. I understand. That will hopefully give us time to help Naruto. If he will let us. Said Minato sadly. Most of the council is also sad at what has happened. For years they thought that their friends had died. But because of Jiraiya and his schemes, everyone has been lied to and for what only Jiraiya knows. Okajama. What is to be done about Jiraiya? This is a major betrayal of the village. Said Hiashi. It's I, for now, nothing. Jiraiya has not set one foot in the village for years, and now it makes sense as to why that is. I have sent out an order for him to appear before the Chunin exams in a few months. When he arrives, we will capture him and find out said Hiruzen. Most of the council agrees with that. Will the elders voice their disagreement? Is that wise Hiruzen? Asked Kaharu. Yes. I say we leave Jiraiya to his spy network. We need information to come in for the betterment of Konoha. Said Hamura. Silence. Jiraiya has a lot to answer for, and I will find out why he did this. And it is Hokage-sama until Minato takes the hat back, or I will have the two of you gutted like a damn fish. Yelled Hiruzen. The two elders pale at that. Hiruzen still holds a great deal of hate for his two former teammates, for the pain they put Naruto through. What about Tsunade? What will happen to her? Asked Kishina. I have sent out a letter asking her to help heal my old back. Her Hippocratic Oath will bring her here, and we will find out if she is with Jiraiya in any way. But I highly doubt it. Said Hiruzen. The clan heads nod at that. The meeting went on for another hour until an Anbu enters the room. I apologize Hokage-sama. But there is a problem in the village said the Anbu with a rhino mask. What is it rhino? Asked Hiruzen. We have 12 dead civilians Hokage-sama. 
said Rhino. The council is shocked to hear that. How did they die? asked Chosa. Well, it appears the twelve died late last night. From the looks of things, we believe it was an animal attack. Said Rhino. What kind of animal? Asked Inoichi. From the bite marks the Inuzukas believe it was wolves. But they are unable to ID what kind of wolves. Answered Rhino. Who found them? Asked Sum. It was your daughter and Rin San who found the remains of the civilians. And trust me, there wasn't much left. Said Rhino. The council is silent at that. Somehow twelve civilians were attacked by wolves in the village. But before they could think on how that was, Rhino continues. Also, there was a scent near the attack that the two knew. Said Rhino. Who sent? Asked Shibi. Rhino gulps at that. He then looks at Minato and Kishina almost like he wishes he wasn't about to answer this question. Hana-san and Rin-san believe it was Naruto, Hokage-sama. Answered Rhino. The council is silent once again. It was broken by a banshee, my mistake, I mean by councilwoman Mibuki Hirano Akasakura and Sakuri's mother. I knew he was a monster. He needs to die right now. Yelled Mibuki. Shut up. My son is not a monster. Yelled Kishina. Oh then tell me why he killed those civilians. Yelled Mibuki. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that almost every civilian tried to kill him, might have something to do with it. Have you ever thought of that? Asked Minato. Whatever. The Kyubi brat is not even human anymore. So, he doesn't have any rights. He is just an animal that needs to be reminded that he is nothing in this world. Said Mibuki. Minato and Makoto had to hold back Kishina from killing the pink-haired banshee. Hiruzen didn't mind the two when they killed the other six, but Mibuki has people in the daimyo's court and couldn't be touched, for now. Enough. Minato, Kishina let's go and see what happened. I doubt Naruto would do this. But we should go and see all the same. Said Hiruzen. After calming Kishina down the council left the chambers to where the attack happened. They arrived to find a large group of shinobi, and civilians are looking at the scene. When they see the Yandame almost everyone is happy to see them. Good morning Hokage-sama, Tsum-san. Said Rin without turning around. She smelled Hiruzen and Tsum coming, so she didn't need to look to know that they are there. Hello, Rin-chan. You sure have grown. Said Kashina. Rin turns around and sees her sensei and his wife. She starts to cry and runs over and hugs them both. During the Third Shinobi War, Kiri had placed a large amount of the three-tailed Biju's chakra into her. Thankfully, Abito found her and got her to Minato and Kishina, and they saved her life. After that she began to fall for Abito. After Minato and Kishina's death they tried to adopt Naruto, but had to stop due to Rin becoming pregnant, and then when said child was born was threatened by the council. Sensei. Kishina-sama. You're alive. I thought that you died years ago. Oh, Abito will be so happy, and so will Kushi. Said Rin. Hello, Rin. It is good to see you again. You look great. Said a smiling Minato. Ahem, as much as this is a heartwarming scene. We need to find out what happened here. Said Hiruzen. Right sorry Hokage-sama. So, this morning me and Hana went out to get some supplies for the vet when we found this. Said Rin. She points to what was left of the bodies. Which like Rhino said was not much. All that was left was a few body pieces. Two arms, six legs and three heads. Guts and intestines were in different places with someone's appendix on a nearby sign. It is strange too. From one of the heads that we found I know one of the civilians as a heavy set man. He was around 300 pounds and that was all fat. And he was thrown like a ragdoll based on the damage to his head. Said Hana. How do you know this man? Asked Sum. He tried to force himself on me one night when I was drunk from drinking too much with Anko. Fortunately, Itachi helped me out of that. Said Hana. Here is in as silent as he looks at the damage. Whatever this was it had to be powerful if it could throw a 300 pound man like nothing. It was then an idea enters his mind. Hana-san. How many wolves are we talking here? Because I doubt a single wolf could kill 12 men in seconds by itself. Said Hiruzen. I think 3 or 4 sir. From the looks of the scratch marks there was definitely more than one here. Said Hana. It was at this point that someone called out to Minato and Kishina. Dusan, Kasan. Yelled out a voice. The group looks over to see Menma, Naruko, Natsumi, Akemi and Akane walking over to them. Hold up you five. This is no place for any of you. Said Minato. What is going on dad? We heard from a few people that Naruto on each and killed some people of the village. We just want to find out if that is true or not. Said Natsumi. The Hokage and clan heads grumble at that. It seems that the elders are spreading rumors about Naruto again. We are in the middle of investigating right now. As it stands, we have no evidence if Naruto did this. Said Minato. Yeah but if what we were told last night, Naruto and Nikki has a lot of reasons to lash out at the village. Said Menma. Well that is true. 
We still need to find out if he did and the reason why he did if he did this. Said Minato. Minato, you don't think Naruto would do this on propose, do you? Asked Kashina with a bit of fear in her voice. She doesn't like the idea of her son killing for no reason. Sure, she and Minato killed those idiots in the council room, but they tried to legitimize hurting her son. And as an Uzumaki family comes first. No. I doubt Naruto would kill for no reason. For all we know these civilians tried to kill him last night as he was walking home. Said Minato. As the group was talking another Anbu agent appears in front of Hiruzen. Okajizama. A large group of people are mobilizing towards Naruto Uzumaki's home. Said the Anbu agent with a mantis mask. What? Yelled the group. What do you mean mantis? Yelled Hiruzen. It appears that more than just these 12 people did not make it home last night and blame Naruto for their disappearance. The group is moving to Naruto's apartment as we speak. Weasel, Raccoon and Crow are en route to try and stop them, but due to the large numbers they are waiting for you to tell them what to do. Said Mantis. Very well. Let us go. Said Hiruzen. Alright you five go back to the compound and wait for us there. Said Minato. No way. Ani-chan is in danger and we want to help. Said Naruko. Naruko sweetie listen to your father. We don't want any of you to get hurt. Said Kashina. Mom, Dad you both trained us to be ninjas. You both told us that family is the most important thing in this world. Naruto has been without any family except for those that helped him all of his life. Right now, he most likely thinks we don't care for him. Let us help you to prove to our brother that we care for him like the family we were meant to be. Said Menma. The group is speechless at that. But bright smiles appear on Minato and Kashina's faces at that as their other children agree with their brother. The clan head and Hiruzen are impressed by Menma's words. All right then. But you, Naruko and Natsumi need to keep an eye on Akane and Akemi, okay? Said Minato. The teens nod their heads in agreement. Naruto's apartment. Naruto, Kurami and Haku are still in bed, even though it is well past noon by this point. The three had been up late last night and needed the rest. But a tapping at the window was getting their attention. Naruto wakes up to the sound of the tapping and looks to the nearest window to see one of his nevermores trying to get his attention. Naruto tries to get out of his bed, but was stopped by the bodies of Kurami and Haku. Sighing, Naruto makes a shadow clone and switches with it. He goes over to the window to see what the Nevermore wanted. He opens the window and when he does, he sees what the Nevermore was trying to tell him. The villagers are being stupid again, aren't they? Asked Karami from behind Naruto, naked as the day she was born. Yes. They just won't let up on trying to kill me. They still think that I am you my dear. But I don't blame you for what has happened to me. The villagers are doing this of their own volition and no one is forcing them to do this. Said Naruto. Karami smiles at that. She then hugs Naruto with her breasts pressed up against his back. I know Naruto-kun. I love you so much. Anyone else would have hated me for what had happened to them but not you. The two stay there for a moment until Karami talks again. So, what are we going to do? We are doing nothing. I am going down there to stop them myself. Said Naruto. I am not letting you go alone Naruto. I am with you no matter what. Said Karami with determination in her voice and conviction in her eyes. As am I Naruto-sama. You have helped me ever since we first met. And you did not ask for anything in return. For that I am eternally grateful. So, if you are going down there to face those fools then I am with you. Said Haku. Naruto looks at both girls and sees that there is no way he is going to stop them. Sigh, I guess that there is nothing to change you minds, right? Naruto asked. Yes, we are with you through hell and back. Said Kumari with Haku nodding her head. Well alright then. Let's go deal with these idiots. Said Naruto. Hold up Naruto. I have something for you. Said Karami. She then forms some chakra and makes some clothes appear in her hands. This is for you. I made this last night while we talked. I don't want my man to walk around like a human target that you can see in the darkest of nights. Naruto looks at it and smiles. Thank you Karami. Naruto takes the clothes and kisses Karami on the cheek. He then goes into the bathroom and puts on his new clothes. While Naruto does that Karami and Haku puts on their clothes. Thou Haku does glare mildly at the Kitsune girl. Karami rolls her eyes when she sees Haku glaring. Look I know that you love Naruto. But Kami told the two of us that he needs to take on multiple wives. And as much as I don't like the idea to share, I also know that he needs as much love in his life after everything he has been through. So, truce for Naruto's sake. Asked Karami. Haku thinks on this and then nods her head. For Naruto, truce. Haku then shakes Karami's hand. Naruto then comes out of the bathroom and the girls blush at what they see. Naruto is now wearing a black t-shirt with a red and black coat over it. On the coat is bone-like ornaments like the grim around his ribs and on the sleeves. He wears black anbu pants with bone pieces on the legs. 
Naruto now wears red and black combat boots with grim skulls on the boots. Naruto also has fingerless gloves with the grim symbol on the back of them. On the back of the coat is the grim symbol and a picture of a nine-tailed fox with its tails wrapped around the symbol. Naruto is also carrying a grim mask a Beowulf mask to be exactly. Well. How do I look? Asked Naruto. Hot. Said Haku. Garami and Naruto look at her. One with amusement and the other with a bit of shock due to the bluntness from what she said. Haku blushes at the attention. Thank you, Haku-chan. This really fits. Thank you for the gift Karami. Said Naruto. Of course, I was inside of you for years. I know all of you measurements. Said Karami with a purr at the end. Naruto and Haku blush brightly at that. They shake it off when they hear the mob getting closer and the yelling was getting louder. As much as I would like to continue this. The idiots will not wait for us. Said Naruto. He then puts on the Beowulf mask. It is time to end this once and for all. I am done with their stupidity. For years I have had to deal with it and now I am done. Said Naruto. The two girls nod their heads and begin to walk out of the room. Hirami. Don't show your fox features. At least not yet. Let's scare the crap out of them by showing them that they have been wrong for years. Said Naruto with a smirk on his face. Hirami has a fang grin at that. I like that idea. And if they still act like idiots then we will just deal with them. Said Karami. Outside of the apartment. The group of Hiruzen, clan heads, Namaka's family and Jonin, rush to get to Naruto's apartment in time to help him. When they arrive, they see around 60 to 80 civilians ready to attack Naruto's home. Damn it. Why are they doing this? Hiruzen did you have to reveal that Naruto is the Kyuubi Jinchiriki? Asked Minato. I didn't. Someone else did. After that, I tried to find out who did, but I never could. The people have been like this ever since. Said Hiruzen. Kashina growls at this. No doubt Jiraiya told someone, and then it spread like wildfire throughout the village. It was at this point three Anbu agents appeared in front of them. The agents are Weasel, Raccoon and Crow. Okajama. Said Raccoon. He then looks and sees his sensei in front of him. Sensei is that you. Minato looks at him and realizes who it is. Abido. It is you isn't it? I see that you are an Anbu now. Nice work. Said Minato with a smile on his face. Weasel looks at Minato with eyes wide open. Not that you can see with the mask on but whatever. Father. Asked Weasel. Minato and Kashina look at Weasel as he takes off his mask to look at his father. Itachi. My you have grown since I last saw you. Said Minato. Itachi smiles a bit. It is good to see you again father. But I must ask. Why did you not tell mother and me that you were alive? Itachi asked. I sent letters to you and Makoto. But it seems that Jiraiya was really trying hard to make everyone think that we were dead for some reason. As much as I would like to talk about this now. We need to help you brother. Said Minato. Hi, father. Said Itachi. What is the situation? Asked Hiruzen. It is bad Hokage-sama. Turns out 15 more people never went home last night. Their bodies were just discovered a few hours ago near Naruto's home. They now blame him and want him dead. Plus, a few seem to know that Minato-sama and Kashina-sama are back in the village and want to kill the demon as they say in their honor. Said Kroaka Shishui. I see. Said Hiruzen. He then looks at Naruto's apartment and sees something he has never seen before. Weird looking birds and bats. Itachi, Shishui are those your ravens over there by Naruto's apartment. The group looks over and sees the ravens and the bats. They are different due to the bone-like pieces on their bodies. No Hokage-sama. They are not our summons. We have no idea what they are. Said Itachi. Do you think that they are responsible for the other deaths? Asked Inoichi. We don't know. Said Abido. At this point one of the ravagers burped up an eyeball onto the ground. The group pales at that. Well, that answers that question. Said Choza. The mob then began to move towards the apartment with the intent to burn the building to the ground and kill Naruto in his home. But just before the group was about to move, Naruto and Ko exits the building. The group sees Naruto and his new look and the girls with him. Whoa. And Nikki looks cool. And the mask is awesome. Said Menma. You know. He wasn't wearing that last night. Said Natsumi. Here is an, who are those girls with my baby? Asked Kashina with a bit of suspicion in her voice. Here is in shivers at the tone but answers. The girl with black hair is Hakuyuki, the adoptive daughter of Zabuza Mamachi. She came back with Naruto and Team 7 a few days ago, after their first C-rank mission turned A-rank mission. Zabuza Mamachi, why did you not have them come back after they met that monster? Asked Kashina. The Kashi felt that the team could handle the mission. And he was partially correct. Naruto, Satsuki and Sakura did a great job on the mission, but Kakashi tried to put Sasuke in a good light that backfired in his face. Said Hiruzen. I will deal with Kakashi later. 
said Kashina in a dangerous tone that had most of the group shiver at that. And the other girl? Asked Minato. Hiruzen shakes his head. I don't know. I have never seen her before. Has anyone seen her before? He asked. The group either shakes their heads or say no. That raises a lot of flags in their minds. An unknown girl in the village and with Naruto is not a good thing. But before they do anything else a person in the mob speaks up. So, the demon has come out to met his end. And with his whore as well. Said one idiot. And look, he now dresses like the demon he is. Said another idiot. Naruto looks at the idiots with nothing but anger and contempt. At this point a Nevermore and Ravager fly over to him and land on his right and left shoulder respectively. And now you show your demonic pets. This just proves our points. You are a blight on this great village and need to be put down. Yelled the lead idiot. As the group was about to move, Naruto began to laugh at the mob. Ha 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 ha. That I just too funny. I cannot believe that you people really think that I am a monster just because the Kayubi was inside of me. I never had a choice in the matter of what happened to me you idiots. And I know that the Yandame did not want this to happen. Yelled Naruto. Shut up. The Yandame chose you since you're just an orphan. A worthless nobody that no one will love, now or ever. Yelled another idiot. The group is furious at that comment. But there was something that Naruto said that got their attention. Naruto said that the fox was sealed inside of him. Did the fox somehow escape? If it did, then where is it? That is not true. Me and Karami love Naruto with all of our hearts. And so, do many others in this village. You people are just blind to Naruto and only see the fox and not him. Yelled Haku. You and the other whore next to you don't count. You both have been tainted by him and are no longer humans. You're just a monster that will die, especially if you are carrying his child. Said another idiot. Naruto growled at them for that comment. His eyes change color from blue to grim red. It seems that you will not see reason. Very well. But I am going to give you all one last chance. Leave now and no one will be harmed. Said Naruto. The group is weary at the threat, but they agree with Naruto on this. The mob just threatened his friends with death, and he still tries to stop this with peace. But something tells them that it will be for naught. Ha! We outnumber you. And we are not afraid of you nor the Kayubi in your gut. And the Yandame and the Sandame stand with us. The people of Konoha. We are the chosen people of Kami, and we will no longer live in fear of you. Raved the lead idiot. Bonato and Hiruzen is furious at that. Like hell they are with this group of morons. But before they can go down and stop this Naruto speaks again. And what he says scares everyone who hears it. Ho ho. You hear the Karami. They don't fear the Kayubi anymore. Why don't we test that, shall we? Asked Naruto with a grin under his mask. Karami grins like a mad woman. I agree. Let's see if they truly don't fear the Kayubi anymore. And with that Karami lets out her fox features. And it was in that moment the fear of the Kayubi is brought back into the souls of the civilians who stood in front of Naruto and Ko. The civilians and shinobi alike are shaking in fear. The Kayubi somehow got out of Naruto. And it looks like she is listening to him. The shinobi can't tell if that is a good thing or not. Well the civilians practically crap their pants in fear. Well, well. It seems that they are still afraid of you my dear vixen. All that bluster and they still fear you when in front of you. Said Naruto with great amusement in his voice. Said vixen is enjoying the fear on the civilians' faces. Oh, I agree my grim. I do love the look of fear on their faces as they should. But some of the idiots get somewhat of a backbone and start to talk back to them. It doesn't matter. We still will kill you and you whore next to you. We are the chosen people. And we will not fall to a monster like you. Yelled the lead goon as the rest of the mob starts to yell in agreement with him. Naruto is now through with these idiots. So, you still wish to hurt me and those I love huh? Then I will stop you all. I will protect those I love. For that is my ninja way. Yelled Naruto at the top of his lungs. At this point his whole body begins to glow. His eyes glaze over for just a second. And in this moment his semblance is revealed to him. The Nevermore and Ravager fly off Naruto's shoulders and go back to the others. Naruto then looks to Haku. Haku-chan. Do you trust me with your life? Asked Naruto. Haku looks into Naruto's eyes and answers with not a shred of doubt in her voice. For the rest of time and beyond. Naruto smiles and places his hand on her shoulder. They both begin to glow brightly. When a light faded only one person was left in their place. The person looks like Naruto, but now has long black and blonde hair. His eyes are blue in the right and black in the left. As one we stand to freeze all who stand in our way. Said the person in both Naruto and Haku's voice. Naruto Haku then look at the villagers and begin to speak. We have given you multiple times to walk away. But you still insist in hurting us and those we love. No more. We will not let you nor anyone else to hurt those we love. We will not let anyone walk all over us anymore. 
Naruto Haku then used their magic abilities to put the Nevermores and Ravagers away, but to also summon 10 Beowulfs with an Alpha Beowulf and 10 Ursa, and an Alpha Ursa as well. The two groups are shocked to see this. Somehow Naruto had not only fused with Haku somehow, but also summoned these beasts without hand signs. It was at this point that Rin and Hana smell something. Okajama. Those wolves. They are the same kind that killed the first twelve. Said Rin. Are you sure Rin-chan? Asked Minato. Yes sensei. I am sure. There is no doubt now. Naruto must have summoned those wolves to kill those men. Said Rin. Okajama. What do we do? Asked Hiyashi. Hiruzen is silent for a moment. As he thinks on what to do his thinking is broken by Kashina. I know what I am doing. I am going to help my son. I don't care what has happened to him now or that he summoned those animals. He is still my son and I have a lot to make up for. And this is the right thing to do. I will not sit back as my son is attacked by those stupid idiots. Said Kashina. The group is shocked by this for just a moment. Minato then speaks. I agree Kashina Haim. He is our son and he needs us. I am with you no matter what. Says Minato. If you're going down there sensei. Then so am I. Says Rin. And if my wife is going then so am I. I will not let my godbrother fight alone, not anymore. Said Abito. I will fight for my brother. As is my job as the older brother. Said Itachi. And I am with you as well. Says Mikoto as she readies her katana. The rest of the group also agrees with them. Hiruzen can only look on with pride in his body. Even now with the reveal of the Kayubi out of Naruto and still people stand by his side. Then let's go down there and help Naruto. Says Hiruzen. Menma. Keep your siblings here and do not watch this. That is an order. Said Minato. The Namaka's children know that tone and know to not go against it. They all nod their heads in agreement but ask to make sure that Naruto comes out in one piece. The parents nod their heads at that. The mob was about attack when the shinobi entered the fray. Okajama. What are you doing? Why are you siding with the demon? Asked a lead goon. The only demons here are you. I have told you all that Naruto is not the Kyubi nor a demon. And even with the evidence right in front of your damn faces, you all still believe that he is a demon. No more. I will not let anyone hurt my surrogate grandson anymore. I should have done this years ago, but now I will fix my mistakes on this day. Everyone. The people in front of you are traitors of the village and its principles, and they must be put down. Says Hiruzen. Naruto Haku look on and see all those who stand by his side. It brings tears to their eyes to see this. They wipe the tears away and ready themselves for the fight with Karami right next to them. The civilians stood no chance against the combined force of Shinobi and the Grim. Many were torn apart by the Grim with the Beowulfs and Ursa helping the Shinobi and killing their master's enemies. The clan heads ripped right through the idiot civilians with ease. They all hated what happened to Naruto and now they can vent a lot of frustrations. Minato and Kashina worked with Naruto Haku and Karami respectively. It was an odd sight to see. Especially when Karami made a comment to Kashina about fighting by her side once again. After a good five minutes the mob was put down with no survivors. The Grim were sent back to their summon realm until they were need once again. It was at this point that Naruto had unfused with Haku. Haku was extremely tired, but nothing that a good amount of rest won't fix. As Naruto helped Haku his parents came over to him. Naruto. Said Minato getting his attention. I know that what I did caused a lot of problems for you, and I know that no amount of apologizing or anything will fix what happened to you. And for that I won't blame you if you never forgive me. Naruto looks into his father's eyes as he talks. He moves over to his father and then. Naruto punches him in the face. The group winces at the impact, but Naruto had every right to do it. But what Naruto does next was something not many were going to expect. Naruto then wraps his father into a hug. It is true that what you did caused a lot of problems. But you didn't ask for this to happen to me. I know that you love me father. If it wasn't for you or mom I wouldn't be here right now, and for that I will always love you. Said Naruto with tears falling down his face. Minato hugs his son back as his own tears fall down his face. Ashina runs in and hugs her husband and her son, with tears also falling down her face as she holds her son for the first time in 14 years. It was then when the rest of the Yuzumaki Namika's family run into the hug with tears falling down their faces as well. For the first time in years they are whole. They are a family now and forever. It had been an hour since the slaughter in front of Naruto's apartment and since he forgave his family for what happened to him. He did tell them that while he has forgiven them, he still wants his pound of flesh on the one who made his life miserable in the first place. His parents agreed since they too want a pound of flesh from Jiraiya. Now Naruto, Haku and Karami are in the council chambers with Hiruzen, the clan heads and Naruto's family. The two civilians were removed from the room, since this doesn't concern them, and the elders were removed due to their blatant hatred for Naruto. 
And those in the room all want answers to Naruto's new summons, his power, and how Kurami got out of the seal. So, Naruto-kun. I have to admit, I am worried about you. Said Hiruzen. If you're talking about Kurami then you don't need to worry. While she is out of my body, she is still connected to it. Said Naruto. Kurami then parts her kimono to show her necklace around her neck. Some of the men blush at the large breasts on the kitsune girl, but a few hits to their head stop that. Naruto, how did you do this? I made that seal to not be altered. So, how did you change it? Asked Minato. He like his wife were curious as to how their son did this. To answer your question, I didn't. Said Naruto. Then who did Sachi? The only ones who could would be me your father and Jiraiya. And since we had just gotten to the village last night and Jiraiya was the one to make your life miserable, I doubt that he would do this. Said Kashina. Naruto and Kurami look at each other and try to figure out how to explain to the group of how this happened. But I was Kurami who speaks up. Okajama. In order for you to understand all of this everyone in the room must keep an open mind. We both know that this will seem like a load of crap, but I swear on all nine of my tales that what me and Naruto will tell you is 100% true. Said Kurami. The council is silent at that declaration. Hiruzen looks into the fox girl's eyes and sees no deception in them. Very well then. We will listen to your tale. Well I do not trust you Kayubi, I do trust Naruto-kun. And if he tells me that what you two are going to say is true, then I will hear you both out. Said Hiruzen. Naruto and Kurami nod their heads at that. Naruto begins to explain all that happened last night, from when he was asked to appear to the Hokage Tower and to the reveal of his parents. To when he ran into the forest of death to his secret treehouse to calm down. After that Kurami began to explain everything that happened to Naruto when he met Kami and the two gods from another realm. To the gifts the three gods gave him. By the end of the story multiple thoughts were going through people's head. The women had their pride swell to great heights when they heard that Kami is a woman. While Shikaku just slammed his head on the table multiple times muttering troublesome each and every time he hit his head. The rest of the men were also jealous that Naruto got a kiss from the goddess. But the main thing that got their attention were the powers that Naruto was given. Naruto, you said that Kami-sama gave you two bloodlines, right? Asked Minato. Yes. The dead bone pulse and the crystal release. She said that they would help me with the powers I was given by light and dark. The dead bone pulse would help me have better control over the grim and help with different abilities I may think of. Well the crystal release will help with the dust gift. Said Naruto. And what is this dust gift? I doubt it would have anything to do with actual dust. Asked Shibi. Naruto then makes a red dust crystal in his hand in the size of his palm. The council is surprised to see the crystal. From the knowledge that dark left me, dust is a power source for the world of remnant. It fuels the world's armies and the homes of every citizen in the world. It was thanks to this that the people of Remnant are able to fight against the Grim that would try to kill them. Dust comes in two forms, a crystal and powder, and comes in different elements. The crystal in my hand is a fire crystal. Said Naruto. The council is interested about this dust. If it could help an entire world fight off these Grim and power an entire civilization, then it must be powerful. This is an amazing thing Naruto, but I worry about the elders and what is left of the civilians. No doubt the moment that they hear that you have these abilities then they will seek to control you in many more ways. Said Hiruzen. Like hell I am I going to let those old farts nor those idiots to control my son for a second longer. Yelled Kashina. Calm down Kashina. I don't like it any more than you but the elders and not to mention Mibuki, does have a lot of pull in the daimyo's court. We need some way to protect Naruto from them. Said Hiruzen. The council is silent for a moment trying to help Naruto from the corruption of the elders and the civilians. Well, we could place Naruto in the CRA. He does have two new bloodlines that the village does not have, and if he is in it, then the elders and the civilians can't touch him. Said Shibi. Minato had to agree with the idea, while Kishina was a little against the idea, but she did not want her son to be stuck in a situation that could cause even more problems later. Plus, Shikaku did mention that the council could activate it at a later time and force different women into Naruto's life that did not love him. After a few hours they all agreed that Naruto would be placed into the CRA for his own safety. With him in it, Naruto is not only protected from the old fools who wish to see him as nothing but a weapon, but it also stops the civilians from forcing anyone or anything on him. For now, he was just in the program with no one asked to be his wife at this time. After that the meeting ended and everyone went home. After gathering everything of Naruto and Haku's the two moved into the Namika's compound. For the next few days, the family worked hard in repairing the void that was placed between them by Jiraiya. Kishina had actual liked to spend time with Haku after getting to know her. As did Naruko and Natsumi with Akemi and Akane calling Haku Wani-chan after a few days. With Kurami it was a little. Weird to say the least. 
But after talking with her the family and the clan heads agreed that she was not a threat to the village, so long as she was linked to Naruto. It was four days later when another important event happened in the village. The day when Tsunade returned to the village. The Noha Hospital. The group of four, five if you count the pig, walked towards the hospital to heal the Sandame Hokage of his bad back problems. I cannot believe that I am back in the village. I had hoped to never return to this place. Said Tsunade. But Tsunade Sama surely you can't ignore the Sandame's request for help with his back, can you? Asked Shizun with taunt and oinking in agreement. Haman Kasan. I know you don't like it here anymore after losing so much, but even you can't ignore your Hippocratic Oath. Said Mido. This is Tsunade's and Dan Kato's daughter of 14 years old. She looks like Tsunade when she was younger, but has her father's pale blue hair color and his green eyes. I always wanted to see Kanoha. Is it okay to look around while you heal the old man? Asked Nawaki. This is Tsunade's and Dan Kato's son of 11 years old. He looks like his namesake, but with his mother's blonde hair and brown eyes. Now I know what you're all thinking. How did these two come into existence since their father has been dead for years? Simple, Dan Kato like many other male shinobi who had lovers had his sperm put on ice on the chance that he did not make it back home. After his death, Tsunade found out about the sperm from a drunk Jiraiya. After beating the pervert into the ground for hiding it from her, Tsunade took the sperm. But due to her advanced age she herself couldn't carry any children. But, Shizun volunteered to carry Tsunade's children in the hopes of not only her uncle's legacy to live on, but to help the Senju clan have another chance at life. No Nawaki. After I heal the Sandame we are leaving. I don't want to stay for the day or any longer. Said Tsunade. Oh, well. But Kasan. Why Nawaki. Stop complaining brat. If Kasan doesn't want to stay, then we don't stay. Said Mido. The group enters the hospital. As they do the doctors and nurses give the female send you a wide berth. Tsunade asks where the Sandame is in the hospital and was told that he was on the top floor in room 857. Thanking the nurse, they head up. As they make their way to the room, Tsunade can't help but feel uneasy. Earlier that day she won a small amount of money. Not a lot, but enough to keep the group afloat for a few days. Tsunade opened the door and was shocked to not see the Sandame, but Kishina and Minato. As soon as Tsunade and her group enters the room, it was sealed by powerful Fuinjutsu seals that covered the room. Hello Tsunade. We need to talk. Said Minato. Min Minato. Kush Kishina. How? I thought that you were dead. Asked a startled Tsunade. Not dead. Just away for a time due to what happened on that night. Said Minato. Tsunade is shocked at this. Some of the people that she thought that she lost were actually alive. But before she could be happy about this Kishina spoke in a dark tone. Now Tsunade. Maybe you can explain why you didn't raise my son like we asked when we made you his godmother. Said Kishina with a dark tone. Tsunade looks at Kishina with confusion. What do you mean? I was told that you, Minato and your son died years ago. She said. But then realization creeps onto her face. Oh Kami. Your son is alive, isn't he? Minato and Kishina look at each other and nod. Yes. All of our children are alive. Tsunade on that night Kishina gave birth to four children. Two boys and two girls. After the Kayubi escaped I had no choice but to seal the Kayubi away. I placed the soul into our oldest son Naruto and put three tails worth of power in the others. After the sealing was complete, the power in Naruko, Natsumi and Menma tried to leave and return to the soul in Naruto. But the process was killing all of our babies. We tried to stop it, but we couldn't. Said Kashina. Afterwards, we had no choice but to spirate the four of them for a long time. We asked Jureya to help raise Naruto and to contact you to help him. But when we returned a few days ago, we find out that neither Jureya nor you had raised Naruto in the slightest. So, care to tell us why that is? Asked Minato. Tsunade is shocked to hear all of this, but even more by the angry tones both Minato and Kishina are using against her. Minato, Kishina on the day I was supposed to be here to help with your children's birth, Shizun went into labor with Mito. When we finally got here two days later, we were told by Jureya that you both died and that your child died with you. I had no idea that any of you were alive. I swear had I known I would have raised any of your children like they were my own. Said Tsunade. Minato and Kishina look into Tsunade's eyes and see guilt and sorrow at failing to help Naruto and anger at Jiraiya for lying to her. So, you have no idea where Jiraiya is at this time? Asked Minato. No, I haven't seen him in years. Not since the day I was told of your deaths. Said Tsunade. Both parents eye at that. Jiraiya has sunk more of his fangs in more people and caused more pain. But the question is why? Why is Jiraiya doing this? For now, the question will remain a mystery. For now, the most important thing to do now is to start fixing his mess. After that, Minato and Kishina was able to convince Tsunade and her group to remain in Kanoha. 
Turns out the many of the doctors were ignoring their oath to help anyone who needs it. Mainly on Naruto. Tsunade went right to work in fixing that problem. It involved a lot of broken bones and people being punched out of the hospital into the sky. Tsunade got to meet Naruto and the other Uzumaki Namikas and Ichiha children, and she enjoyed every minute. Even if Menma and Naruto liked to call her Bachan all the time. Tsunade was happy to have a family once again after so much time. Days later the daimyo had arrived in Kanoha to find out what truly happened on the night if the Kayubi attack. He was both overjoyed to find two of his best friends alive and well along with their children, and enraged by the fact that Jiraiya lied to his face and that someone in his court helped him. Hiruzen and Minato knew that there was no way that Jiraiya could do all of this without any help in a high place in the government and what is higher than the daimyo's court. The daimyo said that he would launch a massive investigation to find out who helped Jiraiya. He also wanted to meet the Kayubi to get her side of the story. Karami went before the daimyo and explained what happened the night of the attack. After hearing everything he declared that Karami was not at fault of her actions and forgiven for the damage that was done. The civilians, who at this point were able to get new members for the council since they didn't want to lose any power, tried to fight this, saying that the Kitsune girl should be punished and put in a breeding program as compensation for what she did. Naruto, who was with Karami when they made that remark shot crystal daggers at the councils. He warned them that Karami was his friend at that he would protect her no matter what. The daimyo thankful was able to shut up the civilians and stated that the Kitsune girl was under Naruto's jurisdiction and no one else. The council had no choice but to concede at that since to go against the daimyo is a one-way ticket to the guillotine. By order of the daimyo, Minato was made the hokage once again since even after 14 years he could still kick everyone's ass without missing a beat. Minato then went on to fix a lot of problems within the village. From the academy to the police force since both had suffered major budget cuts for no reason. He and Kishina also had a long talk with Kakashi. Mainly about his poor teaching skills. Flashback Hokage office day after Minato became the Hokage once again. In the office at Kakashi as he shifted uncomfortably. It was to be expected. His former sensei and his hot-headed wife are glaring at the one-eyed pervert. Kakashi. Said Minato getting the man to look at his sensei. Can you explain as to why you have gone against my teachings? But I haven't sensei. Said Kakashi. Oh? And when did I ever ignore Rin or even Abido in their training? Or give you private training while leaving my two other students to do teamwork exercises or chakra control? Asked Minato as his angry grew. Sasuke has the best chances to be a shinobi with Satsuki being right behind him. Sakura is just a bookworm that can't put anything into action. Said Kakashi as he tries to defend his actions. And what about Naruto-chan? What about him? Asked Kishina with gritted teeth. Kakashi looks at Kishina with his one eye and sees that she is just one word away from punching him. Sighing since it was just a matter of time, he spoke up. Naruto has no skill in being a ninja. He may be your son but he has none of your skills. He is a shame to the both of you. Said Kakashi. Not a second later he was punched but not by Kishina, but by Minato. Kakashi looks at his sensei with a wide eye. That is a load of bullshit and you know it. I read the reports about Naruto, both from his academy days and the mission he just came back on. Naruto was sabotaged in the academy his entire time there. And it was thanks to Naruto that the wave mission was a success. He was able to convince Abusa to help you to kill Gato and free wave from his tyranny. And it is thanks to Naruto that the bridge builder's family is still alive since you decided to leave them without anyone to look after them. The only reason they are alive right now was because Naruto left a small army of shadow clones to guard the builder's house. And afterwards you tried to make it look at Sasuke was the one who did all of that. Said Minato. But Sensei said Kakashi. Be silent. Roared Minato. Kakashi fell to the ground from the killer intent coming off both Kashina and Minato at this point. I am appalled and enraged at what you have done Kakashi. You had not one but four students in Sasuke, Sakura, Satsuki and Naruto. Two of which are my children and you decide that only Sasuke is worthy of your time. As of right now you are no longer the sensei of Team 7. And due to his own psychological problems, Sasuke is also off the team and put in the reserves. You are to leave the members of Team 7 alone Kakashi. Should you do anything against them I will have your Sharingan eye removed from your skull. Now get out. Said Minato. Kakashi can do nothing but nod his head and leave the room. But as he does, he can't help but blame Naruto for all of this. Am demon. This isn't right. Sensei wasn't supposed to come back for a few more months. By then Naruto would have been broken to the point that Sensei would have had to kill him and drag the Kyubi into hell. I need to inform Jureya-sama about all of this. I do hope Danzo-sama has another plan for all of this. Thought Kakashi as he leaves. After Kakashi leaves Kishina speaks to Minato. Do you think he is with Jiraiya? Kishina asks. Not doubt. But with no proof we can't hold him. 
No doubt he has some way of contacting Jiraiya. How long until the seals are in place around the village? Asked Minato. A few more days. Thankfully, Naruto is a quick study in the art of Fuenjutsu. With his help along with Menma, Naruko and Itsumi, we will have the alert seals all around the village. There will be no way that Jiraiya or anyone else will get into or out of the village undetected. Said Kashina with a smile on her face. Minato also smiled at his wife. Ever since the family got back together, they had spent almost every minute with each other, all three sides of the family from the Uzumaki to the Achiha and the Senju. Good. When the field is up, we will have an edge over Jiraiya and anyone who is with him. Said Minato. I agree. So, what are you going to do with Team 7 and our children? Asked Kashina. Minato smirks a bit at his wife. He then takes out a few folders. I have a few ideas. The folders have the pictures of Naruto, Menma, Naruko, Natsumi, Sakura, Satsuki, Mido and Haku on them, along with Abito and Rin as well. Flash back over. After that Team 7 was reworked. Naruto and Sasuke were removed from the team, while Mido were put on as a new teammate. It took a lot of convincing from Minato, Kishina, Shizune and Mido herself, but they were able to convince Tsune to let Mido join Team 7. Team 7's new sensei is Rinichiha, and so far, she had been a better teacher than Kakashi. Menma, Naruko and Natsumi made up the new Team 11 with Abito as their sensei. While they were trained by their parents, they also needed others to give them new materials to work with. Plus, unlike Kakashi, Abito actually wanted to teach a team mainly Naruto's, but the civilians wouldn't let him, since he would actually make Naruto stronger. While Naruto and Haku make up the incomplete Team 12 with Kishina as their sensei. The only reason they don't have Karami as a teammate is due to a technicality. Since she is a biju and not a ninja, she can't be considered a teammate, so they are short one member until they can find one. Training ground 44 three days later. Right now, team 7, 11 and 12 are in a massive free-for-all. With jutsus and all manner of powers going off. Menma was using his father's tojutsu style called the hummingbird style to fight off his brother, who is using his own tojutsu style from the grim summons called breakpoint. The Hummingbird uses fast movements to weaken their opponents, while Breakpoint uses one's own strength to crush any defense of their enemies. While Haku and Karami were fighting Naruko, Natsumi and Team 7 in a tag team with ice and fire flying through the air from them. While Chakra Chains and many other Jutsus being fired off by the Uzumaki girls and fire Jutsus coming from Satsuki, while Sakura and Mido threw Kunai and Shuriken at their opponents. The fight was going on for a good hour with no side giving an inch. Naruto even used his dead bone pulse and crystal release on his brother to throw him for a loop. The battle finally ended when Tsunade punched the ground to get everyone's attention. Alright I think that is enough for one day. I don't think the training ground can take much more punishment. Said Tsunade. The students look around to see the damage that they caused. Craters, trees fallen over, and boulders are now pebbles and a few fires as well. Along with an entire armory of kunai and shuriken around the area. Damn. I think we overdid it. Said Menma. Nah. I once saw a training ground turned into a crater by this one Jonin in a matter of minutes. Of course, she was pissed about something. Said Naruto. What was she pissed about? Asked Menma. He was then smacked upside the back of his head by his sisters. Ow. What was that for? You never ask why a lady is angry. Said Naruto. Yeah. You should know already why a lady is upset and how to help her right away. Said Natsumi. The women nod their heads while the men grumble about the unfairness of women logic. Now then, we should go over to the tower and get a few missions. Said Rin. Are you sure Rin? Asked Tsunade. Hasan. I know that you are worried about me, but I am a ninja. And I will be careful, you did teach me almost everything I know. Said Mito with a small smirk. Tsunade sighs but smiles at her daughter. I know Mito-chan. But I don't want to lose you. But you are right, you're a ninja now. Just be careful out there and watch your teammates' backs. Mito nods her head at her mother. So, how have you been Naruto? It has been almost a week since we last saw each other. Asked Sakura. I have been good. How are things at home? Asked Naruto with a bit of apprehension. Naruto knows that Sakura doesn't get along with her sister nor her mother anymore. Sakura sighs in annoyance. It's been bad. My mother has been a lot angrier, and Sakuri has not been helping. They are still angry that your father removed Sasuke from active duty. And I can see it in their eyes that they are not happy with me at all. Tsutsuki puts her hand on the pinket. It's going to be okay Sakura. Should you ever need it we will help you. She said with a smile. That goes for us as well. We got your back Sakura. Said Naruto. Everyone in the group nods their heads at the pinket. Said pinket nods her head in agreement. Well isn't that sweet. Seems we don't need to worry about them not have each other's backs. Said Abito. Yeah, they really do have this village beliefs in them. Said Kashina. Yeah. 
Come on guys let's go get some missions. And don't worry they won't be tier ranks. Said Abito. The group, Jenin and adults all cheer at that. Hey, no one wants D rank missions, they suck. Hokage Tower. Bonato was in his office working and defeating the bane of all Hokages that is paperwork. Using shadow clones, he is able to defeat the foul beast, no matter how hard it tries. In the room is Aruka and Hiruzen with the missions for the day. When the door opens they see Team 7, 11 and 12, along with their senseis and Tsunade coming into the room. Good morning everyone. Let me guess you all want a mission, right? Asked Minato with a smile. That is right Minato Koi. Do you have any C rank missions right now? Asked Kishina. Actually, we have three right now. Said Aruka. He takes out a few scrolls and gives them to Minato. Ah, yes. We have two escort missions and one extermination mission. One mission is to escort a messenger to a mine village that Fire Country was a treaty with. Another is to escort the daimyo's wife back to the capital and make sure her cat goes with her. And the last one is to take care of some bandits near the border of the Land of Waterfalls. So, who wants which? Asked Minato. The senseis talk with each other to figure out which team gets which mission. Well they do that the genin talk amongst each other. So, which mission do you think we are going to get? Asked Menma. I don't really care. Just something to get out of the village. Said Satsuki. I really hope it's one of the escort missions. I know we didn't have a good first mission, but I still hope that it will be easy this time. Said Sakura. It's going to be fine Sakura. But to be honest I also hope we get one of the escort missions if nothing but to calm my mom down. Said Mido. Your mom will calm down in time, Mido. She just needs to relax a bit. Said Naruko. I don't think that is going to happen Naruko. I mean Tsunade has lost a lot of people in her life. I don't want to know what she would do if she lost you or your brother, Mido. Said Natsumi. I know. And I don't know what I would do if I lost mom, Shizune or Nawaki. Said Mido with a sad look on her face. Menma walks over and gives her a hug. It is going to be okay Mido. Like we all said we got each other's backs. So, we'll watch each other and our missions will go smoothly. The group nods their heads at that. While that was going on the senseis finally agreed on which mission they are going to do. Okay, we have decided on which missions we are doing. Said Kashina. Team 7 will go with a messenger to the mine village. Said Rin. Team 11 will escort the daimyo's wife to the capital. Said Abido. And Team 12 will head down near the land off waterfalls to take care of the bandits. Said Kashina. Very well. Good luck on the missions and expect to see you all when you return. Said Minato. The teams nod their heads and leave the room with only Minato, Haruka, Hiruzen and Tsunade left in it. So, Tsunade how is the situation at the hospital? Asked Minato. Tsunade growls at the question. It's a shit show there. In all my years as a medic and doctor I can say I have seen a lot in the works of malpractice, but what the idiots did at our own hospital takes the fucking cake. It is going to take me weeks to fix the mess and even longer to get it back up to where it should have been. Said Tsunade. The three men sigh at that. The corruption of the village shows itself once again and in the one place that is supposed to be a sanctuary for everyone who needs to be healed. I am sorry Tsunade. If only I had been stronger. Said Hiruzen. You are not at fault in the sensei. You should have stayed retired years ago. But thanks to Jiraiya, Minato and Kashina had to leave for years to protect their children. After that the council had been taking too much power from you and you couldn't stop them. Said Tsunade. I agree. Plus, there is something I wish to discuss with all of you. Said Minato. What is it Hokage-sama? Asked Aruka. I went back and looked at my notes for the seal I used for the Kayubi years ago. When I did, I noticed something. Said Minato. What is it? Asked Hiruzen. Someone tampered with my seal. Days before my children were born. Said Minato. What? Yelled Tsunade, Hiruzen and Aruka. That is right. Someone altered the seal before I put it on my children. Once the seal was placed no one, except for a god apparently, can modify or change the seal. But someone changed it before I used it. Somehow someone knew the Karami was going to be released that night and they modified the one seal I had that could seal her way. This is too much of a coincidence to be an accident. Said Minato. I agree. But for what end? Asked Hiruzen. I have a theory on that. The modifications on the seal would force the power I put in Naruko, Natsumi and Menma back into Naruto, and the process would kill all four of them. I believe they wanted me and Kashina out of the village for a certain amount of time. And in that time, you Hiruzen would take the hat back, and while you would do everything in your power to help Naruto, they would take more and more power away from you as Hokage. Making you a figurehead. Said Minato. That makes sense. When I tried to help Naruto, I lost more of my power as Hokage. And all attempts in taking that power back failed. 
But with you as Hokage and the Daimyo now looking into the corruption in his court, those responsible will go to ground and no doubt try to escape. Said Hiruzen. Yes. But not right away. No doubt they would still try and keep whatever power they have until they no longer have it. For now, we can only wait until they make their next move or until we get Jiraiya. Said Minato. The group nods their heads at that. Well I need to get to the hospital. I need to heal a Jonin of his coughing fits. Said Tsunade. Southgate one hour later. Okay you three, ready to go? Asked Kashina. Ready Kasan. Said Naruto in his grim outfit with Karami in her fox form around his neck. Ready Sensei. Said Haku. Let's go already. I want to shed some blood. Said Karami who then purred when Naruto scratched behind her ears. Kashina rolls her eyes at Karami. Okay, it will take us at least a few days to get to the Taki border. Or, we could fly there with my summons. Offered Naruto. Are you sure Naruto? Asked Kashina. Yeah. Plus, the sooner we get there the sooner we stop those bandits. Said Naruto. I agree with Naruto-sama. Those bandits need to be stopped. Said Haku. Okay. Alright Naruto. Bring out a few grim and let's get going. Said Kashina. Naruto nods his head. He then uses his magic to bring out some new grim they had not seen before. The grim look like giant cats with wings. Sachi. What kind of grim are these? Asked Kashina. They are called sphinxes. Powerful grim that can fly great distances and they can breathe fire. Said Naruto. As if to demonstrate the three sphinxes let out some fire from their mouths. Kashina and Haku are impressed by the scene. They then each get onto a sphinx and fly towards the border of Taki. Near the border. The three sphinxes with their passengers flew towards where the bandits were last seen. As they grew closer Karami felt someone. Someone she had not felt in years not even before she was sealed away into Shadame's wife years ago. Naruto notices this and asks. Karami. What's wrong? I sent someone. I think one of my siblings are nearby. Said Karami. Which one? Asked Naruto. I believe it is my brother the Nanabi. Said Karami. Naruto then yells over to his mother. Hey, Kasan. Which village has the Nanabi? I believe it was Takikagur. Why do you ask Sachi? Asked Kashina. Karami senses her brother the Nanabi nearby. Said Naruto. Then it's Jinchuriki is nearby. They may be after the bandits as well. Said Kashina. But Karami senses that is not the case. She can feel that her brother is in pain because his Jinchuriki is in pain as well. I don't think so. I think they may be in trouble. Said Karami. The Grim then let out a roar. Naruto knows that they sense dark emotions, from anger to fear even to dark intent. The Sphinxes must have found the bandits. The Grim have found the bandits. And if the Nanabi's Jinchuriki is in pain then they must be with the bandits. We need to help them. Said Naruto. Right. Said Kashina and Haku. But the bandits. In the camp of bandits it a girl around the age of 14. She has tanned skin and green hair. This is the Jinchuriki of the Nanabi Fu formerly of Taki. Fu has not had a good life. She wasn't even allowed to live in the village just in a small hut on the outskirts of the village. The people of Taki would regularly attack Fu for no reason, except to make her feel lower than dirt. She barely had any clothes or food. There were times she wished she could just die. But she did have a friend, the Biju that lives inside of her. She thought that her life couldn't get any worse, until some members of the village council sold her to these bandits. Demei had done his best to help the girl he sees as his best friend, but even he has limits. Right now, the two are stuck in a small cage in the lead bandit's tent. Fu is terrified right now since the bandit told her that she was now his plaything. And due to the seals that stupid white-haired old man put on her before she was sold, she is unable to escape. Demei, what are we going to do? Asked Fu as tears fell down her face. I don't know Fu. If the seals weren't on you, I would say to escape and find a new place to live. But right now, I can do nothing but watch as this happens. Said Jamei. Jamei. I'm scared. I don't want this to happen. Fu said as more tears fell down her face. Demei can only curse to himself and the humans that have hurt his friend. He has wondered what his father the sage of six paths on humans. But before he can question his father, he senses someone. Someone he hasn't sensed in years. And this someone gives him hope. He puts all the power he can muster and sends out a pulse in a hope that the person feels it. Demei, what did you do? Asked Fu when she felt the pulse. Calling my sister for help. Said Jamei. Before she can ask what he means, a massive roar shakes the ground. Ruire. Fu is shocked to hear such a roar. She had never heard such a roar, and she lived in a forest her whole life. She then hears the bandits yelling outside. What the fuck are those things? Who gives a fuck? Just kill them. Damn it. Shinobi. Kill them. Ami damn it that girl is using ice. Ah. Kill the guy. He controls crystals. 
Gah. Fu continues to hear the sounds of battle for a few minutes, until it finally stops when she hears the bandit leader plead for mercy, but from the sounds of it, he didn't get it. The front of the tent then opens for her to see a boy around her age wearing some kind of mask, and with a fox around his neck walk in and open the cage and help her out. Are you okay? Asked her savior. Fu looks into his eyes and blushes a little at them. She sees worry and concern in them along with hope in them. Yes, I am okay. Who are you? Asked Fu. Her savior removes his mask and smiles at her, and she blushes even more. Name's Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Nice to meet you Jinchuriki of the Nanabi. A few minutes ago. Team 12 was nearing the bandit camp with the Grim getting more agitated as they grew closer. The Grim smell fear and sorrow, and it draws them in. When the bandit camp comes into range Kashina speaks up. Naruto, Haku we need to kill all of the bandits. They cannot be allowed to live is that understood? Asked Kashina. Yes sensei, said both Naruto and Haku. It was at this point that Karami and Naruto felt the pulse from Jimei. Jimei. Naruto, we need to get down there now. Yelled Karami. Naruto nods and has the sphinxes dive down to the ground. When they hit the ground, they let out an ear-busting roar. Ruwire. The sphinxes then charge at three of the bandits and bit them in half before they can scream in pain. The sphinxes then light some of the bandits on fire. What the fuck are those things? Who gives a fuck? Kill them. Naruto, Haku and Kishina jump off the backs of the sphinxes and start to fight the bandits. Naruto called upon some of his magic to create a blade made of fire dust. With it he burned his enemies with absolute ease. Am. Shinobi. Kill them. Haku then created an ice wall to stop a few bandits from leaving the area or from getting behind them. She then made ice spikes to kill a few more. Hami the girl can use ice. Kishina drew her sword and began to slice and kill the bandits. A bandit tried to get behind her, but the sphinx that she flew on pounced on him and ripped his arm off. Kishina thanked the sphinx and continued to kill more bandits. Naruto was fighting more bandits with his fire dust blade and using his crystal release to pierce more of the bandits. Ah. Kill the guy. He controls crystals. Gah. The group of three shinobi and three sphinxes and one biju killed the bandits until only one was left. The lead bandit was on his knees in pain and fear all rolled in one. Stop please. Let me live. Pleaded the bandit leader. You kill innocent people and you dare to plead for forgiveness. You are pathetic. Naruto what do you think we should do with this piece of shit? Asked Kishina. Naruto grins under his mask. I think the sphinxes haven't had enough gun for the day. What do you think Kasan, Haku-chan? Both women nod their heads at that. The bandit leader looks to the monsters that help to kill his group with even more fear in body. The sphinxes move in closer slowly, dragging out the weight, making the fear in the bandit raise higher and higher. And then they pounced on the bandit. The bandit screamed out in fear and desperation. Even as the sphinxes tore at his flesh he begs and pleads to make them stop, but to no avail. The bandit's pleading was finally silenced by his throat being ripped out. As the sphinxes played with their food, Team 12 was cleaning up the area and gathering evidence that the bandits were dead. Hasan. I am going to check up on the Nanabi Jinchiriki and make sure that they are okay. Said Naruto. Okay Sachi. Me and Haku will clean up out here. Said Kashina. Naruto then walked over to the tent with Karami around his neck. When he enters the tent, he sees a girl around his age in a small cage with tan skin and green hair. Naruto then opens the cage and helps the girl out of the cage. Are you okay? Asked Naruto. The girl looks into his eyes and blushes a little at them. She sees worry and concern in them along with hope in them. Yes, I am okay. Who are you? The girl asked. Naruto removes his mask and smiles at her, and she blushes even more. Name's Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Nice to meet you Jinchuriki of the Nanabi. The girl's eyes widen at that. She was found by another like her. She wasn't alone not anymore. She then hugged Naruto with all her strength and cried tears of joy. She didn't want to let go of Naruto she didn't want to be alone anymore. While this heartwarming scene was playing out, an unknown person was watching the whole thing. The man wears a full-body black cloak with nothing show to ID him. So, this is the path that this Naruto is now on. This one will be one of the most interesting to date. I cannot wait to see what this Naruto will do to those that hurt him. Man am I glad I was able to influence Minato and Kishina to return to Kanoha sooner than they were supposed to. And man am I happy with the results. Hey hey hey. Oh, I cannot wait to see what this Naruto will do. Hey hey hey. But I cannot wait to see what this Naruto will do when he meets her. I do wonder who will win that fight. The Grim King or will the Grim Queen come out on top? I look forward to the future of this Naruto. Said the cloaked man. With that the man opens a portal, but before he leaves, he looks back and smirks. Maybe a little more help for this Naruto will be a good thing. 
The man drops a cube on the ground and leaves the area through the portal. It had been a month since Team 12 found and saved Fu from the bandits. At first a girl would not let Naruto go at all. She didn't want the only other person that was like her to leave her. But after a long talk with Kashina due to her experience as a Jinchiriki Fu let go of Naruto. They asked her why she was a captive of the bandits and what she told them both shocked and angered them greatly. She was sold like a slave by the village of Taki and she had seals placed on her by an old white-haired man. The man turned out to be Jiraiya. He was the one who could put the seals on Fu to make sure she couldn't use the Nanabi chakra in her. When asked where the seals are on her body, Fu blushed and asked for Naruto to not look. Getting the picture Naruto made himself scarce for a little while. It was while Kishina got the seals of Fu's body that Naruto found a strange cube on the ground. When Naruto got close the cube hummed and vibrated at his chakra, almost like a lock and key. After pocketing the cube Naruto returned to the group to find Fu hugging Kishina like no tomorrow. After that the group returned to Konoha. From there Minato had Fu become a shinobi of the village. He hid the fact that she is a Jinchiriki from all but those he trusted with the secret. I.e. no one from the elders or the civilians since neither can keep their traps shut. Fu was placed on Team 12 and was now staying within the Namika's compound. There Fu learned a great deal about how to be and how not to be a shinobi. She took to it all like a fish to water. Fu even got closer to Naruto, much to the ire of Kurami and Haku. Now the family, along with Haku and Fu, are in their personal training grounds, sparing with each other. They were getting ready for the Chunin exams that were coming up in a week's time. All of the rookie teams were chosen, and a few last-minute trainings would help them. As the training was coming to an end, Naruto had an idea pop into his head. Dark said that I can unlock a person's aura. I should do that for my family and teammates. Thought Naruto. I'll ride everyone that is enough for today. Said Minato. He took the day off to help with his children's training. I agree. You all are ready for the Chunin exams. I am so proud of you all. Said Kashina. Both teams were happy to hear that. Now let's get something to eat. Said Kashina. Wait. I need to say something. Said Naruto. What is it Naruto? Asked Minato. I wish to give everyone a gift. Said Naruto with a smile. The group is confused by that. What do you mean Aniki? Asked Menma. You all remember when the villagers attacked me, Kurami and Haku at our old place? Asked Naruto. Most of the group nods their heads except for Fu. Then you all remember how I fused with Haku before the fight right? Asked Naruto. Again, they nod except Fu who is now even more confused. Well, the power I used on that day was not a jutsu, but the power of my soul. Said Naruto. What do you mean Naruto? Asked Kashina. When I was given the grim summon and all of the powers the night before I was the first person in this world to have my aura and semblance unlocked. Said Naruto. And what is this aura and semblance on each chan Asked Naruko. On the world of Remnant, the people don't have the power of chakra. So, in order to fight against the creatures of the Grimm they needed all the power to fight them. They learned to use their very souls as both a shield and a sword. My semblance is called intertwined union and it allows me to fuse another person's soul with mine and allow me to use their powers and skills along with mine to become even more powerful. Said Naruto. I see. So, if you unlock our auras we can do the same. Said Minato. No. A semblance is your soul and everyone's soul is different. There are few that have the same semblance. More than likely everyone here will have a different semblance. But when I unlock your aura it will be up to each of you to figure out your own semblance. It may take time, but I know that each of you will unlock it. Said Naruto with a smile. The family and teammates are surprised by this. Their very souls could be used in ways that they never knew. So, who would like to go first? Asked Naruto. The family looks at each other and they discuss who would go first. After a few minutes Kashina was chosen to go first. So, how does this work? Asked Kashina. Simple, you hold still while I unlock your aura. Said Naruto. He does over to his mother and places his hand on her forehead. For it is in passing that we achieve immortality. Through this, we become a paragon of virtue and glory to rise above all. Infinite in distance and unbound by death, I release your soul, and by my shoulder, protect thee. Kashina then began to glow as her aura woken in her body. She could feel the power flowing through her. It felt like a piece of her was missing from her life for years was now returned to her. After a minute Kashina stopped glowing. Wow. I feel incredible. I feel whole, like a piece of me was missing for so long, and it is now back. Thank you Sachi. Said Kashina. You're welcome Kasan. Said Naruto with a smile on his face. How do you feel Kashina? Asked Tsunade. Like I said. I feel whole and I feel like I can go three rounds with Karami back to back. Said Kashina. Karami gains a fanged grin on her face at that. Oh. Is that so Kashina? Would you like to test that? She asked with her hands making claws. 
Ashina glared at the Kitsune girl and readies her chains. Anytime fuzzy butt. Don't call me fuzzy butt. Yelled Karami. The two begin to bicker like sisters do and the group of people laugh at the sight. After a few minutes both Minato and Naruto calm their wife and girlfriend down. Naruto then repeated the process and unlocked his family's and teammates' auras. The only ones he didn't unlock were Akemi and Akane, since they were too young for it, but he did promise to unlock their aura when they graduate from the academy. From there the family worked hard in unlocking their semblances, but only Haku and Naruko were able to. Haku's semblance is icy touch in that she can paralyze anyone she touches. At the moment she can paralyze someone for around 10 seconds. But Naruto says that with time she can push it to a higher amount. Naruko's semblance is called Chakra Thief, in that she can steal other people's chakra and replenish her own. She was even able to use her chains as a means to absorb multiple people at the same time. Naruto believes that Naruko could also take the energy of the world around her, in case there is no chakra. The family and teammates continue to train for the upcoming Chunin exams. When asked if he would unlock other people's semblance, Naruto said that he would, but that would happen after the Chunin exams. But as the family gets ready, a dark problem is coming from beyond the horizon. Deep in the land of lightning. In a small village we find one of the most hated people in Kanoha right now. Jiraiya the Toad Sage. And what is this pervert doing? Well, listen in and find out. Oh yeah. That's it. By Kami the women of this village are just what I need for my new book. And Sana looks like you got bigger since I last saw you. Said Jiraiya as he peeped on some women from behind a rock. But before Jiraiya can continue a voice alerts the women to his peeping. Jiraiya Sama. Jiraiya Sama. The women hearing that scream and run away from the worst pervert in the nations. Wait ladies. Come back. Damn it. Alright what is the big idea with Tito? What the hell are you doing here? Asked Jiraiya. The now named Tito runs over to Jiraiya out of breath and begins to speak with Jiraiya. We have a problem Jiraiya-sama. Said Tito. What is it this time? Did someone from Kanoha find Minato and his family again? If that is the case, then I need to deal with them before they get back to Kanoha. Said Jiraiya. Worse, Jiraiya-sama. They are gone. Said Tito. Jiraiya frowns at that. What do you mean they're gone? I mean they are gone. Two months ago, someone set my place on fire and killed all of my messenger birds. I had to figure out what happened to my shop and while I did that they just disappeared. No warning, no explanation not even a goodbye. They just up and left like someone controlled them to leave. Gureya is now a pale as Arachimaru with this news. Damn it. This is not what was supposed to happen. And why did it take you two months to tell me this? Gureya sama I told you that all of my birds were killed and not by the fire. Someone murdered my birds. They knew I was a spy, most likely for you. And you never told me of any other spies you have in your employ, so I had to find you myself. Explained Tito. Jiraiya sighs at that. It was true he never told any of his spies of other spies as a security measure. Alright fine. Just get back to your shop and keep an eye out for them if they return. And get some new birds, I need you back in your village and to keep the info coming. Dido nods and rushes back to his village. Damn it. Why did they leave? I had everything planned and yet somehow, they leave with Tito not even noticing. No, someone must have helped them whether or not they knew about it. But who would help them? And why? What does someone gain from having them leave? They are no doubt in Kanoha now and trying to connect with Naruto, but with them not being with him for years and having him alone all this time Naruto no doubts hates his family and is pushing them away. Said Jiraiya. In time Naruto will snap and Minato will have no choice but to kill Naruto and send the Kayubi to hell. The Kayubi needs to be off the board. It cannot be controlled and is just a mindless beast that needs to die and with the modifications on Naruto's seal, will send the Kayubi straight into the Shinigami when Naruto dies. For now, I need to get to Kanoha and make sure that Minato and Kishina see things my way. Good thing I have those seals on them to help with that. Said Jiraiya. Jiraiya then leaves for Kanoha unaware of the pain that he is going to be in when he arrives. Kanoha a day later. It was a day before the exams and Naruto and his team were walking around the village since they were done with training for the day. Naruto-kun are you excited for the exams? Asked Fu. You bet. I aim to win the exams and get the Chunin rank. Said Naruto. I hope that we all do. It will be cool to get the rank of Chunin so soon after becoming Genin. Said Haku. True what you were trained by Zabuza for years if anyone is ready for the exams and the one worthy of getting the rank of Chunin it's you Haku-chan. Said Naruto. Haku blushes at the praise. Thank you Naruto-sama. I do hope that Zabuza Tausen is okay in the Kiri War. She said with a little bit of worry in her voice. Naruto turns around and give Haku a hug while Karami was in her fox form, gave Haku a lick on her cheek to cheer her up. Haku returned the hug with a smile. Don't worry Haku-chan. 
Zabuza is one of the most powerful shinobi in the world. He can take anything thrown at him. Said Naruto as he tries to cheer her up. Gu gets in on the hug and tries to help her teammate. Naruto-kun is right. You father will be fine. And if they ask for help then I'm sure Hokage-sama will send aid. Said Fu. The group stay there for a moment until they let go of each other. Thank you, I am glad that the three of you are here for me. Said Haku. Team 12 continues walking through the village until they hear a shout. Ouch. Damn punk. Watch where you're going. The group runs over to see a tall boy around their age holding up a boy a few years younger than them, and a blonde-haired woman stands near the tall boy with an irritated look on her face. Put the kid down Kankuro. We don't have time for this and he won't like it if he finds out about this. Said the blonde girl. Yeah well he is not here right now and this punk needs to look here he is going. Said the boy. The boy brings his fist back to punch the boy but stops when something is pointed at his throat. Kankuro looks down to see a bone-like blade attached to an arm is near his throat. Kankuro sweats at the blade and looks to his right to see Naruto, with his grim mask on and Karami hissing at him. Put the sand dame's grandson down or you will lose an arm, permanently. Said Naruto in a dark tone. Kankuro drops the boy and backs up from the teen. Oh no, you okay? Asked Naruto. I'm okay Naruto Nyasen. I was just about to make my move. Said a happy Konohamaru. Naruto smiles at the boy as he takes of his mask and retracts his bones back into his body. The girl blushes at Naruto's handsome face. I am sure Kono. So, I am going to assume that you and your team are here for the exams, right? Yes. This is my brother Kankuro, and my name is Tamari no Sabaku. We are here for the exams. Answered Tamari with the blush on her face getting bigger. And is the one glaring at your brother in the trees also with you? Asked Naruto. The two look to the tree and pale at what they see. From the tree comes a boy with red hair and raccoon-like eyes and the kanji for love on his forehead. This is Gara no Sabaku. Gara appears in a swirl of sand in front of the group and glares at Kankuro. Kankuro you're an embarrassment to the village. Said Gara. But Gara, The brat ran into me and Kankuro tried to explain. Shut up. Or I'll kill you. Said Gara as those around him raise an eyebrow at that. My apologize for my stupid brother. He is not bright. No harm done. He was fortunate that he didn't hurt Kono here. Wars have been started for less. Also, your brother shouldn't be out in broad daylight with your sister's makeup on his face. Said Naruto with a smirk. Gara grins a bit while the girls in Kono laugh at Kankuro. It's war paint. Yelled Kankuro. Then why does the makeup box in your pocket say the property of Tamari no Sabaku? Asked Naruto. Kankuro was then bashed into the ground by his sister's iron fan. I knew it. That is my makeup you bastard. My apologize, but I need to teach my brother to not steal my makeup. Said Tamari. She then grabs Kankuro by his leg and drags him away. Naruto and the group laugh at the sight. Naruto then turns to Gara. Well, we will see you during the exams. I hope to see how strong you are, Ichibi said Naruto with a grin on his face. Gara looks to Naruto with his own grin. I agree. I hope you give me a great fight, Kayubi. Mother wants both yours and the Nanabi's blood. And she will have it. Gara then walks away to catch up with his siblings to help Tamari punish Kankuro for his stupidity. The group watches as Gara leaves. When he is out of sight Naruto turns to Kono. I think you should head home for the day Kono and stay out of the way for a few days. Okay Naruto Nyasen. Good luck in the exams said Kono as he goes home to see his grandfather. Alright girls let's get going. Said Naruto. Haku and Fu nod and they walk away from the area. But before they get far Naruto calls out to someone. And get out of the tree Sasuke. You aren't fooling anyone. Team 12 leaves the area as the spoiled Ichiha brat drops out of the tree. Damn that dope. I don't know how he got so strong, but that power will be mine by the end of the exams. I swear it on father's honor. Snarled Sasuke. Sasuke then went out to find Kakashi for some last-minute training before the exams. I cannot believe that the elders got Sasuke back into the main force of the ninja corporation. Why do they love him so much? Asked Karami. Simple, Sasuke is easy to manipulate. They hope to use him to control the clan heads of the council. The Ichiha clan holds a great amount of hold on the council. However, Mikoto Kasen is the current clan head with Itachi Niasen as the clan heir. Plus, they want an Ichiha in their pocket to control me or more to the point you my dear vixen said Naruto. Karami nuzzles Naruto's face with affection. The group continues down the street. Until Naruto stops in his tracks. He turns to an ally and calls out. You can come out now, kitty cat. Said Naruto. Haku and Fu are confused until a blonde-haired girl around their age walks out of the ally with a scowl on her face. Do not call me that. I hate it when people call me that. Said the girl. It is probably better than what most people call you. Isn't that right, Nibi? Asked Naruto. 
Aku and Fu are shocked to see another Jinchuriki in the village along with Yachibi. The girl looks away with a pained look on her face at that. Yeah, you're right. But I still don't like it. So, you're the Kayubi Jinchuriki, huh? And if I am right the green-haired girl is the Nanabi Jinchuriki. Said the girl. Fu walks up to the girl and extends her hand to her. Nice to meet you. My name is Fu. It's good to see a sister in burden. Said a happy Fu. The girl is taken back a bit by Fu's demeanor, but she returns the handshake. Yujido Nai of Kumo. Nice to meet you Yujido-san. So, is the Hachibi going to introduce himself? Ask Naruto as he looks up to the roof of a nearby building. Yujido is surprised to hear that as she and the others look up and see a large man with dark skin and a muscular build, as well with white hair and a goatee, with multiple swords on his back. With him are three teenagers around the same age as Naruto and his team. The only man of the Genin group has dark skin with short spiky white hair. He appears a little nervous in being in Kanoha. The girl to his left has red hair and dark skin with amber eyes. She has a look of annoyance with her male teammate. The final girl has blonde hair white smooth white skin and blue eyes. She has a neutral look on her face as she stares at Team 12. B sensei Said Yujido. Yo. We were look for you kitty cat. Said B. I said don't call me that. Yelled Yujido. Nichan, why did you wander off? Asked the blonde haired girl. Sai, I just wanted to look around. Is that so wrong? Asked Yujido. Yo. You got to be careful kitty. We in another village. Got to be smooth with the grove in here. Rap B, badly at that. The Genin of Kumo Sai at B's bad rapping while Naruto, Haku and Fu, along with the four Biju just sweat drop at it. Naruto looks over at the other blonde haired Jinchuriki and asks. Is he always like this? All the damn time. Was Yujito's answer. So, not cool. Said the other blonde Kumo Genin. The two groups speak with each other for a few minutes until the Kumo team leave. Killer B however warns Naruto and Fu that the two Jinchuriki of Iwa are in Kanoha as senseis. Naruto Haku, Fu and Karami head over to tell Minato of this development. Okage Tower. Naruto and his team enter the tower and see that Minato was hard at work getting the village ready for the Chunin exams. It had to dealt with carefully with the amount of teams coming in from the other villages. Especially due to the fact that the granddaughter of the Tsuchikage was entering in the exams. Along with the Kazukage's children as well. There were a lot of important children in the village right now. One wrong move and the village could be drawn into a war that they don't need. It didn't help that Danzo came in a few hours ago and tried to convince Minato to have those children kidnapped so as to have more bloodlines in the village. Of course Minato said no, but the damn war hawk was very persistent in Minato doing this. Minato stood his ground however and told the old fool off. Danzo left the room in a huff and was wondering why his Sharingan wasn't working on Minato. What Danzo doesn't know is that Minato and Kashina placed anti-Jinjutsu seals in the office to prevent the Hokage from being controlled by them. As Minato continued to battle the bane of all cages. Team 12 came into the room. Hey Tusan. Buried in paperwork again? Asked Naruto. Minato chuckles. Yes I am. The Chunin exams are an important part for peace between the hidden villages, but it is a pain to deal with. The good news is that we only have to deal with it once every few years. True. We saw different teams already in the village with a few looking like they were ready to come to blows with each other. Said Naruto. Sai, I thought as much. So what brings you three here? I doubt you came here just to talk about the piles of paperwork that I have to deal with. Said Minato. The team laughs or giggles at that. You're right Hokage-sama. We ran into three other Jinchuriki while we were out in the village. Said Haku. Yeah. And the Hachibi told us that the Iwa Jinchurikis are here as teachers. Said Fu. Minato narrows his eyes at that. Interesting. Which Biju are going to be in the exams that you know of? Asked Minato. Out of the nine Biju only my brother the Sanbi and my sister the Rakubi are not here in Kanoha. My brothers the Hachibi, Yanbi and Gobi are in the senseis of Kumo and Iwa, while my younger sisters the Achibi and the Nibi are going to be in the exams. Said Karami. Minato closes his eyes when he hears that. He then sighs. This is not good. If Danzo hears about this then he will stop at nothing to get them and make them weapons. Said Minato. There is something else. My sister the Achibi feels off. I think that something is wrong with her, but I would need to get closer to her to find out. Said Karami. Minato closed his eyes in thought. He then opened them and looked his son and his team. For now we can do nothing. Well the reveal of seven Biju in Kanoha puts this village at risk they are contained right now with Karami being the exception. I want you to keep an eye on the two of Jinchuriki in the exams, while I will have some Jonin keep an eye on the others. We don't need the other five going on a rampage in the village. Said Minato. Hi. Said Naruto and his teammates. Good. Head home for the day and get ready for the exams tomorrow. 
I look forward to each of you giving your all in the exams. Said Minato with a smile. Naruto and Ko nod their heads and leave the tower. Minato sighs and slumps in his chair. This just got harder. First this mess with Jiraiya and Naruto, the info about Orochimaru and now seven of the nine Biju are in the village right now. I need to keep Danzo away from them or he will cause a war with the other nations, damn Warhawk. Said Minato. Minato then set up some of his most trusted Jonin to look after the Jinchuriki that are not going to be in the exams, while he trusted Naruto and his team along with his other children to keep an eye on the other two Jinchuriki in the exams. He can only hope that nothing goes too wrong during the exams. Next day Konoha Academy. Naruto with Fu and Haku by his side with Karami around his neck look up at the building that held the first part of the exams. We should go in Naruto-sama. We don't want to be late. Said Haku. Yeah. Let's go. Said Fu. Okay, okay let's get going. Said Naruto. Hey Fu, do you have your mask? Asked Karami. Fu looked down and brought out the mask that she had to wear during the exams. Yeah I do, but I don't want to wear it. I want people to know my face and see that I can be a shinobi just like everyone else. Said Fu. Fu. You know why you have to wear it right? The village of Taki has sent three teams here to take part of the exams. If even one of them notices you then they will send word back to Taki and the village could start a war to get you back. Said Naruto. I know. I just hate this. They got rid of me because they hated me. So why would they want me back? Asked Fu. Because of Chimei. You know just like I do that the council of most villages don't care about Jinchuriki. They just see us as weapons or animals to listen to their master whenever they blow out a command to us. Said Naruto. Who listened to Naruto? We finally have a great life here in Konoha. The council has not yet found out that you carry me and we have many friends here. Don't let the fools of Taki ruin it just because they saw you. Please Fu, I don't like this either, but I would rather do this than have those idiots try to take us away from here. Said Chimei. Fu sighs but nods her head. I get it. I do. I'll wear the mask to hide myself, but I am telling you this. If anyone from Taki tries take me from my new home I will not hold back. Said Fu as she put on the mask. Naruto, Haku and Karami smile at the green girl. We wouldn't have it any other way. Said Naruto. Team 12 then walked into the building looking for the testing site. As they walked and looked for the testing room they see a large group of people trying to enter a room with the number 301. Naruto shakes his head and begins to walk away. Naruto-sama, where are you going? The room we need to enter is right there. Said Haku. No it's not. It's a test to weed out the weak. We are on the second floor, so we need to go up one more floor. Said Naruto. Haku and Fu nod their heads and walk away. But before they could get far a loud obnoxious voice shouts out. Drop the Jinjutsu. You won't fool an elite like me. Yelled Sasuke. Naruto growls and Karami snarls at the Ichiha's short-sightedness. While Haku and Fu shake their heads at that. Hey Dumbus. You just made the exams much harder for the rest of us. Yelled Naruto. Sasuke scoffs. So what? The more people in the exams will allow more people to see my greatness. Said Sasuke as he walks past Naruto and shoulder checks him. Team 12 glare at Sasuke and his teammates which are Sakuri Hirano, Sakura's twin younger sister and devoted Sasuke fangirl, and a pale young man that Naruto doesn't know. Team 12 makes their way up the steps only to step to the right to dodge a black blur being sent back down. The team looks down to see that Sasuke was sent back down the steps and when Team 12 looked up they saw who did the deed. The teen was at least a year older than the bowl cut hair, wearing a green jumpsuit and the bushiest eyebrows the world has ever seen. Nice moves. Said Naruto as he and his teammates continue to walk up ignoring the bruised Ichiha on the ground and the pink screaming banshee as it ran after her object of blind devotion and the pale teen shaking his head in annoyance. The teen smiles. Thank you. I wanted to test the rookie of this year and see if he lived up to what I have heard. I am disappointed with what I have seen. Not surprising. The teachers and the civilian council gave him the title to appease him. I guarantee that if my father was here when Sasuke was in the academy he wouldn't have gotten it. Said Naruto. The teen looks at Naruto with wide eyes and then realizes who he was. I see. You are one of the Yandame's children. The name's Rock Lee. I wish to fight you to see what you are made of. Challenge the now known Rock Lee. Sorry Lee. But that will have to wait until we are in the exams. Once there I will give you one hell of a fight. I give you my word. Said Naruto. Lee frowns but nods his head. The four teens and one hidden biju make their way to the real room 301 and then enter. There they see many other teams looking to enter the exams. When they enter the room almost every team look at them and give them their best killer intent that they could. 
It was just one problem, Naruto and Fu had to deal with a hell of a lot worse, K.I. than this from their respective Biju, and Haku was raised by Zabuza, who could flood this room with K.I. and kill these brats without even trying. Naruto got annoyed and shot out his own K.I., and most of the teams hit the floor when they got hit with it. After 30 seconds Naruto let up with the K.I. and smiled at the teams with a predatory grin. Is there a problem? Asked Naruto. The teams shook their heads no and prayed that they didn't have to fight this genin in the exams. The only ones not affected by Naruto's K.I. were those from Konoha, since they weren't his targets, his fellow Jinchuriki, and the few teams that didn't try to intimidate Naruto's team. That was interesting. I wonder if he is good in a fight. If he is then he would be a great husband for me. Thought a girl from the village of Natashiko. Holy shit. That was nuts. Nibi was that. Asked Yujido. No kitten. That was not my sister's power but his own. He is strong kitten, probably the strongest genin in the room right now. He would make a good mate for you and give you a strong litter of kittens. Said Matatabi. What? Don't say such things. Who would kill me if I dated him since he is the son of the Yandame Hokage. Besides, it takes more than power and a cute face to make me like someone. Thought Yujito. Oh? He is cute is he? I see my little kitty is finally growing up. I can't wait to see the kittens that you will make with him. Said Matatabi. Damn it listen to me. Yujito thought yelled at the Nibi with a blush on her face. Damn, that was crazy. What was that? Asked Kankuro. That was Yuzumaki making sure that everyone in the room now that he is not someone to mess with. Kankuro, Tamari we must leave him alone once the second part begins. He is stronger than most. I will deal with him alone. Said Gara. Are you sure Gara? Asked a worried Tamari. She may be afraid of her brother at times, but she still loves him greatly. Gara nods his head and the conversation ends at that. Hey Naruto. Said a voice. Naruto and his team looks over to see Team 7, 8, 10 and 11 walk over to meet up with him and his team. Kiba was the one who spoke up. Hey Kiba, everyone. How are you doing? Asked Naruto. Great. I am so looking forward to these exams and ranking up to Chunin. Said Kiba as Akamaru barks on Kiba's head. Troublesome. Why did Asuma Sensei want us to take part in these exams? We have only been genin for a few months. Said Shikamaru. Shikamaru is then smacked in the back of his head by Ino. Lazy Baka. Asuma Sensei told us already. It's so that we can get experience. Even if we don't make it to the Chunin rank we will have a better handle on it later. Said Ino. She does have a point Shika. Said Choji as he ate some chips. Naruto and the others chuckle. I see some things haven't changed since we last saw each other. Nope. I have to work my butt off to make sure that one is awake while we train and the other actually trains and not just eat all the time. Said Ino. And I see that you are doing a great job at that. Said Naruto. Ino blushes at the praise. Thanks Naruto. So how are you doing? Haven't seen you since we graduated. Said Ino. Pretty good these past few months once my family came back. I will admit that it is a bit rocky with us at times, but I am glad that I have them in my life now. Said Naruto. Naruto's siblings smile at that. They know that it has not been easy for him since they came back with their parents. I am glad that you have them back Naruto-kun. Said Hanada. Thanks Hanada-chan. How are you doing? Asked Naruto. Hanada blushes at that and smiles. I'm good. Kurinai-sensei has been a great teacher and I have learned a lot under her. Said Hanada. For a few more minutes the teen speak with each other and talk about all that they have done these past few months. Kiba was also flirting with Naruko and she actually flirted back much to Naruto and Menma's ire. Protective brothers to the end. Just then a voice is heard by the teens. You should keep it down. You guys just started your first tune in exams and a lot of the other teams are out for blood. Said a teen with glasses and gray hair. Naruto looked at him and glared. His power was well beyond that of a genin, and the way he was postured was that of an experienced warrior. And who are you? Asked Kiba. Sorry, name's Kabuto. This is my seventh try at the Chunin exams. Answered the now known Kabuto. Naruto continues to glare at Kabuto. Either this guy sucks at these exams. Thought Naruto. Or he is after something. Plus, he smells of snakes. And not like the ones that Anko Lady has with her. Kabuto smells snakes in a sterile lab. Said Kurami through the mental link that she shares with Naruto. I need to let Tusan know about him. If Kabuto is with Orochimaru then he can't be allowed to escape. Thought Naruto. You must suck then. Said Kiba. Yeah but to my own defense. These exams are not easy. If you want I can give you information about some of the other competitors. Said Kabuto. And you would just give this info out for free. Asked Menma. Well I wouldn't give out info on me or my team. So, I don't see the harm in it. Said Kabuto. I want information. Said Sasuke as he marched over to the group and pushed a few people out of the way. 
Naruto growled at the spoiled Ichiha prince, while Satsuki had to be held back by Sakura and Mido. Sure. Who do you want to know? Asked Kabuto. I want info on Gara no Sabaku, Rock Lee and Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Said Sasuke. Most of the genin of Konoha glare at Sasuke for wanting info on fellow Konoha shinobi. A few other teams were curious about who was no doubt the son of the Yandame Hokage. You know their names. That takes the fun out of it, but okay. Said Kabuto. He then takes out his cards and puts chakra in them, and pictures of Gara, Lee and Naruto appear on them. Let's see, Gara no Sabaku his record is impressive with 12 C rank missions completed, 2 B ranks and an A rank mission under his belt, and it is said that he has not gotten hurt once on a mission. Most of the teams look at Gara with wide eyes at his stats, but had to look away when he glared at them. Next is Rock Lee. Has a high mastery of Tejutsu but nothing on anything else. Completed 20 D rank, 12 C ranks and a single B rank. His teacher is Might Guy and his teammates are Tenten Higarashi and Niji Hayuga. An interesting record to be sure. Said Kabuto. But just as he was about to look at Naruto's card, it was swiped out of his hand by Naruto himself. You know. That isn't very nice. Telling everyone what we can do takes the fun out of the exams. You wouldn't want to do that now would you? Asked Naruto as his eyes turned grim red and emitted his K.I. Kabuto. Kabuto shivered at the K.I. right, my apologize. What the fuck was that? No genin should have that kind of K.I. not even someone who is a Jinchuriki. Thought Kabuto. Well with that out of the way, most of the hidden villages have sent their genin here for the exams. Even Odo has sent a single genin team, but since they are a new village, I don't think that they will be much of a problem. Said Kabuto. I don't think you should have said that. Said Naruto. And why is that? Asked Kabuto. Just then one of the Odo nin attacked Kabuto and forced Kabuto to the ground breaking his glasses. Naruto was quick to not only disable the Odonin that attacked, but also grab Kabuto's cards and tag Kabuto with a grim mark so that Naruto could track him down later. Naruto then leans down at Kabuto with a grin on his face. Because they heard you. And what is your problem? Asked Naruto to the Odonin. Just showing four eyes here that the village of Odo is going to win this Chunin exams. Said the Odonin. Just then a Jonin enters the room. Okay you brats. Listen up. Sit in your seats and shut up. And you from Odo. Attack another person then you and your team will be banned from the rest of the exams. Yelled the man. Sorry, sir. I am just anxious. Said the Odonin. Don't care. Now shut up. Name's Ibiki Marino, your proctor for this part of the exams. As well as your worst nightmare. Said Ibiki. Most of the genin shiver at the crazed smile on the man's face. Now time to begin the first test. Said Ibiki. After given the rules of the first part of the exams, the genin team sit down and begin the test. The test is to gather information from others in the room without getting caught. Most of the teams begin working hard except for Naruto. He was taking a nap with Kurami on his lap sleeping. But the sensei's. Looks like the test has begun. Said Kurunai. Yup but they have Ibiki. I pity them. Said Asuma. Ah don't worry. Ibiki is just a big teddy bear. Said Abito. Yeah I don't think so sweetie. If Ibiki is a big teddy bear then Bakashai is not a pervert. Said Rin. Most of the senseis laugh at the comment while Kakashi glares at his former teammate. Is the name calling necessary? Asked Kakashi. Yes. You let your anger get the better of you for no reason. Said Rin. Kakashi looks away in a huff and goes back to his book, which makes the women in the room glare at him. I then notice that something in the room. Bishina-sama, why is your son asleep? Asked Guy. Bishina looked at Naruto and began to smirk. Oh, he is not sleeping. He is waiting. Said Kashina. Waiting for what? Asked Asuma. For the right time to strike. Said Kashina. Back with the genin. Ibiki looks around for any cheaters and then notices that Naruto was asleep. He grits his teeth and walks over to Naruto and smacks him awake. Hey. If you're just going to sleep then leave. Said Ibiki. Naruto shakes his head and looks around and sees that most of the teams are looking at him with a smug look on their faces. How long until the test is over? Asked Naruto. Five minutes. Why going to give up? Asked Ibiki. Naruto doesn't answer but gets up and walks away. Most of the teams think that he was going to give up, but Naruto walks over to an Iwa genin and punches the genin out and takes his test. What the hell are you doing? Yelled Ibiki. Cheating if I am not mistaken. You still have to catch me two more times to kick me out. Isn't that right? Asked Naruto. Ibiki grins at Naruto. The rest of the genin look at Naruto like he was a crazy person. Not bad kid. Okay no one else is allowed to do what he did. Yelled Ibiki. Why not? yelled Akumo Nin. Because we are ninjas and the same technique doesn't work twice. Now shut up and get back to work. You only have three minutes left. Yelled Ibiki. 
After that the rest of the teams get back to work to finish before E the test ends. But the sensei's. Kashina was howling with laughter. Asuma shakes his head while Kurinai was surprised. Guy was shouting about youth, and Kakashi was glaring at Naruto. Ha! I knew he would do that. Said Kashina. Didn't you do that for your test Kashina-sama? Asked Rin. Yup. I also punched an Iwan in too. He really is my son. Said Kashina. Kakashi just glares at Naruto all the while. He shouldn't be like this. Naruto was to remain stupid and docile until he broke. I still don't understand why Sensei came back so soon. I need to get word out to Jiraiya as quickly as I can. Thought Kakashi. But the exams. Once the test was over Ibiki looked at the teams that were left in the room. There were more than what he was hoping to have, but that was something that he was hoping to change with this one last test. Okay aunts. Time for the last question. And there is a trick to the last question. You don't have to take the last question if you don't want to. Said Ibiki. And why wouldn't we want to? Asked Tamari. Because if you get it wrong then not only will you fail the exams, but you won't be able to take any other Chunin exams for the rest of your lives. Said Ibiki with a dark gleam in his eyes. What? Yelled most of the genin. You can't do that. Yelled another genin. I can and will. Hokage-sama gave me this right. So, will you take the chance, or will you give up here? Asked Ibiki. Some of the genin begin to leave out of fear of losing their chance to be Chunin later on. Ibiki began to smirk at his handiwork when Naruto got up. A few thought that he was going to quit too, but he proves them wrong when Naruto punches his desk. Do you honestly think that is going to scare me? It doesn't matter if I never rank up as a shinobi. I will face everything head on. Said Naruto. A few began to look at Naruto with impressed looks on their faces, with a few Kanoichi from other villages were interested with him as well. Um, he is interesting. But I still wish to see how he is in a fight before I try to pursue him as a husband. Thought Shizuka from Natashiko. How cool. Thought Samui of Kumo. Tuckle. Out of all the Kanoha Jen in here he would be the one that catches my attention. I wonder how my grandfather would react if I tried to date him. Thought Kuritsuchi of Iowa. Ibiki looked at the remaining Jenin and smirks. Looks like no one else is going to leave. That kid really is like his parents. Thought Ibiki. I see. So you all are going to stay huh? Well then there is only one thing to say to you all. You all passed. Said Ibiki with a smirk. Most of the genin look at Ibiki with dropped jaws and wide eyes. Naruto, Gara and Yujito all look at the Jonin with a knowing look on their faces. What? Yelled the rest of the genin. The last question was a test to see if you had the guts to do anything for this job. Said Ibiki. He then takes off his headbands to show the genin the scars over his face. This job is not easy or for the faint of heart. There will be times that you will have to go beyond for the mission, and it will be up to each of you to complete it. Hello future bleeding brats. The psycho bitch Anko Midarashi is here. Yelled the now known Anko. Most of the genin were shocked while Ibiki shook his head. Naruto however had a card with the numbers 8. 3 on it in his hands. Anko sees the card and goes along with it. Ah, only an 8. 3. Asked Anko. It didn't have fireworks then you knocked out one of the genin. If you're going to make an entrance then you would need as many people awake to see it. Said Naruto. Fair point. But I did have fireworks years ago, and I was told to never do it again, since two genin got caught on fire. Said Anko with a smile on her face that unnerves the other genin at her psychotic smile. Anko, you're early. Said Ibiki. That's what she said. Said Anko. Naruto and a few teachers laugh at that while most of the genin blush. I see that you let a lot of genin pass Ibiki. It seems that you are losing your touch. Said Anko. Hardly. It just seems that we have one hell of a genin in the group. Said Ibiki as he looked at Naruto. Naruto smiles and gives Ibiki the peace symbol. Anko giggles at Naruto. I see. But once I am through with them they will be cut in half. Now brats meet me at the forest of death for the next part of the exams. Said Anko as she dashed out the window. Most of the genin sweat drop at how Anko acts. Ibiki sighs when Anko left the room. Naruto and his team gets up and jump out the window after Anko. When that happened Naruko, Natsumi and Menma follow their brother, while the other Kanoha genin also went out the window when the rest of the genin tried to get out through the door and got stuck. In trance of the forest of death. An hour later the Chunin hopefuls are standing in front of the forest of death. For most genin they were scared of this place as they could feel the danger of the forest. But for Naruto, well for him it was like a second home for him. Okay brats listen up. For the second test you all will have to collect two scrolls and bring them both to the tower in the center of the forest. The thing is the other teams will have the scrolls that you will need to pass. Do whatever you need to in order to get the scroll you will need. You each will need a heaven and an earth scroll to pass. And do not open them before you get to the tower, not only will you fail, but you will get a surprise if you do. Said Anko. 
Naruto looks out at the forest and smirks. This would be easy for him and his team, since he knows the forest like the back of his hand. So this is the forest of death. It doesn't look like much. Scoffed Sasuke. Sasuke then feels something slice his cheek, and he feels someone press themselves against his back and hears a voice in his ear. Is that so you know tough guys like you often die first in the forest? I can tell you about all the Ichihas that died in the forest if you want ask Anko. Sasuke fraud and failed to hide his shudder. Sakuri was screaming at Anko to leave Sasuke alone, while their final teammate, Sai sided his team. After scaring the Achiha prince and licking the brat's blood, which Anko said that it tasted foul, Anko walked back over to the front of the forest to continue. Now before we begin I need you to sign these forms. Said Anko. What are they? Asked Amoy. Oh just waivers that will allow Kanoha to not get in trouble, should any of you get hurt or worse while in the forest. Said Anko. Naruto takes a form and reads what is on it out loud. This waiver hereby grants all deniability to Kanoha for any injuries or death-related incidents to the signed parties. Such injuries include but not limited to, broken bones, stab wounds, impalement, drowning, being burned alive, being struck by lightning, crushed by boulders, dismemberment, disembowelment, decapitation. Being devoured by the wildlife of the forest or by the other teams or any injuries that may otherwise occur while in the forest. Read Naruto. Most of the genin pale at what Naruto reads, but it got even worse when Naruto spoke up again. Really Anko? Why is the list so short? This doesn't even cover half of what could happen in the forest said Naruto. The other genin, even Naruto's siblings, pale to the point that they all look like Orochimaru clones. Anko grins at Naruto. Oh you know. I didn't want to spoil all the pain that they could get into while in the forest. I look forward to hearing them scream in fear. Said Anko. The few genin are now terrified of both Anko and Naruto, since the two are both chuckling and have a grin on their faces that would make most run in another direction. It got even worse for the genin when the fox on Naruto's neck begins to laugh with the two. Okay kitties time to get in there. Said Anko. The teams gather the scrolls and waited for the time to get in. A few minutes later the doors open and Anko calls out. Okay get in there. And try not to die. Yelled Anko. Naruto and his team rushes into the forest ready to show everyone that they are ready to rank up. With Kakashi. Kakashi was walking home after watching his team enter the forest. He had nothing to worry about since his prize student is in the forest right now. While well, he wished that he could have had more time to train Sakuri, he knows that she will at least survive the forest. And he had no worries about Sai since he was trained by Danzo himself. Bakashi was angry however that Naruto was getting stronger by the minute. Learning Fuinjutsu from his parents along with Kinjutsu from Kishina, and even the hummingbird fighting style from his father and the Rasengan as well. And that is not even mentioning the bloodlines that he somehow unlocked. I need to contact Jiraiya somehow. But I can't since the dog summons won't listen to me anymore, and most of my messengers are either in prison or out of the village right now. Said Kakashi. Kakashi enters his home to rest and figure out how to contact Jiraiya when he hears a voice. Welcome home Kakashi. Said Jiraiya from the sofa with a serious look on his face. Kakashi whipped his head over to see Jiraiya on his sofa with a wide eye. Jiraiya-sama. When did you get here? Asked Kakashi. About an hour ago. I came back because Minato and Kashina went missing with their family a few months ago. Are they here? Asked Jiraiya. Bakashi sighs and sits down in a chair and hands the sand and a bottle of water. Yeah they are here. And it is not good. Said Kakashi. Jiraiya drinks the water and asks. How bad? Asked Jiraiya. Very bad. Minato and Kashina know everything that happened to Naruto, and they were pissed. They killed six civilian council members when they got back out of anger. Answered Kakashi. Damn. Was Mibuki one of them? Asked Jiraiya. No thank Kami. But ever since the daimyo gave Minato his position as Hokage back to him, Minato has been fixing everything that was changed since he left. He even took me off Team 7 as its sensei, as well as Sasuke and Naruto. Said Kakashi. Then who is the sensei of Team 7? And what about Sasuke? You know that we need him for the plan to work right? Asked Jiraiya. Of course I know that. But after reading and find out all the doctored reports, Minato removed him from the main shinobi corporation. It was only thanks to the silver tongues of the elders that I got Sasuke back as my student in Team 13, with Mibuki's other daughter Sakuri, and one of Danzo's students I. Said Kakashi. That's good. What about Naruto? What happened to him? Asked Jiraiya. Well after Naruto and Sasuke was removed from Team 7, Tsunade's daughter Mito was added as a replacement with Rin as their teacher. Naruko, Natsumi and Menma are being taught by Abito, and Kishina has Naruto as her student with Hakuyuki Mamachi and a girl named Fu. Said Kakashi. Wait, Fu. Does this girl have tan skin and green hair? Asked Jiraiya. Yeah why? 
asked Kakashi. Fuck. That girl is the Nanabi Jinchuriki. I sealed her up tight and was able to get her soul to bandits months ago. Why is she here? yelled Jiraiya. The first mission Kashina took Naruto and Haku on was an extermination mission to the border of Taki. When they got there they rescued Fu and brought her back. Minato made her a ninja and placed her on Team 12 to fill in for the missing member. Said Kakashi. Damn it. I thought that I wouldn't have to deal with her again. Wait, is Naruto angry with his parents? Asked Jiraiya. No. He is close with them. It is strange. He was thrown to the wolves and he still loves them. I don't understand why he doesn't hate them. Said Kakashi. Damn it. This can't get any worse. Said Jiraiya. Actually it is. Naruto has powers that he shouldn't have. Said Kakashi. What do you mean? What powers? Asked Jiraiya. Jiraiya, Naruto was somehow able to unlock not only his chakra chains, thanks to Kashina during his training, but he also has the dead bone pulse and the crystal release. Along with a powerful summons that only he has access to called the Grim. He even used some technique to fuse himself with that Haku girl too for a short time to get even stronger. Said Kakashi. Damn. This is bad. We need to fix this before anything else happens. Said Jiraiya who was in desperate need of a drink. There is one last thing that I need to tell you. It's about the Kayubi. Said Kakashi. What about that mindless beast? Asked Jiraiya as he took a drink of water. The Kayubi is free from Naruto. Said Kakashi. Jiraiya spits out his water at Kakashi in surprise. What? How is that possible? That seal was Minato's masterpiece. There was no way in hell that the Kayubi was going to escape it. Yelled Jiraiya. I don't know. The only ones who know the truth are Minato, Kishina, Hiruzen, Tsunade, the clan heads, the daimyo and Naruto. No one else was allowed at that meeting, and the secret of how the Kayubi got out is a SSS class secret. Said Kakashi as he dries himself off. Jiraiya slumps in the sofa and sighs. Years of hard work are going down the fucking drain faster than he could fill it. Where is the Kayubi? Asked Jiraiya. But Naruto. While the Kayubi might be out of him the Kayubi is still anchored to him. That is the only good thing about her. Said Kakashi. Jiraiya nods his head at that. But then remembers what was just said. Her? What do you mean by that? Asked Jiraiya. Kayubi is a girl. And I will admit that she has looks that rival most Hayugas and even Tsunade when she was younger. Said Kakashi. Jiraiya looks down at the ground and growls. This was not how it was supposed to go. Sasuke was supposed to be trained to the point that his ancestor Indra would awaken within him and give Sasuke the mark of the moon. Once Sasuke got the Rinnegan then they would train Sasuke with it, while Jiraiya went from village to village and weaken each of the Jinchurikis, so that the villages would be too weak to fight back against an Achiha, with the power of the Sage of Six Paths, and three Shinobi powered with Kayubi Chakra. This plan was made after Jiraiya, Danzo and Fugaku's father found an old scroll that could only be read by someone with a Sharingan, but only a pure bloody Achiha could read it. The scroll told the story of the Sage of Six Paths and his sons. How the oldest son would be reincarnated in the Achiha clan, and how the youngest son would reincarnate in either the Senju or the Uzumaki clans. When they found out about those powers these three men began a long and complicated journey to control the powers of the sage. The first was destroying the Senju and Uzumaki clans to a trickle of what they once were. Danzo and Jiraiya helped to kill off the Uzumaki by giving the other villages ways of entering Yuzushio, and even disabling the few Injutsu seals on the islands, and bringing Kishina to Konoha. To also having Nawaki murdered by Ichiha's loyal to Fugaku's father years ago. And of course working the third war their way to ensure that they would be able to track the Biju along the way. But they did have a few problems along as well. The first was that Rin and Abito survived the war which was not supposed to happen as Jiraiya wanted Minato to focus on Kakashi only since Kakashi had been converted by Danzo before he became Minato's student. Then Fugaku's father dies in a mission gone wrong, and then his power-hungry son took over the Ichiha clan. Danzo and Jiraiya took a chance in telling Fugaku of the plan, and for a long time it seemed that he was all for it. But then he tried to start a coup to take over the village. In the battle all of Fugaku's loyal members were cut down by Itachi and Shishui, while Fugaku escaped. And now everything that they had planned was hinged on Naruto dying since he is Ashura's reincarnation, and he was the only one who could defeat Sasuke or Indra. And once Naruto died then he would take the Kayubi with him, and they would be rid of the strongest Biju in the nations. Plus, it would make the Moon-Eyed plan impossible to achieve. Jiraiya sighs. Kami fucking damn. Why is this happening? We have been planning this for years now, and it seems that it is falling apart in the last few months for some strange reason. What do we do? Asked Kakashi. Jiraiya closes his eyes and thinks. I want you to send out word to Taki about Fu. Once they find out that Kanoha has her then Taki will pressure Minato to give the girl back. Once she is out of the village I will tag her with even stronger seals to make sure that she will never be free again. 
We need as many Biju subdued before we begin the final part of the plan, said Jiraiya. Why don't we use her as a weapon? Asked Kakashi. Jiraiya sighs at that. Danzo works too well to make his pawns like him. I have told you. The Jinchuriki with Biju in them need their emotions to use the power correctly. That is why Naruko, Natsumi and Menma will be able to use the Kayubi power in them without any problems, since they won't have a mindless beast getting in their way of using the power. Said Jiraiya. I understand. What will you do then? Asked Kakashi. It's time that my students saw things my way. Once I get to the tower I will activate the seals on both Minato and Kishina to make them listen to me, and then we will deal with both Naruto and Kayubi. Said Jiraiya. Very well. I will deal with the message to Taki immediately. Said Kakashi. Jiraiya then left the house, while Kakashi began to make the message to Taki. What neither Shinobi noticed was that two Anbu were watching the men listening in on everything. I can't believe this. Damn monster. Said Itachi as his eyes blazed with his Sharingan spinning at what he had heard of what they planned for his brother. Easy Itachi. We need to tell Hokage-sama. Leave Jiraiya to Tsunade-sama and Lord Third. Said Shishui. Itachi nods his head. The two then run off to inform Minato of what they have learned. Jiraiya was walking to the tower when he felt a presence near him. A dark presence that he has not felt in years. Not since he peeped on Tsunade years ago. Just then Jiraiya had to dodge a punch at his head. He jumped back and looked at who attacked him to see Tsunade standing in front of him with a dark smirk on her face. Hello pervert. We need to talk. Said Tsunade as she cracked her knuckles. Jiraiya sweats and backs up at the dark look on his former teammate. Hey Tsunade. Why all the hostility? Asked Jiraiya as he looks for a way to escape. Oh, I have a few reasons. All the times you peeped on me when you tried to hide Dan's sperm so that I couldn't carry his children. And let's not forget that you lied to me about Minato and Kishina along with their children. And then there is this whole thing that I learned when I got back to Konoha that my godson Naruto was being treated like crap because of you. Said Tsunade. Her eyes went red in anger at the super pervert in front of her. Her chakra flared in rage and dashed forward fast enough that Jiraiya couldn't dodge. Tsunade punched Jiraiya so hard in the gut that she almost destroyed his stomach with the impact. Ah. Tsunade listened to me. Pleaded Jiraiya. No. I am done listening to you. You have silver tongued your way out of enough problems. Now. Now it is time that you feel the pain of your actions. Said Tsunade. Tsunade then went on to pummel the pervert into the ground for a few minutes. However Jiraiya was able to jump onto a rooftop and tried to run off. Tried being the key word since he was then surrounded by Anbu agents with Hirazan leading them. Jiraiya sees his sensei and widens his eyes. Sensei. Said Jiraiya. Hirazan shakes his head. I am disappointed in you Jiraiya. You have fallen so low. Just as low as Arachimaru. Anbu, take him. Ordered Hirazan. Jiraiya moves from the Anbu, but is then blindsided by Tsunade. Jiraiya tries to fight them off, but with years of inactivity, he was out of shape in this fight. Jiraiya was then hit over the head by a staff held by his sensei. Jiraiya was losing consciousness when he heard his sensei speak. Take him to the tea and I right away. And inform the Hokage that we captured him. Ordered Hirazan. Yes Lord Third. Said the Anbu. Jiraiya was bound and dragged to the tea and I department for interrogation for all that he knows and all that he has done. Hokage Tower. Minato and Kishina are in the office talking to each other about how their children will do in the exams when Itachi and Shishui enter the office. Ah, crow, weasel. How did the operation go in capturing Jiraiya? Asked Minato. It went well Hokage-sama. Lord Third and Tsunade were able to capture him with little difficulty. Said Shishui. But there is one thing that we need to tell you father. We overheard that Jiraiya placed seals on you and Kishina to control the both of you. We believe that he needs to be close to you to activate them or he would have used them earlier. Said Itachi. Minato and Kishina frowned at that news. I see. Head to T&I and, and wait for us there. Kishina and I need to find these seals before Jiraiya tries to use them on us. Said Minato. Hi. Said both Ichihas and left the room. Minato sighs and then speaks. Anbu, leave the room until I call you back. Yes, Hokage-sama. Said the Anbu agents in the room who then left as they were ordered. I think that Jiraiya would go this far just for whatever he has planned. Said Minato. We really should have seen this coming. Jiraiya has lied, killed and ruined lives for so many people. But that is not something we can change. Right now we need to remove the seals that are on us right now before we go and meet with Jiraiya. Said Kishina. Minato nods his head. You're right. Let me look for the seal on you, and then you can find the one on me. Don't just look for one. Jiraiya would have placed more than one to make sure that all his bases are covered. Said Kishina. Minato nods his head again and begins to look over his wife for the seals on her. After a half hour Minato found over eight seals on his wife placed by Jiraiya to control her. 
By the looks on the seals the oldest was placed on her when the Kyubi attacked while the others were placed on her over the years. Ashina while angry she did the same for Minato, and to her shock she found over 13 seals on Minato. Each one were made to control Minato in some manner, but they would also make Minato a puppet to Jiraiya, should the seals had been activated. After that the two went to the T&I department to find out what Jiraiya was planning for Naruto and their children. T&I department. Minato and Kishina walks toward where Jiraiya was locked up. Here they find Harizen, Tsunade and Ibiki waiting for them along with Crow, Weasel and a detachment of Anbu agents waiting for them. Report. Said Minato. Jiraiya has been locked up tight in his cell. So far he hasn't said anything, but that is due to an injured jaw. Said Ibiki. Good. Tsunade I know that you won't like this, but I need you to heal Jiraiya just enough to talk. But no more than that. Said Minato. You're right I don't like this, but I understand that he needs his jaw to speak. Sigh, fine give me 20 minutes and he will be ready. Said Tsunade as she walks into the cell with four Anbu by her side to keep her safe and to make sure that Jiraiya doesn't escape. Minato then looks to Ibiki and the Anbu in the room. Once me and Kishina enter the cell I want each of you to keep a close eye on the two of us. Should we change in any way or twitch in the slightest? You are ordered to enter and detain us with these seals. Jiraiya has for years placed numerous seals on me and my wife to control us, should we go against us? Should that happen, here is and I want you to take command until our children are finished with the exams and let them look us over to find the seals and destroy them. We can't allow Jiraiya to have any leverage over us. Said Minato. Hi Hokage-sama. Said the Anbu. We will do as commanded father. Thou I don't like it. Said Itachi. Neither do we Itachi-kun. But Jiraiya has been planning this for years. Probably before most of us were born. We would have taken many steps to make sure that this plan doesn't fail. Said Kashina. Agreed. Jiraiya may be a pervert and a fool at times, but he is far from stupid. Be careful Minato, Kashina we just got you back. Said Hiruzen. Don't worry old monkey. We got this. Said Kashina with a smirk. Hiruzen grumbles at the nickname while a few chuckle at it. Tsunade exits the cell a minute later and nods to Minato and Kashina who nod back. Minato and Kashina enter the cell after that with Ibiki and Aid Anbu with them. Once they enter the cell they see that Jiraiya was still bleeding but was stable for an interrogation. Jiraiya looks up to see his student and his wife and grins a bit. He then used hand signs to try to control them. But for a few seconds nothing happened to the shock of Jiraiya and the relief of those watching. Jiraiya tries again and again, but nothing happens. Minato looks at his sensei in anger. You can stop Jiraiya. The seals that would control us are gone. Said Minato. Jiraiya widens his eyes in surprise, anger and fear. Ashina walks over to Jiraiya and grabs him by his face and brings him up to her eye level and glares at the man. You have a lot to answer for towards my son. And I will get everything in that head of yours. One way or another. Said Kashina. Jiraiya couldn't do anything but sweat in fear. Why? Why was everything working against him? Unknown to everyone in the room, someone else was watching with hidden glee. Naruto and his team had been staying in the trees since they got into the forest. Naruto knew the forest better than most other than Anko. They were looking for a team with an earth scroll to match the heaven scroll to pass the test. They had seen a few teams but left them alone since they didn't have the scroll that they were looking for. While it would have been a good idea to take them out of the exams, they decided that fighting so soon would waste energy and give their location away to other teams in the area. Naruto-sama, how much further until we get to the tower? Asked Haku. A few hours from here. The tower is in the center of the forest and it is past a few dangerous areas. Said Naruto. Are there any giant bugs in the area? Asked Fu. A few. Why? Got an idea. Asked Naruto. Yeah. Chimei and I used to use the giant bugs in the forests around Taki to protect us from those that wanted to harm me. Once we get the scroll we need then we can go through the area that has the bugs to cover ourselves from the other teams. Said Fu. Naruto, Haku and Karami nod their heads. Good idea. But like you said we need to find the scroll we need. Come on, there is a river near here. We might find a team to take the scroll from. Said Naruto. The team makes their way deeper into the forest. Unaware that a team was watching them. Is that her? Asked Ataki Shinobi. Yes. It's Fu. They may have covered her face and changed her name, but that is her. Said another Taki Shinobi. Why didn't we tell our Jonin sensei that she was here? Asked the final Taki Shinobi. Because idiot, if we capture her and bring her back to Taki, then we will be promoted to Chunin right off the bat. Plus, once we capture her we can have some fun along the way back to Taki. Said the second Taki Jenin with a grin on his face. Which the other two mimic. Now come on. Let get her and get out of this forest. The Taki team makes their way after Team 12. Of Team 7. Mido, Sakura and Satsuki were making their way through the forest towards the tower. 
They got lucky when an Iowa team tried to corner them for fun, but the Iowa team underestimated the girls and were beaten into the earth. They got the scroll they need to move on to the next part of the exam. Sakura not only grew under Rin, but she also began training with Tsunade as well. Not much right now, some basic heel techniques and a bit of strength training so beating the Iwan in were easy. Seriously, you would think that they wouldn't underestimate us since we're shinobi, but no. They just see a bunch of hot girls that they can try to rape. Idiots. Said Satsuki. I hear ya. But since they did, we got the drop on them, and we now just need to get to the tower. Said Mito. Yeah. Come on let's go. I wanna get out of this forest. It creeps me out. I don't understand how Naruto can live here said Sakura. You heard him Sakura. The villagers didn't really give him a choice. It was either try and stay in the village or deal with the man-eaters in the forest. At least with the man-eaters you know what they want and won't lie to your face. Said Satsuki. Sakura sighs. Yeah I know that. I just wish that wasn't the case for Naruto. He has been my friend for years now and I didn't even know that he lived in this forest. What kind of a friend am I? Mido places a hand on the pink girl. It's fine Sakura. He hid that from you for your protection. If you knew then you would no doubt want to come and see him here. If you did that then you would have been eaten by any one of the animals in the forest, or you could have lead the shinobi to where Naruto was living. And that would have taken away his one safe place. Sakura sighs once again at that. You're right. I just wish I could have done more when we were younger. We all do Sakura. But we can't change that. What we can do here and now is make a better future. Now come on. We should get going. I don't want to deal with any other teams," said Satsuki. The girls nod their heads and went on their way to the tower. Leaving the area while leaving the Iwa team on the ground bleeding. Just then another Iwa team made their way into the area and looked down at the downed Iwa team. Damn. Those girls did a number on these guys. Said a large genin. Of course they did. One is an Achiha, the other is a Senju, and if the info we have is right, then the pink girl has just started training under Tsunade Senju and Rin Achiha. Said Kuritsuchi. One of the Sanin and a student of the Yande Mo Man, that isn't good. Said another female Iwa Genin. Yeah. Come on. We need to find a scroll. Let's take one from Kiri and move on. Said Kuritsuchi. Why not from one of the Yande children? Asked the male Iwa Genin. Kuritsuchi grins. And not humiliate them in front of their father. Hell no. I want to beat them with their father watching to show that Iwa will be better than them. She then dashes off to find a team to fight. Both of her teammates sigh. She just wants to fight the Yandame's oldest son. Said the female Genin. Yeah. She has a crush on him. I wonder how her grandfather will react. Asked the male Genin. Probably have a heart attack. Said the female Genin. Probably right. Said the male Genin. Hey. Hurry up. I want to get to the next stage already. Yelled Kuritsuchi. Team 11. Menma, Naruko and Natsumi were having a little bit of trouble in the forest. They had already taken down two teams, but they didn't have the scroll they needed to pass. Now they had just killed three massive tigers that wanted to eat them. They made it out of the attack with little injuries, but were tired now. Damn it. Why is this so hard? Naruto can do this with ease, so why are we having such difficulty? Asked Menma. Menma you know why Naruto Nyasen can do this. He lived in this forest for years thanks to the idiots in the village. Said Natsumi with a scowl on her face when she thought about Naruto's treatment in the village. Yeah. Those meanies. I can't wait until we get a piece of Jiraiya for what he did. Said Naruko. You will have to get in line Naruko Nichin. And that line is behind Tusan, Ka-san and Naruto Nyasen. And I don't think we are going to get anything from him once they are done with him. Said Menma. Yeah. I wonder where Jiraiya is right now. Wondered Naruko. Probably peeping on some women in a random village. Said Natsumi. Probably right. Sigh, he gives men a bad name. Come on Nichins we should go find a heaven scroll to move on said Menma. The sisters nod their heads and move out. When they left a team of Kinoichi entered the area. Hmm. Said Shizuka. What is it Shizuka-sama? Asked one of the other Kinoichi. It's nothing. Said Shizuka. It's about the boy that got your attention in the first exams isn't it? Asked the other Kinoichi. Maybe it was Ashiya. Said Shizuka. But what about him makes you think that he could be a good husband? What about the boy's brother? Asked Ashiya. That is why I wanted to look into the Yandame's youngest son. But in doing so we learned that the oldest son wasn't well liked in the village for some reason. But instead of hating the village he still wishes to protect it. He continues to grow my interest. Now let's move. Ashiya, Bashu let's go. Said Shizuka. The other two Kanoichi nod their heads and move after their leader. Team 12. Naruto and his team were near the river drinking some water. As they do they wait for the team that was following them to appear. Naruto. Asked Fu. 
Yes, Chimay? Asked Naruto. Fu's cover for the exams was using her Biju's name to hide her identity. Can we deal with those idiots now? They haven't left us alone, and it is getting annoying. Said Fu. Sure. Okay, morons. You can come out now. Said Naruto. The Taki Shinobi enter the area with scowls on their faces. So you noticed us? Said the lead Taki Shinobi. Of course we noticed you. We just didn't care about any of you. Said Naruto. Kurami, Fu and Haku giggle at the angry looks on the Taki Shinobi. The Taki Shinobi growl at Naruto. Shut up. Now hand over Fu to us right now. She needs to go back to Taki with us. Said the lead Taki Genin. Naruto, Fu and Haku glare at them. Fu could feel that Jimei was glaring at the Taki Genin. I don't know what you're talking about, but I think that you all should leave. Now. Said Naruto. Don't lie to us. We know that girl with you is Fu. She may be wearing a mask, but she didn't change her hair color, and that Biju bitch has mint green hair. Now hand her over and we will leave you alone. Said the Taki Genin. Fu glared at the Taki Genin, but then shook in rage when she recognized the one yelling. I know you. You were that bastard Zuna who tried to rape me when I was sick and couldn't fight back. I thought that the bugs got you. Said Fu since she knew hiding herself was beyond this point. I got away by the skin of my teeth. Now I will make you my bitch. It's time to go home. Said Zuna. I am home. This place has been treating me better than when I was in Taki. At least they let me stay within the village. Yelled Fu. Something that a freak like you don't deserve. Yelled Zuna. I am not a freak. I am a human being, and I won't let you or anyone else try to tell me otherwise. Yelled Fu. Just then a loud sound began to emanate from Fu. It sounded like a cicada chirping, but then it grew louder and louder. The Taki Nin began to cover their ears in pain, but Naruto, Haku and Karami weren't affected by the sound. Just then the eardrums of the Taki Nin burst with blood flowing out. The sound stopped with Fu panting but was still able to stand upright. She began to walk towards the down Genin while she took out her twin daggers. Damn you monster. I knew that you are a freak. Said Zuna. I told you. I am no freak. That sound was my soul, something that you and those from Taki have told me time and time again that I never had. But it doesn't matter anymore. You aren't getting out of this forest. Said Fu. Zuna went wide eyes at that. He then looked to Naruto and Haku. Hey. Stop her. She is going to kill us. Yelled Zuna. Haku and Naruto crossed their arms. Yeah and? Asked Naruto. Why should we stop her? She has every right to put you three in the ground for how you treated her back in Taki. If you didn't want this then you should have been nicer to her before. Said Haku. Yeah what Haku-chan said. Besides if I stopped Fu then I would be a hypocrite. So go ahead Fu. Do what you need to do. Said Naruto. Thanks, Naruto-kun. Said Fu with a smile that Anko would approved of. The Taki Genin didn't last another minute as Fu tore into them. She unleashed all the rage and hate that she had on the village of Taki onto the three Genin. The rotten food that she was given, the poor houses that she was forced to live in, the cold nights she had to endure to the numerous rape attempts that Taki Shinobi and civilians tried on her. She made them feel all the pain that she had to feel because of something that was beyond her control. By the time she was done there was nothing left of the Taki Shinobi to send back to the village. There wasn't enough to satisfy the smallest animal's hunger, not even a mouse. Who panted as she was coated in blood from head to toe. She felt like all the pain and horror that she had to deal with had washed away from her soul. She then fell to the ground on her knees as the adrenaline was wearing off. Naruto, Haku and Karami walked over to her and found her awake but panting heavily. You okay Fu? Asked Naruto. Fu nods her head at Naruto and looks into his eyes and has a look in them that has Jimei shivering in his prison. Naruto looks up and sees that the sun was about to set and they needed to get to some shelter for the night. Come on girls. My home here in the forest is nearby. We can stay there for the night and resume to the tower in the morning. Said Naruto. Agreed. It is unfortunate that the Taki team didn't have the scroll we needed. Said Haku. Naruto nods and picks Fu up and the team makes their way to Naruto's hidden home. Once there Naruto places Fu on the bed and took out some preserved food for his team. Haku had gotten water for everyone which Naruto was drinking when Fu walked over to Naruto and grabbed his shirt. Naruto raised an eyebrow and looked to Fu. But before he could ask a question Fu kissed Naruto on the lips. Haku and Karami were wide-eyed as Fu kissed Naruto. After a full three minutes of kissing Fu allows Naruto to breathe again. But what Fu says next was shocking. Naruto, Haku and Karami were shocked by that and looked at Fu with wide eyes. I'm sorry but what did you say Fu? Asked Naruto. She then grabbed Naruto by his collar and dragged him to the bed while taking off her clothes. Haku and Karami looked at each other. Did that just happen? Asked Haku. Yes. Yes it did. You know what we need to do now right? Asked Karami. Haku tilted her head. No. 
What is it? We joined them, duh. Yelled Karami. She then turned into her human form and began to drag Haku into the bedroom to have fun with Naruto. Haku was trying to stop Karami but was unable to escape. Wait. I'm not ready. Yelled Haku. Yes you are. Now come on. We don't want to get behind Funao do we? Yelled Karami with a mad gleam in her eyes. Haku could do nothing but let the crazy fox Biju drag her into the room with Naruto and Fu. Demate. Demate was making their way to an old hollowed out tree to rest for the night. Just then Hinata shook violently. She looked deep into the forest and emitted high levels of killing intent. So much so that a few bears that wanted to attack her and her team ran away from the angry Hayuga. What is wrong Hinata? Asked Shino. Someone has gotten ahead of me. Said Hinata cryptically. She then walked into the tree to plan her revenge for whoever got ahead of her with Naruto. Shino and Kiba were confused and shocked by the shy Hayuga's attitude. What is wrong with Hinata? She has never acted like this. Said Kiba. I do not know. What I do know is that I would not get in her way. The consequences would be dire. Said Shino. Team 7. Team 7 had just found a great place to sleep for the night and were making traps to protect themselves during the night. Just then both Sakura and Satsuki felt a twinge of jealous rage course through their bodies. Mido noticed this. What is it you two? Are you okay? Asked Mido. Sakura and Satsuki didn't answer but looked at each other and nodded. They then went on to make highly dangerous traps that could kill the most experienced Jonin with ease. All the while the two were muttering about ways to get even with the one who got ahead of them. Mido watched with a sweat drop as her two teammates worked on the traps. She then sighs and looks toward the village. I need to ask Ka-san what this is all about because I am so confused right now. Said Mido. Giri. Debuza was in the middle of interrogating a captured nin for info when he felt a twinge of overprotective fatherly impulses. He growled and took his anger out on the poor soul in front of him. When he realized that he killed the captured nin he called out. Let me a fresh one in here. This one didn't give me anything. Roared Zabuza. As he waited for his next victim. When I see that brat again Haku better be pure or I swear his head is going up on my mantle. Thought Zabuza. When the next nin was brought and they were used as a scapegoat and practiced to what Zabuza would do to Naruto should anything happen to Haku. Kanoha Messenger Birds Depot. Bakashi had just entered the housing for all the messenger birds in Kanoha. He had written a letter to Taki about Fu being in Kanoha as one of its shinobi. While he wants to have the girl as a weapon under Lord Danzo's command, Lord Jureya has explained that the root program won't allow her to be used in such a manner due to the biju in her. Bakashi placed the message on the bird's foot and told it to fly to Taki. After watching the bird fly away he left for home to wait for his team to return from the forest as victors. As he walks home, he misses that the bird was taken down to the ground by another bird. While the messenger bird was injured it wasn't killed. The other bird lands on the shoulder of an Anbu agent. The Anbu agent pets his summon on the head for a job well done and pocketed the message and went to Tiandai to inform the Hokage that the message to Taki was taken care of. Forest of Death following morning. Naruto had just woken up in his home away from home in the Forest of Death. He then feels some weight on him, and when he looks he widens his eyes when he sees not only Kurami naked, but also Haku and Fu in his bed as well. He then remembers just what happened last night. Naruto plants his head on his pillow and looks to the ceiling. Oh fucking crap. I just know so many people are going to kill me. I just know it. Thought Naruto. Naruto shook his head and got out from under the girls and made breakfast for them. After the girls woke up, with Haku blushing like no tomorrow while Fu and Karami had bright smiles on their faces, Team 12 went on their way out to find the scroll that they needed. Just as the team were about to enter an open field they heard a loud shout. Help! yelled a female voice. Naruto and the girls ran to where the voice came from to find a red-haired girl with glasses over her eyes running from a bear. Naruto summoned an Alpha Ursa Grimm to scare the bear away. Are you okay? asked Fu. The girl caught her breath and looked up to the team. Yes I am okay. Thank you for saving me. Why did that bear want to kill you? Asked Haku as she healed a few wounds on the girl. DRR. My stupid teammates thought that it would be funny to hurt that bear's children. After the mother bear killed my team she tried to kill me. I ran as fast as I could to get away when you saved me. Said the girl. But your teammates do not know that old saying, leave sleeping bears where they lie. Asked Fu since even she knew not to mess with a mother bear. Apparently not. Said the girl. Well at least that you are safe. Said Naruto as he walked over after sent the Ursa away. The girl blushed at Naruto's face. Excuse me. Do you have the scroll that your team had? Asked Haku. Yes I do. I wasn't about to let those idiots hold it. It's an earth scroll. Here you can have it. Said girl. Great. We need that to move on. Said Fu who grabbed the scroll and put it away. 
The girl then remembers something from the first exam and looked to Naruto. Um or by chance in Yuzumaki? Asked the girl. I am on my mother's side. Why do you ask? Asked Naruto. The girl smiled. Because I am in Yuzumaki too. My name is Karen Yuzumaki. Naruto and his team widens their eyes at that. Naruto sensed that she really is in Yuzumaki. Naruto then brought Karen into a hug which she returned while she let out a few tears. After a few minutes the two Yuzumakis let go. It is nice to meet you Karen. What village are you from? Asked Naruto. Karen flinches at the question but answered. I was from grass, but I ran off after the village not only got my father killed, but worked my mother to death. They used her healing abilities to the point that she dropped dead while working, and my father was given dangerous missions solo with little pay and even less time to rest. They then used me to replace my mother as the village's primary healer. I ran off and was found by Rachimaru to be used as a spy for him and a few others. She answered with tears falling down her face. She then showed them the bite marks on her arms and legs. This horrified the team, even Karami. Naruto looked absolutely furious that his family was treated like this. I swear. When I get my hands on the cage of grass, I am going to rip his legs off and throw him and his severed legs in a deep hole and leave him there and tell him to eat his legs if he wants to live. No one does this to my family. Thought Naruto. Don't worry Naruto-kun. Karen is with us now. Minato can classify Karen as dead and she can stay here in the village with her true family. Said Karami through the link that she has with Naruto. Naruto calms Karen down along with Fu and Haku. It's going to be okay Karen. You're with family now and we will help you. You mean it? Asked Karen with hope in her eyes. I promise. Said Naruto. Karen nods her head. But what about Orochimaru? He won't let me go so easily. Plus, I have two friends under his control. I can't leave them with him. And one of them is in Yuzumaki too. Naruto was about to answer when he and Karami felt something far off. A Vylora that his grim senses could pick up with ease. Naruto looked to the distance and narrows his eyes. Haku, Fu take Karen and head towards the tower. I will meet you there later. Said Naruto. What is it Naruto-sama? Asked Haku. Orochimaru. I can sense his vile aura in the forest. And I can tell that he is up to something. I want you to leave while I look into it. Said Naruto. No don't. He is too powerful for you to fight him. Said Karen who didn't want to lose her newfound family. Don't worry Karen. I will be fine. Said Naruto. He then dashed off into the forest. The girls watch as Naruto and Kurami dash off to find Orochimaru with worry in their eyes. Come on girls. We need to move on to the tower. Naruto said that he would meet us there. Said Fu. Aku and Karen nod their heads and head on out to the tower. All the while hoping that Naruto will be okay. Team 13. Sai was on the ground bleeding lightly, but had to hold his broken arm. Sakuri was out with a head wound and two broken legs. While Sasuke was in the clutches of Orochimaru and had just gotten bitten by the man and had a mark on his neck. How disappointing Sasuke. I was told that you were a powerful shinobi. As you are now, you will never be stronger than Itachi or your father Fugaku. Said Orochimaru. Sasuke glares at Orochimaru. I will be stronger than Itachi. He isn't even a pure-blooded Icha. Just the son of a whore and a stupid blonde bastard. I will kill all of them and show my father my greatness. I know that you will. I have given you a taste of power and in time you will come to me for more. Said Orochimaru as he dropped Sasuke to the ground. Just as Orochimaru was about to leave he jumped out of the way of multiple snakes being sent at him. Ah hello Anko dear. I see that you still hold that feudal grudge against me. Said Orochimaru. Anko was on a nearby tree glaring at her former master. It is not a feudal grudge. I will kill you. Yelled Anko. She then dashed at her tormentor with snakes and kunai at the ready to kill him. Orochimaru dodges with ease and a smile. Oh poor sweat Anko. You will never beat me. He then went through hand signs, but to his surprise, Anko wasn't on the ground screaming in pain. Anko grins when she sees the surprised look on his face. Hoping to hurt me with your stupid seal. Good for me that Hokage-sama and his wife was able to remove the seal on me. Now your vile mark is gone from my skin and I will remove you from this world. Orochimaru frowns at that. I see. Well then, I had best mark you once again. But before he could try to mark Anko with a new seal, he had to dodge a massive white snake with red eyes and bone-like armor on its head. Orochimaru was surprised to see such a snake. I must admit Anko. This is a different snake than what you normally use. Said Orochimaru. That one isn't mine. Said Anko since she was just as surprised. No, it is mine. Said Naruto as he was on the top of a black snake head that was attached to the white head with Karami not seen. Naruto. Said Anko. Well, well. The Yandame's oldest. I see that the reports about you having a unique summon wasn't a lie. 
wolves, bears, even creatures that most thought were just myths, and now even snakes. Just what kind of summon do you have? Asked Orochimaru. Naruto just glares at Orochimaru. He then makes three shadow clones and has them take Sai, Sakuri and Sasuke out of the area. Sai was the only one still awake since Sasuke passed out after Anko showed up. Interesting. You would help them even though two out of three of them hate your guts. I can't help but wonder why. Asked Orochimaru. Despite that, they are still Konoha Shinobi. I won't leave them with the likes of you. Said Naruto as his King Tejidu began to hiss at Orochimaru. Orochimaru chuckles. How amusing, the most hated man in the village still tries to show everyone that he isn't a monster. That is where you are wrong. I am a monster, but one created by the village's hatred. The deference from you and I is that I still hold on to my humanity. Said Naruto. What good is humanity to godhood? It doesn't matter. But since you are here, I might as well deal with you and the Kayubi inside of you. Said Orochimaru. Naruto grins. It seems that you haven't heard. I haven't heard what? Asked Orochimaru. He then sensed something behind him, but was unable to dodge the full attack and got a huge gash on his arm. He then had to jump back when the Black King Tejidu almost bit his head off, but then switched with a mud clone when the white head bit into him. Orochimaru held his arm and glared at what dared to harm him, but widened his eyes when he saw a fox with nine tails standing next to Naruto with blood on its teeth. Hayubi. Breathed out Orochimaru. He then knew that he was out of his league and dashed out of the area. No. Damn it. He got away again said Enko. He hasn't yet. Said Naruto. Naruto then put his hand on the blood from Orochimaru and summoned another Grim. This one looked like a fusion with a man and a horse. Its arms were longer than a normal man and had a horn mask over its face and like his brethren had bone-like armor over its body. Find the owner of this blood. And hunt him down. Said Naruto as he held out the blood to the Kukulavi. The Kukulavi smelled the blood and let out a loud scream and ran off to find the owner on the blood. After it ran off both Naruto and Anko could hear the sounds of other Gen and team screaming in fear of the beast. Anko grins as the Kukulavi runs off. Damn Gaki. Am I glad that you are on our side. Naruto grins right back. Damn right. He then sensed something else nearby. Damn. I have to go Anko. My team needs my help. It seems that Orochimaru has a few pawns left in the forest. Also, I wasn't able to let anyone know without letting the spy know, but Kabuta works for Orochimaru. Me and Karami smelled the scent of snakes and a sterile lab. Agaki. Go and help your team. Said Anko as she dashes off to let the Hokage know of what happened in the forest. Karami returns to a normal fox eyes and jumps onto Naruto's neck as he rides the King Tejidu to where his team is. Of Team 7, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. Most of the genin from Kanoha was here fighting off not only two members of the Odo team, since the girl, named Kin, joined the Kanoha genin, since she was friends with Karen. Fighting besides the other two Odonin are the other two teams from Taki trying to get Fu back, two grass teams that wanted Karen back and a team from Iwa that wanted to kill the Yandame's children. Sai was the only member of his team awake but was failing to stay awake due to the pain that he was in. Mitsumi, Haku, Sakura and Mido was doing everything that they could to help him, Sakuri and Sasuke of their injuries. Lee was also in pain from an unseen attack from the Odonin with a humpback but was still on his feet. Hand over Fu. She needs to return to Taki for her crimes yelled one of the Taki Genin. And had over Karen. She needs to fulfill her duty back in grass. Yelled a grass Genin. Fuck you both. I won't be going back to Taki ever. And Karen isn't going back to be used like some slave to those vile monsters. Yelled Fu. Bam straight. Karen is family and we stand with family. Yelled Menma with a Rasengan in his right hand and a kunai in his left. Yeah. Now back off. Yelled Naruko as her chains were at the ready to fight off the other teams. Then you traitor. Orochimaru-sama will gut you himself. Yelled Dosu. I don't care. Orochimaru is a monster. I would have run off sooner if I could. Yelled Kin. This isn't good. Niji, is there anything else nearby that we need to worry about? Asked Tenten. No. At least not yet. But we need to leave before that changes. Said Niji. We can't yet my friends. The other teams need our help. Said Lee. Thanks for the help Lee. Said Satsuki. Niji grumbles, but he knows that he is outnumbered right now. Just as the enemies were about to attack, they were attacked by a large swarm of insect-like creatures. The insects were small, but they worked together with teamwork and came down on the enemy teams. The Kanoha Genin were shocked to see this, but they first thought that it was one of the Aburam clan members. The only ones to survive were both Odonin, a single Taki Genin and an Iwanin, but they were all injured heavily. The creatures put themselves between the Kanoha Nin and the other Genin. What are these things? Asked Niji. He didn't even see them coming, and he had his Byakugan activated. 
Menma, Naruko and Natsumi smile. Niasen. Naruto entered the area from the shadows near his fellow genin. Hey guys. I see that you have this handled. Said Naruto. Damn you. How dare you get in the way. Yelled the Iwanin. Naruto just glares at the Iwanin. The only reason you say that is because most of Iwa still has a grudge against our father for winning the last war. Your father killed mine. I will avenge him by killing you and your sibling. Yelled the Iwanin. I doubt it. Said Naruto. Just then Naruko's chains grabbed the Iwanin by his neck and with a twist, snaked his neck. The Iwanin fell to the ground dead with a shocked look on his face. The Taki Genin tried to get up but was bleeding heavily. He glared at Fu and Naruto. He tried to grab a kunai, but had his hand was pierced by a dagger thrown by Fu. She dashed forward and slit the Taki Genin's throat, making him bleed to death. The Odonin seeing that they weren't going to win tried to make their escape. But Naruto was able to bind them up with his chakra chains. After knocking them out Naruto placed them in sealing scrolls for transport, but he did take the sound bracer that Dosu had on his arm. Is everyone okay? Asked Naruto. We are okay Naruto. A few bumps and bruises but we're in one's piece. Said Ino. Yeah thankfully. Said Choji. Naruto nods his head and walks over to his team and Karen and Kin. You okay? Asked Naruto to Kin and Karen. We are good Naruto. I am just glad that Kin is safe. Said Karen. But we still need to help Teaya said Kin. We will. But for now we need to get to the tower. Does everyone have the scrolls that they need to pass? Asked Naruto. Yep. Got ours this morning. Said Ino. Did ours yesterday. Said Mido. We have ours. Got the drop on Akiri team. Said Tenten. We still need ours. We just haven't had any luck. Said Menma. Kin digs into her pocket and hands Menma an earth scroll. Here. I don't need it. Said Kin. Menma smiles at her. Thanks. It seems that we are all ready to move. So can we leave now? I wish to get out of here before more people show up. Said Niji. Naruto nods his head. Let's go. Follow me. I know where the tower is. We should reach it within the hour if we move through the trees. The Kanoha Genin and the two extra Genin make their way through the trees to the tower. After 40 minutes they made it to the tower. After reaching the tower, they read a message on the wall and opened the scrolls. The scrolls exploded and from the smoke came the senseis of the teams except for Kashina. Haruka came out for Team 12 since Kashina was still trying to make Jiraiya talk. Karen and Kin were taken into the Hokage for debriefing and for safety. The teams were told to wait in the tower for the next three days for the next part of the exams to begin. Naruto hung out with his friends and even talked with the other teams. He did note that Kabuto and his team hadn't made it to the tower, so he must have been captured by the Anbu agents. Naruto also wondered how his Kukulavi was doing with Orochimaru. By the end of the five days, only Team 13 was not allowed to move on, due to Sai and Sakuri's injuries much to Sasuke's rage. Other than the Kanoha Genin, a team from Iwa, Suna, Kumo and Natashiko, had passed the exams. With the reveal that so many passed the Genin had to now fight multiple opponents to move on the final round of the exams. Only the top eight would move on and prove to others if they had what it took to have the Chunin rank. Okay, rats. We will soon decide who will go first. It will be a random draw. So without further ado let's see who will go first. Said Anko. Everyone looked up to the wheel that would show who would be fighting first. The wheel landed on Naruto Uzumaki Namikas and Kankuro no Sabaku. Naruto sees this and grins and jumps to the ground below. With Kankuro right behind him. Just then one of Naruto's old bodyguards, a man by the name of Hei Jeko, jumped into the arena. He was close to losing his place in the Anbu unit due to a bad cough, but thanks to Tsunade, he was back to full health. Everyone. I am the proctor of the preliminaries of this part of the exam. I am giving you this one warning. If you disobey me, I will stop the match and make the other fighter the winner. So when I say stop you better stop. Now are both fighters ready? Asked Hade. Naruto made a dust blade of lightning and readied himself. Well Kakuro grabbed his puppet off his back. Ready? Said both fighters. Hade nods his head and brings his hand down. Hajim. But this the preliminaries have begun. D and I department. Ureya was chained the wall of his cell. He was bleeding heavily from his wounds that he got from Kashina and Minato. Tsunade refused to heal him any more than just to make sure that he stayed alive. He was just striped of not only his Sanin status, but also lost the Toad contract and his connection to Senjutsu, and felt like he aged by 10 years. While Minato and Kashina didn't get anything out of him thanks to a hidden seal on him that would make him unable to answer their questions, he was still a prisoner of Konoha T and I. Ureya glared at the floor. He couldn't understand what the hell was happening. Why was this happening? He, Danzo and Fugaku's grandfather had planned everything perfectly. 
Everything was working fine for years, but in the past two months everything was failing faster than he could put it back together. He knew that someone was causing this to happen. But like all great minds he has a few backup plans in place. The Akatsuki are in place at Rain, and Danzo has the puppet rule in grass. If my info is right then Orochimaru will attack Kanoha during the Chunin exam finals. He has Suna in his back pocket which means the Ichibi as well. When Orochimaru attacks, I will make my escape. I just need to hold out until then. And when I escape I will find the one who has made the plan so much harder. Thought Jiraiya. Then from a dark corner of the cell came a mocking voice. Well, what do we have here? A fallen San and locked up in his own village for treason. Oh Jiraiya, what a fool you are. Said the voice. Jiraiya looks over to see a man wearing a black cloak, silver chains around the man's neck. Jiraiya was unable to see his face, but could tell that this man was enjoying his misery. Who are you? How did you get in here? Asked Jiraiya. Tuckle. To answer your second question first, there are few things that can stop me Jiraiya. As to the first, call me Lindum. Lindum? Asked Jiraiya. Yup. You know I have to say I am surprised that you are still awake after the beating that you got from Kashina and Minato. But that is what you get for hurting their son. I am shocked that Tsunade hasn't castrated you yet for what you have done. Said Lindum. Jiraiya growls. If you are just here to laugh at me then just leave. Lindum shakes his head. How you got the title of Sanin is beyond me. Oh well. I am sure Naruto will do better with the title in a few years. Maybe he will be a better spy master than you and make sure that his spies aren't so easy to spot. He said with a grin. Jiraiya widens his eyes and then narrows at Lindum. You. Snarled Jiraiya. You did this didn't you? You made Minato and Kashina leave sooner than I wanted them. You gave Naruto those powers that he doesn't deserve. You were the one who has been tearing apart my plans for months aren't you? Lindrum keeps the grin. Yes to the first, no to the second and somewhat to the third. I did mess up your plans a little bit, but that was mostly someone else. I did help send Minato and Kashina here sooner true, and when they did someone else jumped onto that wagon to help Naruto. Damn you. Do you know what you have done, you have interfered in a plan that has been cultivated for years. Yelled Jiraiya. Lindrum only chuckles. Oh stupid Jiraiya. Allow me to let you in on a little secret. Even if you went with that plan of yours, the outcome would have been the same. The only difference here is that I sped up the timeline a bit. What do you mean? Asked Jiraiya. Come now Jiraiya. Did it not occur to you that messing with not one, but two prophecies wouldn't get you into hot water? I mean you not only tried to control a war between two brothers that has been going on for centuries, but you even tried to mess with the champion of Kami for God's sake. Did you not think that others beyond you wouldn't notice? Or even let you get away with it? Asked Lindum. It doesn't matter. I know of the prophecy and that the champion of Kami will change the world. I will not let that happen unless Konoha alone comes out on top. Not Iwa, not Suna and definitely Izushio when it was around. Only Konoha has the right to exist in this world. Said Jiraiya. Lindrum laughs out loud at the foolishness of the former Toad Sage. Oh you poor old fool. You still don't get it do you? The great prophecy wasn't meant to be told to humans. And you are the perfect example of why that is. But it no longer matters. The prophecy has changed from what it once was. And this time you won't be able to stop it or change it. Said Lindrum with an evil grin. Gureya was sweating in fear at that. What do you mean? I mean that the prophecy has been altered thanks to your interference. You want to know the new prophecy? Asked Lindrum with the evil grin never leaving his face. Gureya gulps and nods his head. Lindrum chuckles at Gureya and nods his own head. He then began to speak. The champion of Kami, full of light and darkness. With beasts of fear and dread. Shall show his enemies no mercy. The ten great beasts that have been shackled will be set free from their prisons one by one. The great mother cured of her curse will help ready the champion for the arrival of her kin. By his side will the queen of monsters stand. His greatest warriors will have eyes of lilac and silver. Two worlds will be saved from the coming ruin of world eaters. In time two worlds will one become. None will stand in his way, and those that do will not see the passing day. For the champion is king of Grimm. Gureya is sweating even more at that prophecy. This was not like the last one. There was nothing about him in it nor anything that would help him understand how to control it. But just before Jiraiya could think on it more Lindrum spoke up. Will I best be on my way? Said Lindrum as he made his way to the door. But stopped just before it and turned to Jiraiya. Oh one last thing. Lindrum was right in Jiraiya's face a second later. Jiraiya was shocked by the speed, but his heart almost stopped when he saw the red eyes of Lindrum. I would stay alive Jiraiya for as long as you can. For when you die, someone has some plans for you in the afterlife. And she is angry with you. Said Lindrum. Jiraiya snaped open his eyes in shock and fear. He looks around the room to see that he is still in his cell in T and I. He breaths in heavy breaths to calm himself down. 
Just a nightmare. I can fix this. I have to. I will see this plan work. No matter what. Thought Jiraiya. Jiraiya went back to sleep hoping that the nightmare that he just had wasn't a premonition of things to come. Unaware that Lindrum is very real and was just outside his cell grinning ear to ear. Tuckle. Oh I love doing that to fools and stupid people. I gave Jiraiya the new prophecy and he thinks that it was just a nightmare. Foolish Jiraiya. Time to move on and see what happens next. Said Lindrum. He then disappears in flash of silver light. Naruto was in the arena with Kankuro and were in about to fight each other to move on to the next round. Both Genin walked around each other waiting for the right time to strike. Kankuro struck first, he had his puppet try to grab Naruto, but Naruto was quick and slashed at the puppet with his lightning dust blade. The energy went through the puppet to the strings and into Kankuro. Kankuro screamed in pain as he wasn't expecting that. Kankuro tried to reattach his strings to his puppet, but before he could try he found the lightning blade at his neck. Kankuro looked up at the Namikas with sweat falling from his face. Yield. Said Naruto. Kankuro looks down and nods his head. Kankuro yields. Naruto wins. Said Hayate. Kankuro is helped up by Naruto who smiles at him. Nice fight. You did well with your puppet. Kankuro chuckles. Thanks but I still have a way to go before I be the best puppet user in Suna. And I wish you well in that endeavor. Said Naruto with a smile and a hand extended to the teen. Kankuro grins and shakes Naruto's hand. Up above the genin sat Hiruzen. He was here due to Minato and Kishina needing to make Jiraiya crack and tell them everything that he knows. Currently the two are at the Namika's compound trying to make a seal that will find and break the hidden seal on Jiraiya that stops him from talking. Hiruzen smiles at Naruto since he was able to win with ease and that it shows his growth. He is happy that his grandson and all, but Blood is finally happy with his life and that he has his family. Okay everyone let's see who will fight next. Said Haid. The wheels spun to show that Naruto would fight again, and his opponent would be Kiba. A few adults raised an eyebrow at that while Naruto jumped back into the arena with Kiba and Akamaru right behind him. Be okay to fight Naruto. You did just fight before. Said Kiba. He wanted a good fight with his friend and not one where he was tired from an earlier fight. Don't worry Kiba. I can keep going. If anything you should be worried about yourself. Said Naruto. He glared at Kiba a bit which made the dog boy sweat. I saw how Naruko looks at you and how you flirted with her. Show me what you got Kiba. Kiba blanched as Naruto got serious. If there was one thing that his father taught Kiba before he passed it was to fear the brothers and father of the girl you wanted to date. For they would likely beat you into the earth and beyond with ease. Naruko blushed when Naruto spoke up about her crush on Kiba. At first she thought that Kiba was just an annoying pervert, but after a joint mission with teammate, Naruko got to see Kiba in a different light when he took a blow for her and helped to pin the bandit leader down that tried to attack her. Hayate grins at Kiba since he had the same problem with Yugao's father when he wanted to date her. He raised his hand and yelled out. Hajim. The Yuzumaki and Inuzuka along with his dog partner rushed towards each other. Naruto grabbed Kiba and slammed him onto the ground while he kicked Akamaru in the head, forcing the dog back. Kiba was quick and jumped back to his feet and punched Naruto in the gut, forcing him back with Akamaru taking a bite of Naruto's arm. Naruto then grew bone blades on his arms, forcing the dog to let go. Naruto shot out some of the bones at Kiba, forcing the boy back. Kiba used an earth jutsu making earth spikes at Naruto to cover his escape. Naruto punched the earth spikes with his bone-covered fist, then grabs the spike and throws it back at Kiba. Kiba screams in fear as the earth spike was coming at his head. It missed but he was tackled by Naruto and began to slash at Kiba with a crystal saber. Naruto blocked an attack from Akamaru and made a shadow clone to deal with the dog while he fought Kiba. Naruto then punched Kiba in the stomach and hit him in the face with the flat side of his saber, sending the dog boy to the ground. Kiba looked up with a bit of blood coming out of his mouth and sees that Naruto isn't even winded. He groans and puts the back of his head on the ground. I yield. Said Kiba. Kiba yields. Naruto wins once again. Said Hayate. Naruto walks over with Akamaru under his left arm and helps Kiba up and hands him his dog. Nice fight. Said Naruto. Thanks. I just wish I did better. Said Kiba. Don't worry. There is always next time. Said Naruto. Kiba nods his head and the two head back up to the stands. When Kiba got back into the stands he got a kiss on the cheek from Naruko for a good job. Kiba blushed but also shivered when he saw the angry glares he got from Naruto and Menma. But Naruko put a stop to that when she bonked her brothers on their heads. Hiruzen smiles when he saw Naruto win his round again and saw the great sportsmanship for his victory. He also chuckled at how he was acting with his sister's protection. But his smile became a frown when he saw the wheel spin once again and land on Naruto for a third time. Hey. Why is that guy going to fight three times in a row? Let someone else go next. Yelled the Mei Lai with Jenin. 
Pei 8 was also annoyed and nodded his head to Anko to find out what the hell was going on. A few minutes later loud screaming was heard from where the wheel was operated. Ah. No. Please stop. My leg doesn't bend that way. And it doesn't go there either. Yelled the wheel operator. There was a sickening sound heard a second later. Like something was pulled into something with suction and a loud pop. Anko came out a moment later with a grin on her face. Sorry about that everyone. The one who was working the wheel just came down with a horrible condition and had to be removed. Don't worry this won't happen again. Now let's see who will be fighting the Namikas since his name is still up. Said Anko with a maniac grin on her face. As the wheel spun a few were curious as to what Anko did. Hey Naruto. You know that Anko woman right? What did she do? Asked Menma. If I had to guess, she most likely gave the guy her special foot and ass treatment. Said Naruto. Foot and ass treatment. What kind of technique is that? Asked Natsumi. The kind where she bent the guy's leg and shoved it up the guy's ass herself. Said Naruto with a grin on his face. Everyone, other than Gara, blanched when they heard that. They then looked to Anko and saw that she was looking back at them with a similar grin on her face. They all make a mental note to stay away from her. The wheels stop to show that Naruto would fight Shizuka of Natashiko. The Kanoichi jumps down into the arena with grace that gets most of the Malin in to blush at her figure. Naruto jumps down a moment later. I hope that you can give me a proper fight Namikas. Well you may have fought twice before I expect the very best from you. Said Shizuka. Naruto makes bone armor on his fists and gets into a fighting stance. Don't worry. I will. Said Naruto. Pei 8 raises his arm and yells. Hajim. Both fighters move in close and begin the fight with Tajutsu trying to overpower the other. Naruto had to admit that Shizuka is an impressive fighter and Shizuka was also impressed. Both then tried to fight each other with wind jutsus that made a massive tornado that almost took out a few other fighters in the arena. When the wind died down Shizuka brought down an axe kick that shattered the ground when it missed Naruto. Naruto brought up crystal spikes and threw crystal shuriken at Shizuka which she was able to dodge with little difficulty. Naruto grinned and used his chakra chains to bind Shizuka. Shizuka tried to dodge the chains, but they were too fast for her and was bound into them. She tried to free herself from them, but she soon realized that her chakra was being sealed and couldn't escape. She looked at her opponent and sighed. I yield. Said Shizuka. Naruto wins. Said Hate. Naruto releases Shizuka from her prison. She gets up and rolls her shoulder and wipes the dirt off her clothes. The two make their way back up into the stands, and Shizuka is met with her teammates and her teacher. You did well Shizuka. Said Takua. Thank you sensei. He is a powerful shinobi. There is little doubt that he will go far in life. Said Shizuka. Is he a good enough husband for you thou? Asked Bashu. Shizuka looks over to Naruto and sees that he is being congratulated for his victories by his friends and siblings. She smiles a bit before answering. I think that he is. But what of the deal with Yurei-sama? Is that not still in play? Asked Shizuka. Don't worry Shizuka. I will talk with the Hokage after the exams are over. Besides I think it would be best to get to know him before you make a real decision. Said Takua. Yes, Sensei. Said Shizuka. I wonder who will go next. Asked Ashiya. The wheel spun to saw that Menma would be going next and Ashiya would be his opponent. When Ashiya saw that she ignored the look she was getting from her teammates and sensei for tempting fate. Quiet. Said Ashiya with a grumble. Which got them to chuckle at her. Both Menma and Ashiya jumped down into the arena. Menma was a little taken back seeing the beautiful red head up close, but he wouldn't let this girl stop him from doing his best. Menma readied his knuckle guards and Ashiya readied her three chakrams for battle. Hajim. Yelled hate. The two dashed forward ready to fight each other. Outside of Kanoha. Anzo was walking with three of his rude Anbu to a meeting with one of his pawns that operate outside of the village. Lord Danzo we have arrived. But Arachimaru is not here sir. Said a rude Anbu. I know. He should be here soon. Said Danzo. A moment later Arachimaru entered the clearing covered in blood and missing his left arm. He had a scowl on his face as he walked towards Danzo. I am here Lord Danzo. My apologies for my lateness. I had to escape that demon brat summon. Said Orochimaru. Anzo looked to the missing limb on Orochimaru. I can see that. What happened? Grr. I planned on sealing the Kyubi's chakra away, but the brat sicked the fox on me. I ran off after seeing the beast, but the Namikas sent another beast after me. A fusion of a man and horse of some kind. I threw almost everything at the damn thing, and it barely slowed down. After losing an arm I used a special seal to send myself to the snake summon world to escape the beast. I see. Can you still fight? Asked Danzo. Arachimaru nods his head. Yes. I just need to get to Odo and switch bodies. I will need to get some info from Kabuto to know how to handle the Namika's brat during the invasion. 
I'm afraid that will be difficult. Said Danzo. What do you mean? Asked Rachimaru. The Budo and Jureya have been captured. They sit in the T&I department. And I only know this due to chance of me going to meet with Minato to try to convince him to see things my way. Said Danzo. And he didn't. Is the Sharingan not working? Asked Rachimaru. It is more likely that Minato and Kishina have made a seal to prevent them from being controlled. I fear that our plans to control the prophecy has failed. So long as we remain within Kanoha that is. Said Danzo. Rachimaru growls when he heard that. Everything that they have been planning is failing now. He even took the fall for Jureya due to his stupidity for the mission. He had been with the plan since just after being taught by Hiruzen years ago, and his work in immortality is the key to allow everyone involved to live forever and rule unopposed by all. And now all that they had done was going south, but for men like Rachimaru and Danzo, they always have backup plans. So I assume that we must rework the plan then? Asked Rachimaru. Yes. During the invasion you must get Jureya and Kabuto out of T&I. We cannot leave them there. The seals on them will keep them quiet, but we mustn't take any chances. While most of the village is focused on you, I and the elders will move unopposed and get out of Kanoha with as many orphans as we can, along with any jutsus that we can grab. Once the invasion is over we will meet up in grass. My pawn there will welcome us, and then we will form an alliance with your forces in Odo after a few months to cover ourselves. Said Danzo. Agreed. But I think that we should advise some members of Iowa and Kumo to join us. Old blood is still heard loudly in Iowa, and I know a few that would love to get a Hayuga or two for the good of Kumo. Said Arachimaru. Danzo nods his head in agreement. A sound idea. I will send out the word to those that wise to help us in this endeavor. Just then a loud scream was heard from the forest along with loud running sounds. Shit. It found me. Go now before it gets here. Yelled Arachimaru. Danzo had his three root Anbu stay to cover his escape, while Arachimaru used the seal to escape to the snake summon world once again. The knuckle of E ran into the clearing looking for its prey and was attacked by the root Anbu. But their weapons didn't hurt the great grim beast. It just pissed it off. It screamed again bursting the ears of the root Anbu and tore one in half, ripped the guts out of the second and had the horse head bite into the head of the last shinobi. The knuckle of E looked around for its prey, it sniffed the air but couldn't track its prey down. Growling in frustration it slammed its fists onto the ground making two craters. It then grabbed the second shinobi and tore off its head. If it couldn't bring back his master the person he wanted then the beast would bring back a consolation prize. Its master might even like it along with the arm of its original target. It then made its way to its master to give him what it had found. Arena. The second part of the exams is in full swing. Menma had beaten not only Ashia but also Bashu as well, but he lost to Fu later on. Fu did well against Menma, but lost to Yujito in a later fight due to Yujito willing to use her Biju Charka, while Fu still wanted to hide who she was, since there were some Taki Jonin in the arena who were watching the fights. Aku fraud and lost to Kuritsuchi due to the difference in jutsu types. Kuritsuchi is an expert in lava jutsus, while Haku's ice wasn't strong enough to deal with the lava. Sakura and Ino both took each other out in their fight, much to their chagrin. Naruko had beaten the female Liwanin in her first match, while Natsumi did the same to the male Liwanin, much to the annoyance to Kuritsuchi. But the sisters fought each other and came to a draw in the end. Damari had fought both Shino and Tenten in combat and had won both rounds, but Naruto had to jump in and save Tenten before she landed back first on Tamari's iron fan. Ara had fought and beat Amoy and Kari in combat with ease, but had to be stopped by Naruto with Karami's help since Gara almost killed them. Samui fraud and won against Satsuki and Mido, but had a difficult fight with each. Lee had fraud both Choji and Shikamaru in combat. Choji did everything that he could to fight the older teen, but even his family jutsu wasn't enough to stop the green spandex wearing teen. Shikamaru didn't even want to fight, but both Naruto and Menma threw Shikamaru into the arena and was told to fight. He sighed, said troublesome and got a kick to the head and then a beating from Ino when he got back into the stands. Now was the last round of the exams, and Hinata was worried since she would be fighting her cousin Niji. She knows that Niji doesn't care much for her due to what happened to his father years ago, but she wouldn't back down. Okay everyone. Time for the last round. Will Hinata Hayuga and Niji Hayuga come down to the arena? Said Haid. Naruto glared at Niji, since he could tell that Niji had a powerful and negative outlook on Hinata. Well Naruto won't interfere with the fight itself, but he will jump in if it goes too far like he did with Tenten's match and with the fights that Gara had. Hey Naruto. You okay? Asked Kiba. I'm worried. Hinata doesn't want to fight her cousin, but I can tell that Niji is going to enjoy this. Said Naruto. Why? Asked Naruko. Years ago Kumo tried to kidnap Hinata. Hiashi killed the Kumo nin that tried but Kumo retaliated and said that Hiashi didn't have any right to kill their delegate. 
Kumo wanted Hiashi as a form of payment, but the Hyuga elders pulled a fast one and had Hiashi's younger twin brother take his place. Niji has blamed Hinata for his father's death since. Said Naruto. How do you know this? Asked Natsumi. I was the one that guided Hiashi to Hinata that night. The Kumo Nin went through the forest of death and I had just made my home there. I saw him struggling with a bag and heard him say to the bag to stop struggling. When I found out that he had Hinata I used my knowledge of the forest to hold the Kumonin at bay and kept flaring my chakra until Hiashi got there. Said Naruto. Damn that sucks. But it wasn't Hinata's fault that her uncle died. Said Menma. Niji doesn't care about that. He just wants payback for the loss of his father. And since he is in the branch family this is his only chance to get it and not get in trouble. Said Naruto. Over with Lee and Tenten they had heard what Naruto said and they became worried. They knew that their teammate hated the main branch of his family, but they never knew the true reason for the hatred. They just hope that Niji doesn't go too far against Hinata. I was also worried for his student. He has tried to steer his students straight, but the damn elders of the Hyuga clan haven't let him do that. It was more like they wouldn't let him help his student be free from that pain, almost like they wanted it to brew and build. The Kumo Genin who heard this flinched a bit when Naruto spoke of that night. That plan was made by the previous leader of Kumo the Sandane Rakage, and it was a major failure, and what made the man's son over, throw him to stop the man's crazy bloodline plans. The current Rakage, while he sees the benefit of bloodlines, doesn't see them as a necessity to be a shinobi or to be strong. The Genin are glad that their current leader isn't like his father, and while the man may be over the top at times, is a better ruler than the previous one. The Nada stood in front of her cousin and the one who she sees as her brother, but flinches when she sees the glare that he is sporting at her. She gets into a fighting stance and waits for the proctor to begin the fight. You should give up Hinata-sama. You are weak and cannot defeat me. Said Niji as he glares at his cousin. I may not be as strong as you Niji Niasen, but I will not back down. Said Hinata. So be it. You won't be walking out of this arena, alive. Said Niji. Hei didn't want to have the two fight, especially with how Niji was acting, but he had a job to do. He would just need to be fast enough to stop Niji when it gets to that point. Pajim? Yelled Hei. The two Hyugas dashed forward to combat each other. But it was clear that Niji was the superior fighter. He had been a genin for a year already, been trained by the best Jutsu fighter in the village, and had his hatred and anger focused by the Hyuga elders. All of this had made Niji a powerful fighter. Anada did her best to move out of the way from Niji, thanks to her lighter frame, and was able to get some good hits on the older Hyuga, but Niji was able to shake them off. Give up. You won't win. Do that and you will be able to leave with your life. Said Niji. Anada was panting with blood coming out of her mouth. I won't do that. I will fight you Niji Niasen. I will not back down. Why do you fight a losing battle? You can't hope to beat the better warrior. Said Niji. I don't care. I will fight you with all my strength. I will save you Niji Niasen. Said Hinata hoping to reach her cousin. But Niji just saw Ed. He dashed forward and unleashed a barrage of attacks on Hinata which she couldn't dodge or block. Hey, had called the fight over, but Niji either didn't hear him or was ignoring him. He just wanted to kill Hinata right here and now. Just as Niji was about to strike Hinata in her heart, he was stopped by a crystal wall. Niji jumped back when crystal spikes almost skewered him, and when he looked to the one that stopped him, he saw the grim red eyes of Naruto glaring at him. Naruto had jumped down to save Hinata when he saw that Niji wasn't going to stop until he truly killed her. Naruto glared at Niji for hurting his first friend. While Naruto wanted to hurt Niji he would help Hinata first. He turned his eyes back to Blue, then went to Hinata and used a bit of his magic to begin healing her, but he wasn't well versed in using healing techniques. Hinata opened her eyes to see Naruto over her healing a bit of her wounds. Naruto-kun? Asked Hinata weakly. Don't speak Hinata-chan. You need to save your strength. Said Naruto. I'm sorry that I didn't do well. Said Hinata. Naruto smiles at her. You did great Hinata-chan. You don't need to apologize. Hinata smiled when she heard that. She then was passed over to the medics that came and took the poor girl to the hospital. Naruto's eyes didn't leave Hinata until she was out of sight, and even then he didn't move. At least until Niji opened his mouth. You shouldn't have interfered. She is a weak shinobi and should have died by my hands. Said Niji. It was in that moment that something snapped within Naruto. Years of hatred and anger had been suppressed inside of Naruto. But he could take it since he had friends by his side like Kiba, Shino, Shikamaru, Choji, Satsuki, Ino, Sakura, Karami and most importantly Hinata. She had been his very first friend in the entire village. She had helped Naruto through his darkest moments before Karami had awakened inside of him and even after that. But when Niji told Naruto that Hinata should die, well. Something had broken free within him. 
Naruto snapped his head to Niji his eyes ablaze with blood red fury and summoned dark energy into his left arm and from it a massive grim hand shot out and grabbed the arrogant Hayuga by his head. Naruto began to squeeze the Hayuga hard, trying to crush the teen's head into paste. Hey 8 guy and a few other jonin tried to get Naruto to stop by either trying to make the giant hand let Niji go or by pulling on Naruto. Naruto. Let him go. I know what he said was wrong, but you can't kill him. Yelled Asuma as he tried to pull Naruto away from Niji. Please Naruto. Don't do this. I know that my student is in the wrong, but you mustn't do this. Pleaded guy trying to get the hand off his student's head. Let him go kid. He isn't worth it. Yelled Hayate. I will not let him get away with saying such things. I will crush the arrogance out of this fool along with his head. Yelled Naruto. His voice was different, almost like a second voice was mixed with his own. Naruto you must stop. What would Hinata think if you did this? Yelled Hiruzen from where he stood. Naruto stopped at those words. He knew that Hinata would be saddened to hear that her cousin was dead and by his hands. He looked at Niji and saw the fear in his eyes and growled at the Hayuga. Naruto let go a moment later and stomped away. Know this Niji. If you try something like this again. Then not even your clan will be able to save your ass. I will not let anyone to hurt my friends or family. Believe it. Spoke Naruto as his voice returned to normal. He then jumped back into the stands. I'm getting too old for this shit. Thought Hiruzen. Most of the genin were shocked and scared of the blonde shinobi. When they saw Naruto snap at Niji they had visions of their own deaths should they anger him. This was for those outside of Konoha, well those from Konoha knew that Naruto cared greatly about his friends, since he had so little as a child. A few Kanoichi were blushing at Naruto's show of power and resolve. Damn. What power. I look forward to matching it. Thought Kuritsuchi with a grin on her face. So cool. Thought Samui with a small blush on her face. Holy shit. What was that Nibi? Thought Yujito. That kitten was the emergence of his dark side. You remember when you had to go to the Biju temple to fight your darkness? Asked Matatabi. Yeah. Wait, are you saying that the Kayubi Jinchiriki just had his dark side awaken, but why now? Thought Yujito. He most likely had his darkness buried deep within him. When his friend was almost killed by her cousin and then was bad mouthed by the brat, the barriers that Blondie put around the darkness broke and was let loose. He will need help to control that darkness or it will consume him. Said Matatabi. I will talk with B Sensei after this. We can't let this happen to a fellow Jinchiriki. Thought Yujito. Shizuka had her eyes track Naruto since he jumped into the arena to save the Hayuga girl and was shocked and surprised by what Naruto had done. Her fellow Kanoichi were scared of the blonde genin, but she wasn't. She knew that Naruto must have cared deeply about the girl, and when the girl's cousin tried to kill her well the end result speaks for itself. Strong and loyal to his friends. Willing to go so far as to risk his place in the finals for his friends. He will make a great husband in time. But I must get to know him better first. Thought Shizuka. Holy damn. That was like Gara when he is asleep. But he just wanted to get to that prick of a Hayuga. I don't blame Naruto for wanting to kill the little bastard. Gara may not care much about me, but he is still my brother, and I will always have his back. Thought Tamari. After everyone calmed down hate spoke up. Okay with this we have our eight finalists. Those being Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, Niji Hayuga, Rock Lee, Gara and Tamari no Sabaku, Samui and Yujito of Kumo, and Kuritsuchi of Iowa. Will the eight of you come down and grab a ball to find out who each of you will face in the third part of the exams? Said Hayate. The eight genin came down and each grabbed a ball with different numbers on them. I have one. Said Naruto. I have four. Said Kuritsuchi as she grumbled that she wouldn't be able to fight Naruto in the first round and would have to wait till the second to fight him. Yosh. I have the number three. Yelled Lee which made Kuritsuchi pale at having to fight the strange genin. Six. Said Samui. Seven. Said Yujito. Eight. Said Gara. I have five. Said Tamari with a smile. Niji gulps when he reads his number. He looks to Naruto and paled when he saw the angry red eyes on the teen. It seems that fate has given me the number two. Said Niji. It seems that fate has turned a blind eye to your plight. Said Naruto with heavy sarcasm. Enough. Now you have a month until the third round. Use that time to get stronger. Good luck. Said Hayate. Hayate left the arena after saying that. The genin began to head towards their senseis with Naruto leaving the arena to the hospital to find out how Hinata is doing. Training Ground 13. Sasuke was fuming as he waited for his sensei. He hated that he couldn't get into the third part of the exams. All because his teammates were injured. Bah. He should be allowed to enter because he is in a chair. As Sasuke had this thought in his head, Kakashi and Sai made their way to Sasuke. Ah good you're here Sasuke. Were you waiting long? Asked Kakashi. Sasuke turned to Kakashi with an angry scowl. 
No I haven't but I am not happy. I should have been in the preliminaries. Why wasn't I let in? Kakashi sighed as he knew this was going to come out of Sasuke's mouth. Kakashi still had very little understanding of what happened in the forest, other than Sakuri in the hospital, and Sai was heavily wounded. Kakashi saw that Sasuke was in the middle of his rant and wasn't going to get anything out of him right now, so he asked Sai for his point of view. Sai what happened in the forest? I thought that you guys would have had an easy time with the second part. Said Kakashi. Sai looked to his sensei with his right arm in a sling. Yes, sensei. We had entered the forest with ease and were looking for an earth scroll. After a few hours we had acquired one, but it was late in the day almost sunset, so we camped out for the night. Once morning came we began our trek to the tower. But just as we were about to make it halfway we were attacked by Arachimaru. Said Sai. Bakashi widened his eye when he heard that. He heard a rumor that Arachimaru was in the forest, but he didn't think that Arachimaru was going to put the cursed seal on Sasuke so soon. Kakashi walks over to Sasuke and looks at the boy's neck and sees that the seal is there. I see. What happened after that? Asked Kakashi as he looks at the cursed seal. Arachimaru took out Sakuri with ease and sent her flying into a tree. She was lucky that she wasn't killed. Sasuke and I tried to attack Arachimaru together, well I tried to back Sasuke up, but he wouldn't let me. Arachimaru then broke my arm and gave the cursed mark to Sasuke. Said Sai. Kakashi sighed at that. What happened next? Anko appeared trying to kill Arachimaru. A moment later Naruto showed up on the head of a giant twin head black and white snake. He then made shadow clones to get the three of us out of the area. Afterwards we were brought to the rest of Team 12 and tried to make it to the tower. But we were attacked by the Odo team as well as two teams from Taki, since they wanted Fu for some reason, two teams from Grass that wanted a red-haired girl that was with Team 12, and an Iwa team that wanted to kill the Yandame's children. We had back up with Team 7, 9, 10, 11, and the Odo Kanoichi had joined our side, since she was friends with the redhead from Grass. Said Sai. Interesting. I was still has the grudge with Sensei it seems. What happened after that? Asked Kakashi. The groups fought each other until Naruto appeared with a swarm of black and red bugs. The bugs killed all but a genin from Taki and Iwa, while the two Odo genin also survived the attack. But the Taki genin was killed by Fu, while the Iwa genin had his neck snapped by Naruto. Naruto knocked out the Odo genin and placed them into sealing scrolls. He handed them to some Anbu agents once we arrived at the tower. Said Sai. Bakashi nodded his head as he now understood the situation better. But his thought was interrupted by Sasuke. What does that matter? I need to get into the finals to get stronger. Yelled Sasuke. Bakashi sighed at that. Sasuke, like it or not there is nothing that can be done about that right now. The elders used every part of their silver tongues just to get you as my student again. Besides, you and your team didn't finish the second part of the exams. As it stands there is no way to get you into the finals. I can't help you with that, but don't get too worked up over it. I have a plan to help you get stronger during the month before the finals, and for when the finals come to a close. I promise to you Sasuke that you will be stronger than anyone in the world soon, stronger than Minato, Fugaku and most importantly stronger than Naruto. Sasuke growled when he heard that he wasn't able to enter the finals, but he smirked when he heard that he was going to be stronger than anyone especially Naruto. Good. When will we be to train? Asked Sasuke. In a few days. I need to get a few things ready and make sure that I can take you out of Konoha for a short time. It will be difficult, but I think that I can convince Sensei to let the two of us go so long as we are back before the finals. Said Kakashi. Sasuke nods his head and makes his way back to the Ichiha compound and waits for Kakashi to tell him that the training trip is ready. Sai went to report to Danzo on what he has learned, while Kakashi went to see Minato to try and get the training trip ready for Sasuke. Okage Tower hours later. Minato sighed as he sat in his chair. While the preliminaries ended with little issues, there is still a lot to deal with. While he is happy that Naruto was able to get into the finals he was worried for his son. The dark power that he unleashed on Niji, while it seemed similar to the dark powers of the Grimm, felt different than what he knew was normal for him. Even Kashina was worried. She was a Jinchuriki before and she never displayed such power before, but she was also well liked in the village, while Naruto was and still is hated in the village. Minato also had to deal with Kakashi and the elders still kissing Sasuke's ass. He still doesn't understand why they care so much about the brat. He is subpar in ninjutsu and barely has an understanding of his Sharingan. While he doesn't like it, Minato allowed Kakashi to leave Konoha with Sasuke for a training trip. But he would have a squad of Anbu watch the two from a distance to make sure that they didn't try to leave Fire Country or do anything stupid. 
Bonato was working on getting everything ready for the exams and helping keep Karen and Kin safe by labeling the two as dead and is going to keep the two in the Namika's compounds until the exams are over and after they save the other Yuzumaki that is being held by Arachimaru. Ashina wanted to go right to Odo and save her clansmen, but Kin and Karen told her that Teaya would actually come to Konoha before the exams as a spy and they could get to her then. Minato also needed to speak with Hiashi about his nephew and try to figure out a way to keep the prick alive since Naruto wants to skin him alive. Then there is the head and arm that Naruto's knuckle of E brought back. The arm was of a Konoha Anbu agent, but one that worked mainly with Danzo and the arm was a positive to Orochimaru and another person somehow which made Minato and Tsunade very nervous. All in all, Minato had a lot on his plate right now. Just then a knock on his door was heard. Minato raised an eyebrow since he didn't have any appointments today, since he was still working on the exams. Enter. Yelled Minato. From the door came Killer B of Kumo with his student Yujita right behind him. Greetings, Hokage-sama. Said B without his usual rapping. Hello, you must be Killer B, and this is one of your students. Yujito if I am not mistaken. Said Minato. Yes, Hokage-sama. The two of us has come here to discuss something with you of great importance. Said B. What is it? asked Minato. We want to talk to you about your son Naruto. Said B. Minato narrowed his eyes and had his Anbu leave the room and set up a silencing seal. What do you want with Naruto? Asked Minato. You must know by now that Yujito and I are Jinchuriki. We come here not as Shinobi of Kumo, but as two Jinchuriki that are worried about our fellow Jinchuriki. Said B. Worried? Why are you worried? Asked Minato. Okajama, you felt the power that Naruto used today did you not? I am pretty sure that most of the village felt it. Sir, Naruto has awakened his dark side in him. If he doesn't get control of it quickly it could cause problems for him later on. Said Yujito. Minato was curious about this. But none of the other Kayubi Jinchuriki had to deal with this dark side before. Why with Naruto does he need to deal with it? Sir. With all due respect, the problem is the village itself. Said B. Minato glares at B for that. Explain. B sighs. Sir. Me and my group have heard things said about your son by the people of this village, and most of them are not nice. And given what Yujito saw in the arena, Naruto must have buried those dark feelings deep within himself. If he doesn't do something about that darkness it could and will overtake him in time. That has happened before sir. It happened to my predecessor when she was a young adult. Said Yujito. Minato closes his eyes when he heard that. It is true, the village hasn't been the best to Naruto, and neither Mido nor Kashina had to deal with the hatred like Naruto has had to deal with in life. Mido was married to Hashirama years ago and was a powerful Kinoichi in her lifetime. And Kashina is married to him and has friends in most of the clans of the village, so there was no way that either was going to deal with hatred or darkness from the village. But thanks to Jiraiya and those that allied with him, Naruto had to deal with such hatred that no one should deal with. What can be done to help my son? I will not lose him after getting him back said Minato. There is a temple in the Land of Lightning. It is called the Biju Temple, and it is there that Naruto will have to go to in order to make peace with his inner darkness and master the Biju energy within him. Said B. What of my other children? Should they go with Naruto? Asked Minato. B shakes his head. No. They just have the chakra of a Biju. In time the energy of the Biju chakra will blend with their own. Minato sighs once again. I see. How long will he have to be gone? At least a week. That is how long he will be in the temple. Said B. Minato nods his head. Thank you for telling me. I must discuss with my wife tonight as with Naruto. Meet me here in the morning for my answer. B and Yujito nod their heads and leave the room. Minato looks out into the village and glares at it. Damn the fools of this village. Even after everything that they have done they continue to hurt my son. I will not lose him again I will make sure that he outlives me by a long shot. Said Minato. Just as he was about to get back to the paperwork and Anbu agent burst into the room. Okajama. Naruto has attacked mibuki san outside her home. Yelled the agent. What? Yelled Minato. The two dash out of the tower to find out what is going on. But Sakura minutes earlier. Sakura was walking to her home with a smile on her face. While she didn't get into the final she did her very best in them and she was proud of herself. She knew that she would do a lot better next time. Rin even said that it took her a few times before she made Chunin. Sakura was also glad that she got to fight her best friend Ino, since she wanted to see how far the two had gotten since the academy. Sakura made it home to find her mother waiting for her outside the house. Hi mom. Finish with work early today. Asked Sakura. Babuki narrowed her eyes at her oldest daughter. Sakura then felt a chill go up her spine and moved back just a bit. Yes I did. But tell me Sakura. Why didn't Sasuke or Sakuri make it into the preliminaries? 
asked Mibuki with a growl in her voice. They were injured in the forest. By the rules set up by the proctors they couldn't take part of the exams. Said Sakura. I see. Said Mibuki as she put her hand behind her back and grabbed something. Then how did you do in the exams? I fraud Eno and we both came out in a draw. But my sensei said. Started Sakura but was cut off when she was hit in the head by her mother with a club. You fucking brat. I let you become a shinobi, and yet you continue to fail to do what is necessary. Yelled Mibuki as she beat her daughter. Ah. What are you talking about? Asked Sakura as she tries to block her mother's assault on her body, but she was still tried from the exams. You were supposed to get with Sasuke-sama and get into his family. You are also the Kinoichi of the year, and yet you lose to that blonde hair brat, you are a failure to the Haruno name. Screamed Mibuki. Sakura now couldn't block the attacks since both her arms are now broken. Tears were streaming down her face from her left eye, since her right eye was closed due to blood and a cracked eye socket. You fucking brat. I know what is going on in that head of yours. You love the Kyubi brat don't you I will not let any daughter of mine love that monster. I would and will kill them before I let that happen. Now die and never see that brat again. Yelled Mibuki as she brought the club down to break Sakura's head wide open. But just before the club got to Sakura's head, a bone-covered hand blocked the strike, and the club snaked in two when it connected with the hand. Mibuki was wide-eyed when she saw Naruto standing in front of her with glowing red eyes. Naruto then grabbed the rest of the club out of Mibuki's hands and bashed it into her head. Naruto then went over to Sakura and tries to heal her, but like with Hinata, there was little that he could do. Naruto made a shadow clone and had to take Sakura to the hospital. Mibuki gets up off the ground and glares at Naruto since he got in her way. Just like his mother. How dare you attack me? What gives you the right to come onto my property and attack me? I will see to it that you are executed for your crimes against me. I will see to it that you suffer for ack. Screeched Mibuki but was cut off when Naruto grabbed her by her throat. Mibuki looked to Naruto and widens her eyes when she saw the absolute rage in the young man's eyes. What made the matter worse was that Naruto's eyes changed greatly. His red eyes now had black veins in them, with the white of his eyes now soulless black, with bulging black and red veins on the side of his head. Suffer? You would make me suffer? I have already suffered thanks to you. Don't forget all the times you formed a mob to kill me. Or made almost every store in the village throw me out or give me spoiled food or broken objects at triple prices. You have made me suffer for things out of my control. And now you would harm one of my precious people solely because they are my friend. And to think that Sakura-chan is of your blood. It make me sick just to think of that. Said Naruto. Ibuki tried to claw her way out of Naruto's grip, but he wouldn't let go. You need to suffer. You hold a demon in you. You need to know your place in life. And that place is under our feet. Yelled Mibuki. She then cried out in pain as Naruto grabbed her neck tighter. I don't have a demon in me. I have a biju, not a demon. They are two different things. Said Naruto. It doesn't matter. Because of that you are no longer human and need to be reminded of that daily. Yelled Mibuki. If I am no longer human then that is because of people like you. And don't think I don't know why you hunted me down like an animal. You hate me not because of Kayubi, but because I am the son of my mother. You hate her because she got my father, and you hate that he never even glanced at you. You hate me because my mother has what you wanted and will never get. And you tried to kill Sakura-chan because she doesn't follow in your footsteps and wants to work for things, then let others do things for her. Yelled Naruto. Shut up. Your mother was an islander whore that should have died alone with no one to love. Your father was born in this village and should marry me since I too was born here. Kishina didn't and doesn't deserve him. Yelled Mibuki. Naruto growled at Mibuki. She is one of the main focal points to his hatred. He normally wouldn't care what she says or does to him. But Mibuki not only tried to kill Sakura, but also insulted both his parents with her words. I hate you Mibuki Haruno. I hate you with all my heart. I will see to it that you never speak again. Yelled Naruto. Before Mibuki could ask what he meant, she felt her neck began to heat up. She tried to scream at Naruto to stop, but nothing came out of her throat. Anbu agents had arrived on scene and have been trying to get to Naruto and Mibuki, but the power that Naruto was producing wasn't letting them get near them. Minato and Kishina had also arrived to see Naruto holding Mibuki up by her neck, and neither could get near them. B and Yujito were also there to witness what Naruto was doing. By this point most people could smell burning flesh coming from Mibuki, as she looked like she was in immense pain. Naruto dropped Mibuki to the ground with her holding her throat as tears came down her face. She looked up to glare at Naruto, but he didn't care. He was used to the glares of hatred by fools like her. In case you are wondering. I have destroyed your vocal cords. You will never speak again. That is your punishment for speaking hateful words about Sakura-chan and Ka-san. Said Naruto. 
He then turned to look at those that had gathered and saw a few people glaring at him while others looked at him with worry in their eyes. Let this foolish woman be a lesson to all the idiots in the village. I will no longer let people step on me and get away with it. Should you come looking to put me down, know this. I will put you in the ground harder and further than you could ever do. Naruto then walked away from the Haruno house to the hospital to check up on Sakura and Hinata. His features began to return to normal as he walked, but he could swear that there was another voice in his head whispering to him. The strangest thing is it sounded eerily like his own. Minato looked to Mibuki and glares at the woman. He turns to the Anbu next to him. Mantis, take Mibuki to the hospital. Once she is clear take her to the T&I department. For crimes of attacking one of my shinobi. And tell Anko to go nuts with her. Said Minato. Mibuki widens her eyes when she heard that and tried to run, but was grabbed and was taken to the hospital and then to the T&I department for Anko to play with. Ashina walks over to her husband. Minato, what are we going to do? Naruto seems to be breaking a lot lately. I know. That is why we need to talk with him about this. But Killer B says that he knows of a way to help him. And given what just happened. We need to help him quickly before he does something that he will regret. Said Minato. Ashina nods her head. While she doesn't trust Kumonin much given what happened when she was younger, she would do anything to help her son. After Naruto returned home he talked with his parents about what has been happening with him lately. He agreed that something was wrong with him, since there was another voice in the back of his head ever since his fight with Niji. Akane and Akami were worried for their big brother, since they felt his dark power from before, and it frightened them. It was decided that Naruto would go with Killer B and his team to the Biju Temple to train and control his darker half. Karami also pointed out that Fu should go too, since she would have darkness in her as well, given what happened to her and Taki. Minato agreed with that as it would help both Naruto and Fu, as well as help the Biju in them both. So in the morning Naruto, Fu, Heiate and Yuga were at the north gate, waiting for the Kumo team to bring them to the Biju temple. Ashina wanted to go with Naruto to the temple, but Minato needed her to help with not only with Yureya, but also Teiya once she gets to the village, since she would be coming before Naruto would return. Heiate and Yuga were selected to keep both Naruto and Fu safe, should anything happen to them. The next day north gate. Naruto and Fu along with Heiate and Yuga were waiting for the Kumo team to arrive so that they could get to the Biju temple. Naruto sighed as he leaned against the wall with Karami around his neck. Karami was worried about her maiden partner. Given what happened yesterday she has reasons to worry. She knew that Naruto would need to face his darkness, but not for a few years at least. But with everything that happened to Hinata and Sakura, it was no wonder that Naruto's darkness had awakened. Karami also knew that her brother Chimei was also worried about his partner. Fu hides it well, but Karami can't tell that Fu holds a great deal of hatred in her, no thanks to Taki and their stupidity. Are you okay Naruto-kun? Asked Yugao. Naruto looked to one of his older sister figures. Sigh, not really. I allowed myself to let my emotions run wild yesterday, twice even. I hadn't let that happen since my fifth birthday. Hey Aiden and Yugao flinch when Naruto says that. Naruto was being chased by a mob and they were held up by a group of Anbu that wanted Naruto dead. By the time that the two of them, along with Itachi, Abito and Shishui, had gotten to hear Naruto was being attacked the entire mob was nothing but bloody smears on the walls, with Naruto crying in a ball on the ground covered in blood that most of it wasn't his. Fu placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder to calm him down. Naruto smiles at Fu which she returns. Just then the Kumo team finally shows up. Yo. Were you waiting long? Asked Killer B. No. Only a few minutes. I must ask. Does your rakage know that you are doing this? Asked Yugao. Nah. But I know my bro wouldn't mind. He saw what happened to the previous Nibi Jinchiriki. He wouldn't want that to happen to anyone else. Said Killer B. Don't worry. A Sama won't be made that we did this. Said Yujito. But what if he does? What if we are declared missing Nin for this? What if we are attacked by a group that wants the Biju to control the world? What if? Said Amoy but was cut off when Kerry began to beat his head in. Stop fucking muttering you idiot. Yelled Kerry. Samui stepped between the two to stop them from fighting. Enough, this is so not cool. Said Samui. The Kanoha group sweat drop at how the Kumo Genin were acting, but they didn't say anything. Given how Guy and Lee act, they could understand that other people had different quirks to them. So how long until we get to the Biju Temple? Asked Naruto. A few days. So we better get our feet a-moving. Said Killer B. So the group of Kanoha and Kumonin made their trek to the Biju Temple to aid the Jinchiriki of the Nanabi, and the Kayubi gained better control of their darkness. Unaware that this endeavor will not come easy. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.